Hey guys, welcome back to We Watch the Movie. I am Mike. I'm Jay. And tonight we are going to have a great show for you. It involves a goat, a zebra, a pack of Winston lights, and a wrench. I'm here to talk about the good news. Do you know the Lord has risen? Do you know this? He I wanted to know back. if you know that. That's what I heard. I heard it somewhere on the street, and I wanted to share it with you because I was like, "That's good news." I needed some today. So actually, news. that's you've been fake news. That doesn't that doesn't happen until Easter. You know, I am struggling, and we're not even a minute in because I'm uh, trying to stay on the straight and narrow, and it's hard to do sometimes. There's a lot of there's a lot of tantalizations. What's the word I'm looking for? Temptations. There's temptations in the world, and you have to stay away from it. You have to stay towards the light. Um. Well, I'll tell you one exciting news. I'm playing Final Fantasy 16. Oh, is that new? I think it came out like 10 months ago. Oh, okay. So you're not a real gamer then is what you're trying no, to tell No, I'm me. a pretender. I've always been. I'm actually a skateboarder, bro. Don't you know? I <laughs> hang out I hang out the back of Spencer's. I don't even know what video games are. Oh, so you wear Hurley shirts, but you don't skate, huh? Is that the thing? Yeah, I, I, anything I can to like try to fit in, I'll do. I don't care. Mm. I'll pose it. Well... No one respects no, it's been, but it's, It doesn't matter. It's not like they did anyway. So I've lost nothing. Uh, I, I will say uh, it's pretty good. I, I didn't really want to give it a chance, but the story's pretty good. If you like games like uh, God of War and stuff like that, where it's a hack and slash game, anybody would love that game. It's not Final Fantasy in the, in the classical sense. The story's amazing. It's got some of the best voice acting I've, I've ever heard. Or, or not like ever heard, but it's like one of the top voice actings. Oh. Are you going to play the uh, Suicide Squad game? No, I heard it's terrible. I, yeah. heard, I heard it's getting ripped right now. I don't. I haven't watched. I don't. I don't have any desire to play it. Based on what I knew about it before they pulled it and delayed it, I have no interest in that whatsoever. And the direct it, it sucks too because it's Rocksteady. I don't understand Rocksteady. Do that. You had. It's, I understand they told a trilogy of the Arkham stuff and they were done with it. But why do you deviate so badly from the like to the Suicide Squad? Yeah, it's a cool, catchy thing. I understand that the, the Suicide Squad is a, is a kind of a it appeals to a certain audience. But I mean, go go make a Superman game. Why isn't that a thing? Why do you got to? Who asked for Suicide Squad video game? I That's didn't. True. I don't know how many people did. I'm sure there were some people out there, but I'm not saying. I just know. I mean, you go from Batman. You go from maybe arguably the greatest superhero trilogy ever in a, on a video game in a video game form in the, in the Arkham series, you go from that to suicide squad. It looks like a pay to win type of scenario. I mean, it may not be, I mean, they changed some stuff, but it looks like just a bunch of microtransactions. They were pushing on people, battle passes, all that stuff that nobody wants. And it just, I feel, I don't understand. You have all that good faith going into making a new IP and you make something, you make a blunder like this and it sucks too. Cause it's Kevin Conroy's last performance as, as Batman. Yeah. Well, I did. I actually did see today that there's a couple of, uh, there's a couple of Batman projects that he did work on. They don't know if he did Batman on them or not, but he did do work. So there will be stuff coming out for that. But yeah, I, I heard about that that pay to play stuff, like or pay to win, as you said, like uh, that you have to buy skins and there's all these add ons. Well, what do you that, call that's them? Not even, the skins are fine. I mean, skins have been there forever. I understand skins. I mean, because it's like if you buy a game or like I, I bought the DLC skin for Robocop. I mean, I liked it because I liked it. It's, I know I mean, like pay to win, like you got to like. You got to spend money on certain items to get these items to win the game. Like their only way to win it is to spend money on these. I mean, that may not necessarily, but it's also I don't I don't really like. Uh, there's just a bunch of microtransactions in it, and, and you know, I just that's I, the word. Yeah, I understand. Microtransactions. Yeah, that's crazy to me. Like uh, the gaming as a whole is insane to me, and I, I wouldn't say that that's why I don't really game that much anymore. But I, I really think that's actually it. It started with the fact that you have to download it onto your onto your thing, right? And then it takes so much space, and then it just you used to be able to just plug in a game and play it because you felt like it. Now I feel like you need a, a three day course and like, you know, seven hours to download the game. And then like, you have to play microtransaction, all the games released, all the games release unfinished. Right. So you have yeah. to wait for updates for the game to fix. Like what other, like what other, uh, fields do they just give you a half baked product and tell you to wait for them to fix it after yeah, you've already paid that's for because it? The, 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 uh, community of gamers allowed it. The first thing, the first yeah. big noticeable was that when they were, were releasing games that were broken, they were unfinished games and they had to completely release like big time, uh, like patches, not like little ones, but big patches where the game would bug out or would crash. There was problems that there was throughout the entire cyberpunk is a perfect example of it. They, they would leave, they would, and you would spend $70 on an unfinished product. I don't know how they didn't get sued. 
because they're literally promising you a pro like back in the day on the cartridges like the nes the super nintendo the sega those yeah. were completed games you got there was no dlc there was no like there might have been bugs now and again but for the most part 95 percent of those games were finished and they were full so you yeah. didn't have to sp you spent 55 or 60 bucks on the game you got it to, you got to go home with it and play it the full game the full vision not have to wait and be like oh uh, well in six months we'll release a dlc that'll have you know what i mean like that probably was already on the on the disc or on the game itself they just locked it behind a paywall yeah i will say it's nice that like the, i think the worst thing in gaming that i wouldn't ever want to go back to that blows my ever-loving mind dude that we used to do is they used to actually release games that you could not save so like if you wanted to beat mario right you had to play the entire thing in one sitting mm -hmm. like we used to do that like that's the era we come from we're hard <laughs> like that's crazy to me but yeah, we, got, uh, we got prison tattoos after our experience <laughs> yeah it's nuts no like, but yeah, back, I yeah. Don't know. well back yeah, yeah well even um i mean i mean it's always been like the microtransaction stuff i remember like in uh 2000 i don't know when it came out uh, oblivion uh elder scrolls oblivion you had to buy <laughs> right horse armor everyone knows what i'm talking about like they charged in the marketplace, it was two dollars. Everybody knows about horse armor. Yeah, everybody knows about horse armor. Uh, <laughs> uh, they charge like two dollars and ninety nine cents to literally buy uh, armor for your horse to put on in the game. I'm not yeah. saying I bought it; I did. But, that, <laughs> but like I'm saying, that's the 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 idiocy of where like people just accepted it. They're like, oh, haha, ha, that's funny. And then you know what? The companies realize they're like, people are stupid enough. They're going to buy stuff like that. So yeah. let's just start hiding everything behind paywalls. What if they had done that in a Madden game? You couldn't get a complete roster because they took the best team, the, the best yeah. players. And they're like behind a paywall, you had to buy the players yeah. individually to be on your team. Now so they have, then, they have done something like that with Madden. People complain about it. MUT, which is a Madden ultimate team where you go in and you buy packs of cards and you build your team that oh, way. Yeah, and then your team that. competes against other people. It's a great idea. And me as a hardcore Madden player, I'm just not interested in it because like to, like the people who are going to be the best are just going to buy packs of cards and they're just going to be better everybody and you can also buy skins and crap on madden and extra stuff it's just it's ridiculous man don't it's get me wrong. i don't want, i don't want people to think or, or think i'm complaining about buying dlc story i don't mind doing it i'm just saying like the, the microtransactions when it's stuff that uh, that should just be in the game or be in the game at launch and not or not cost you anything yeah you're already paying 70 dollars for the game you want a complete finished game I, that's where I'm like, okay, that's enough. If it's a complete ground up DLC story that they worked on separately and it took them a few months to develop because they wanted to keep the game alive and fresh for you and they add that in and it's $20, that's totally, I get that. Just don't tell me when it's like horse armor or it's like a gun or it's a skin that it was probably already launched in the game and they're just trying to milk you for as much money as they possibly can. See, that's what bothers me about gaming. It's it's yeah it's it's nuts, dude. It's 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 a freaking gamut, uh, for sure. I I I don't know, man. I, I just don't. There's too much to look it. at the like, battle. It look at the battle much. passes. Look look at Call of Duty battle, battle pass. pass. That's the other one. Yeah. Battle passes. I was like, what are you talking about? Like I'm talking about the Halo days, like Halo Three. You had to buy a battle pass. You just got on there and like raged at somebody and like said some really misogynistic things. I'm sure. And then that's it. <laughs> a good time. But the game yeah. was complete. You didn't have to spend money on like a, like a battle rifle. And a suit of armor that you had, you know, and then guess what? But if you spent five dollars on that battle rifle and another fifteen on a, or a bundle set, you would be you would be higher up than everybody else because you would have a gun that shoots better, or you have more armor, you have more health, or whatever. That you know what I mean? So you didn't have those kind of things. But uh, that's what it is. And I don't know, man. Like I know I sound like a crotchety old like Cracker Barrel man sitting out there playing oversized checker, yelling at old uh, young folk. Yeah, and your butt smells like one too. I can yeah, confirm I, it. I use baby powder, but I'm saying, you know, it's just getting ridiculous, dude. Because that's why, I, again, just going and circling back to the Suicide Squad kills the Justice League. The story sounds okay, but it's kind of goofy looking. To be yeah. honest, I saw the some of the game. It just looks. I'm I. It's rock steady, dude. You thought you were gonna get it. I wanted another Arkham game, if not Batman, because they. I liked Gotham Knights for what it was. It was corny as all get out, and I. But I accepted it for what it was. But I didn't expect. I just go back to Batman. Or, or or go to like, dude. How long have when was the last time we ever had a good Superman video game on on, yeah. the, on this on this generation console? No, I, I, I totally agree with you. It makes no sense to me that they would go and make a Suicide Squad game when you could just make a Superman game. I think my best guess is that they just wanted to test their might. 
dun, 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 no, because you know why? Like, because they had what uh, one, two, three, four. I think it's four playable characters. They can have four different uh, uh, sections of microtransactions for each character. You want to change that character look? Hey, it's over here. They double their crazy. money. They quadruple their money because there's four but, different characters. Uh, even then, though, I'd be way more interested in like, okay, you can play the game as uh, Russian Superman from uh, Son of Crypt. Not Son of Krypton. What's the name? Um, Red Sun. Red Sun. You could play Russian Superman from Red Sun. You can play Unchained Superman. You could play Red Superman, Blue Superman, uh, Steel. You know, I mean, like that, that would make sense to me because you would pay for that. And that's something I probably actually do is like, dude, Red and Blue Superman. You remember that stuff? That yeah. was awesome. The deal. But- I mean, listen, I'm a sucker for DLC costumes, too. And I'll buy it. I would. I just feel like the pro- the reason why they, they maximized what they could get out of a Suicide Squad game because there's four protagonists in it. And that, that's four different like yeah. they can charge four different uh amounts of uh, or sections of money for like individual costume pieces i i don't or weapons or whatever i don't know man i just i don't know i, I was just expecting more i'm glad I, I if it if it when it becomes free on game pass if it ever does i'll i'll play it then or i'll if it's ever discounted super discounted like you know for two dollars and 68 cents i'll buy it yeah yeah and honestly like i get it with games like uh like for like texas chainsaw massacre right because with their game it's a, it's all multiplayer. It's all online. It's one thing yeah. you know exactly what you're getting, and they put it on Game Pass, right? Mm-hmm. So like, if you put something on Game Pass and then everybody could play it for ten bucks, then you charge a little bit extra for like extra maps. Like maps, I get a little bit. Like if after a while, like you remember when Halo Three would release a new map, everybody gets super excited about it. Like if you charge a dollar ninety nine for new maps or something, all right, mm-hmm. maybe if it's like five maps at a time, I can understand it. But with like low with smaller indie game studios, I get. But not EA, man. Not EA, Rockstar. No, no, EA, I'm not gonna cry. I burped while I was talking. Well, Rockstar, <laughs> EA, um, Rocksteady. Um, Infinity Ward, I, I mean, they're, these are multi-billion dollar, or I know that Infinity Ward is, they were just bought by Microsoft, Infinity Ward, a Blizzard, for like, I don't know, 60-something billion dollars. It's not like they're hurting for money. Right. And, and yeah, they, they're and, not an indie they're, they're, studio. And EA, do. it's another, it's a billion dollar company, and they continue to do what they do. They hold licenses, they strangle other uh, companies that want to try to get in that space they're like no 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 we yeah. hold the we hold the only we we want to have the only uh the only uh club in town they're like beetlejuice with that strip club in the in the in, in the little thing yeah they're the only one they don't want yeah. anybody else like the fight night franchise i like the boxing stuff they won't let anybody else get involved they want <laughs> let me get some food in my mouth nope <laughs> yeah no it's crazy i just want to say something real quick uh i i'm thoroughly disgusted disgusted with the kind of language being used in the chat tonight all right did we you're get using no, words we like not, s-h-i-t you're oh, using someone use the f word jay i am someone yeah. use the f word i'm gonna be talking to my preacher about this and praying for you all it's ridiculous the, the principal was watching through the little tiny window in the door all right they're gone now and now we can talk amongst ourselves however we Good, want because to. it's been it's all it's almost 13 minutes dude like we went we well win. beyond 13 minutes without saying, let's wait the final 10 seconds out so we can be proud of ourselves. That's longer than I spend on a treadmill. It's longer than I last in bed. It's, you know, I'm just making sure that my kids are gone for it. <laughs> so what, you know, anyway, there's kids guys, in the hallway I mean, for a second. You guys might not have noticed, but we were doing a little experiment, not really an experiment, but we were just kind of making sure that we, uh, there's a certain time that elapses so that we can get this, our stream monetized. Uh, because apparently within the first two, three minutes, I mean, yeah, we come out swinging. We don't give one clickety cluck. We'll come out swinging with some curse words and just bringing it home. And apparently that's not good. I just don't understand it. I just don't understand the policy. I just don't get it. Like you can literally have what's in my butt, Steven on YouTube and that's monetized and not only monetized, it's considered educational, but if two guys that are, yes, on the wrong side of 35 that are heavy and drink a lot, you have those guys say curse words, forget about it. You guys don't. I'm 35. Yeah, oh, on the wrong side of 35. Yeah, I'm on I'm 35. <laughs> hey, let's check it out together. Let's see what happened. Let's see what the fruits of all our hard work and labor is. Can I get a drum roll? I can't do them. All right, all right. No drum roll. Uh, Demonetize. All right, there you go. <laughs> you Limited. fucking see this shit? Like, fuck this shit. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> we didn't say a fucking word. I'm telling you what it is, dude. I don't know what I mean. You know, I, maybe they don't like the color of our fucking glasses. Like, look our at cups. 
look through these guys. Check it out. It's under monetization, the mid tab. Check it out for our live streams. Uh, well, we got a copyright on that one for what? All the. Uh, it's not. It's not a strike, but it's like yeah, we probably watched the trailer. That's deserved. But like yeah, yellow, yellow, red, yellow, yellow. Yeah. yeah. Not a green to be seen in the whole fucking line. It's, it's so wild, guy, because I literally watched the stream uh, not long ago, and it's it's way worse than ours as far as vulgarity goes. And they do they, the fucking guy smoking a cigaracho, and he's not, and they're and they're getting money. They'll have just, they have fucking ad rolls in the middle of their fucking stream, and they're like, "That's cool. Maybe we should do ad rolls." I thought you said ad roll. <laughs> I'll, I'll do. So. I'll snort that shit too. I mean, I mean, fuck it. It's not getting monetized anyway. Well, here's the deal, though. So, like now, because the rule's supposed to be like in the first couple minutes, as long as there's nothing, there's nothing in the thumbnail. You, you're probably okay. So now that we did that, I can actually ask them. Be like, "Hey, check this out. Go look at it and come back it's to me. And you let minutes. me know." Perfect. And no one can make it through ten minutes of our content. No, so I feel boring like video we're going to be safe. Yeah, yeah, I feel like we're going to be safe. But I'm saying it's it's strange that it's just it's automatic. Like, it doesn't make sense why it's automatic. So someone's got it out for us, and they just put us on a watch list, like the fucking DOJ of YouTube, that as soon as we go live <laughs> on anything, they're like, fucking limit that shit. Limit I mean, that shit. I don't think we're that important. I think it's probably just a like a bot that, like, once you're, like, well, yeah, I, I can tell. I, I, Human's look, dirty. What happened to Sky? Look what happened with Skynet, okay? It starts there. They <laughs> deem one human not not available for ads and then the right then all of you sudden like they're taking over the world it's ridiculous it happens please sit on my face <laughs> how could he see also, also <laughs> on but that's why you guys and you guys hanging out with us and your super chats are so important we really appreciate you guys you guys get us through like this one the first super chat of the night from michael vargas who said have you handsome men seen the beekeeper yet no yet yeah, no i haven't i've seen a beekeeper in real life we had a neighbor that was a beekeeper not really a beekeeper but he had bees that's not something I would want in my life. No, but uh, they, they were honey collectors. <laughs> he had all sorts of women over. No, uh, <laughs> I see what, uh, the uh, the uh, Jason Statham thing. No, I, I yeah, I, that looks like something I'd watch if it was like if I was like drunk and I had nothing. I didn't know. I was just scrolling through Netflix and I saw it. I'm like, I'll just put it on as background music. Like, yeah, movie. yeah. No, I went and spent money and I watched it and I did a whole review on YouTube uh, on our channel here. Michael doesn't didn't watch it, but yeah, yeah, I saw it. <laughs> dude i do think though i really think between the beekeeper making so much money and actually getting good reviews shockingly even though i i did not think it was very good at all uh other than the action scenes i think action's mm. making a quiet comeback dude i think it's happening yeah. i think yeah. we are on the whims of action being huge in the next few years because of the demise of superhero and, and superhero fatigue and all that i'm seeing all these news reports like action like monkey paul trailer we watched the other night mm -hmm. i'm seeing all these news reports of like action movies being put in development i'm like we might be going back to the heyday buddy yeah, but there's no, there's nobody like leading the charge. I mean, we don't have a Jean Claude Van Damme. We don't have an Arnold. We don't have a Sylvester. I mean, if they're sure. saying that Jason Statham is holy shit, that's like saying that Judas was actually the leader of the prophets. We do it's have Alan Richton. Alan Richton could be the new Schwarzenegger. All right, so we're off to a start. He's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna impress some guy. He's gonna, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? He's gonna motivate some dudes to get into the gym. All right, they're gonna get up there. They want to be the next Alan Richton. Then we got a Sylvester. We got our Stallone. We got our Schwarzenegger. We just need some karate dudes to get in there. You know, I don't and, know. I mean, they don't have. To, I mean, look at the. I mean, like Wesley Snipes. I mean, he was in good shape, but he wasn't exactly like a big power lifter guy. That's uh, true. And then there was like, I mean, there was other like other action heroes like Jeff Speakman. I mean, I know he really didn't do much except one movie, but he was like a guy that came up. Steven Seagal was never. I mean, he's a he's like a big fat fucking. You know, windbag now, but back then, he even even then, he wasn't like a like a big muscular dude. Yeah, he, but he was really guy. good at aikido. But he's so really you got good, he's really good at kicking with his feet. Yes. Yeah, but like you got all these people, and like Roadhouse just coming out. That looks like an old school action movie for sure. And I think that like, look, you got all these actors like Jared Leto. Like, I literally have to embody the person I play yeah. in this weird ass movie. But you know, uh, Saturn talks to me sometimes when I'm alone at night and I drink some coffee. The yeah. Moon talks. <laughs> Sit at his co-workers use condoms and stuff like that but like why don't some of these hardcore actors like if it gets big again some of these big name actors will go hey i'm gonna go learn judy judy chopping and they're gonna go they're gonna get the skills that they need and yeah. then they're gonna become actual weapons maybe they start fighting in the ufc who knows like just well, to prove I think, their I think are looking at that well they thought the rock might be it, but that's proven to be false uh he, he I, I, even though i do like the rock I just don't think he's like the next like coming of the action hero i mean even yeah to be fair, though, the coming to be fair, of the Lord. To be fair, though, the rundown and and Walking Tall were great. I like those fucking. I movies. love Walking those Tall. Were great movies, and that was like old school uh, action. So yeah, 
But yeah, he's just, and he said he wants to start doing more serious stuff. So we'll see what happens. Courtney Root said 49ers over Chiefs. I'm, you I'm, I'm, both, I'm, I'm, I, yeah, I'm pulling for him. I don't want the Chiefs to win. Fuck them. Like, and I don't want the Niners to win either because they, they, they have literally like taunted and cursed the Packers for me for so long. But I will say this, like, I mean, I, I, I think that um, anything's better than, than Travis Kelsey. Anything yeah, on earth is better I, than I, Travis Kelsey. I saw Kelsey, but I don't give a shit that he's like banging Taylor Swift. I just it's I, not I, that. It's, it's the Mahomes. I still don't like the Mahomes, dude. I don't like any of the fucking Mahomes. I like Patrick Mahomes. Seems like he's an okay guy. He's just in a really shitty situation. But the TikTok shit, fuck that. I don't like that shit. It's like it's. I, I can't believe the PR guy for the Kansas City Chiefs has said, "Control your fucking wife. Control your wife." <laughs> I thought you were gonna go full Steve Carroll. It's like, yeah, well, you should put that on a leash, dog. It's <laughs> like you let. He, he actually talks like that. I, I would be, uh, if I were his brother, I'd be embarrassed. It's like, dude, you are getting all, like you are getting yeah. clout off his farts. You've done nothing except like my brother's Patrick Mahomes and you're showing fucking goddamn. Uh, hey, he got, brother. he got real quiet when he went to jail for sexually assaulting someone. He yeah, got out of that, by the way, because yeah, he got a big dick in his mouth. He couldn't talk. <laughs> it's hard to talk. It is. I can tell you from experience. It's hard to talk when that happens. The best but, you can do is gurgle uh, out of sound. I got, I, Usually I help me. Got, help. It's a safe word. Or um, it's either helpers like this isn't that bad. <laughs> speak, speaking of Courtney, um, he sent me something that he wanted me to show you guys, and I too think that you guys will find it hilarious. It says, think your life is tough. These guys are Siamese twins, and only one is gay. They share the same ass. Oh God! And there's is that a dude, fucking real? Uh, is that real, Courtney? Making oh, my- out. I thought that might have been like his dad, like just kisses him on the mouth. <laughs> Tom Brady. I mean, you know, like some parents do that. I don't, I don't, I don't understand it, but I, you know, they, there's some parents that like kiss on the mouth. With the kid. <laughs> I just thought it was like that weird, like, oh my god, dude! I, get I hope it's fucking not. hand off me, dude. That's got, that has to be sexual assault. So like, when he what, like when he comes in that, when that? he comes in that Siamese twin's mouth, does the other one spit it out? Does he sit like they got that twin thing? They got that twin I, belly. Uh, look, I, I. That has to be sexual assault, right? Like, because, because, like, if no, one dude doesn't want to be there, but the other one's like, This is my life, you have to let me live my life, and you're going to stand here while Steve gives it to us, then I feel like that's got to be, that's got to be the R word, right? I, I don't think it is. I don't know how it works. Well, you put yourself in those positions and see how it makes you feel. I'd shoot myself in the fucking head so I wouldn't have to do it. <laughs> See how that how, see how that's gonna work. See how that's gonna work. If you don't fucking stop letting your boyfriend drill us in the asshole, I'm gonna kill myself, and then you can, you're gonna be fucked too. By the oh. way, we're limited on this shit, so I don't care if I'm dropping kill yourself because apparently no, you yeah, no, you do because they're gonna review it, Jay. Damn that it! Thir- thirteen minutes. Just give I them know. that. Let's hope they don't have like a rake, like an internet rake that goes through it. Anyways, Lee the Machine Bowers. Holy fucking hey, shit, Lee, man. Thank you, man. Thank you, he, just, man. Dude, he was in here last time dropping bombs, and he came back like Peyton Manning in that Bud Light commercial next like to Emmett in the Smith. bathroom after Taco Bell, dropping all sorts of <laughs> Thank you so much, fucking Thank me, you, man. man. Appreciate you. Hey, sexy fellas. Have y'all seen Ghostbusters Frozen Empire new trailer? Yep. Well, yes. And yes. in honor of Lee, 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 we are going to talk about that now, actually, because we were going to talk about that tonight anyways. Uh, Jay and I watched it. We were going to do a reaction to it, but we saw it since a few days old. We would just uh, watch it separately. Uh, you get your nuggets. Don't I'm gonna get my nuggets. Don't you worry about how. And uh, we're gonna talk about it right now. So we yeah, watch boy, this. This is my corn dog. Leave it alone. <laughs> my corn dog. There are two new trailers for the Ghostbusters Afterlife. And I will. I'm gonna tell you that you guys know. Like at, we watched the first one together on a live stream, and yeah. I was not a fan uh, for a myriad of reasons. But I gotta tell you, after watching these two new trailers, dude, I'll, I am I am one over. I didn't. I didn't watch two. I watched one. I thought there was I, only I one. I emailed you two. I sent no, you two in I, email. That that other one was bullshit. That Which one did the, you watch? The I watched they the, were both. They both awesome. The one the thumbnail where it's Paul Rudd and, and his woman in the front seat of the car and they're in the okay. Ghostbuster suits. It's really good. Either way, I only needed to watch that trailer to know that I'm definitely <laughs> like I think that they've done very well. It's the trailer they should have shown anyway when they were introducing the Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. I don't understand why they went they, because they went with like the Spider Man Homecoming shit. When they showed the initial one, that's kind of why I was turned off from it because it looked too mm, magoo. I don't know. It looked too like like every other you like know a like children's film. Effect. Yeah, like a special effects exa- extravaganza with with very little emphasis on story or or anything that makes it special. But in this one, 
it looked really good. I actually looked, I, I like that you get to see Bill Murray coming back in the Ghostbusters uniform. Winston uh, and uh, Harold Ramis. Uh, Janine is in the fucking Ghostbusters. I mean, there, it felt like a very cohesive, cool final, final. I think this is it for Bill Murray to be in the movie for sure. And yeah. I like, I really did like that they brought Walter Peck back and he's like talking about it. And then you got fucking Paul. It's just cool to see Paul Rudd in the Ghostbusters uniform. And he's like in the mayor's office talking to Walter Peck because Walter Peck is apparently the mayor now. And he's like, he's like, like hey, it reminds me of Anchorman, dude. When Walter Peck was like these charlatans with no witnesses put on these light shows that no one saw and did all this. And then uh, Paul Rudd's like overruled. <laughs> yeah, that was <laughs> good then that kid in the back is like, just stay. He's like, thank you. Yeah, it looks really that. That's what I wanted from the original. Like, if they had just shown that trailer initially, I'd be like, I have no worries about it. But I, you know, seeing that, yeah, the hype train has gone up. I was going to go see it regardless, no matter what. I was going to go see it, but this that now I've got a little bit more faith in it. Uh, th th you know that they're not going to like fumble the ball on this one, like you know Green Bay or something. Hey, you take it easy, pal. <laughs> you take it easy. Do you see there. the hat that I wear? Give Stop me a taking fucking break. Shots at me. I got a Giants hat, okay? Jesus Christ. Yeah. We're like Orphan Annie throwing stones at a window. Whatever, dude. Food. Whenever the Giants play the Packers, they become the fucking goddamn undefeated Miami Dolphins. Well, that should make you feel good because we're trying our hardest. <laughs> uh, uh, so I'm, I'm pulling up these pictures, by the way, real quick. Um, no, not the entire screen, you fucking doo-doo head. I don't know who um, the one girl was, though. Um, the, yeah, look, there's a lot of ghosties. A lot of ghosties. Yeah. That looks uh, like a fucking convention. <laughs> it so, looks like a fucking Scarefest convention. Can, can, can Dan Aykroyd get a tailored suit? <laughs> can someone get Dan Aykroyd a tailored well, suit? I don't, I mean, he's like 100 on. years old now. No, I, I'm not knocking his physical prowess. I'm knocking the fucking suit that seven sizes, seven you know sizes too big for him. To be fair, he kind of looks like, uh, uh, I, you know, and it's just what it is. He kind of looks like um, John Candy in Nothing But Trouble when he was dressed up as that woman. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, but but, but dude, uh, Paul Rudd looks great. Uh, Bill Murray, I, but it's not uh, Bill. You listen, they they both like Ernie Hudson has aged like a Greek god. Like he still looks great, dude. That mustache show never looked better. Yeah, the only what the only one that ever looked better was a Pringles can. But he rocks the shit out of it. You got Janine back there. Uh, you got the Egon Spangler's daughter. You got uh, what's the name for Stranger Things? You got a podcast. Paul, Rudd, dude, tell tell me that. If fucking Paul Rudd and the and the cast from uh what's their name uh the the group that he was with Jonah Hill and all those guys the um this is for not this is forty no 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 uh, the, forty the guy, old virgin but yeah who, who's the director that did all those movies with him Judd Apatow Judd Apatow now imagine Judd Apatow you see Paul Rudd looking good as fuck in that goddamn suit yeah Judd Apatow alongside the the fucking you know I, I anyway and then you wouldn't like know, Judd Apatow dude he's a he's a he's one of those uh what do you call him um. He's one of those uh, lip tards. That's what well, they call can, him in the you know, streets. Keep your ass in fucking San Francisco, sucking all the dick you want for free. <laughs> so ever not fuck Judd Apatow <laughs> and Seth Rogen, fucking curly hair, pubic haired. Look anyway. Uh, no, actually, you gotta draw a lot of the sand. The only son. only guy that got funny off is laughing, getting high. <laughs> anyway. Um, no, all, I don't know the chick in the red. I don't know who that is, but otherwise, yeah, it looks great. By, by the way, if it's not Paul Rudd, fine. Give me Paul Rudd and the guys from Broken Lizard. <laughs> I was just kidding. You're owning it though. Yeah, I know. I, I, hey, if you, I I, 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 I'll, I'll leave that. Hey, like, for Donald Trump. Listen, I'm like fucking Mike Tyson. You drop a goddamn punching bag in front of me. I was like, don't ever do that. Don't ever tempt me with it because I'll punch you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a shot of Slimer. Yeah. Shot Slimer looked good. Uh, my ex wife's now, pictures get on here. I thought we deleted those. <laughs> this is when you accidentally have the camera to front facing and you're like, oh, Jesus. Yeah, that's like, that's uh, her after a couple of bottles of wine. Holy shit. <laughs> I did like the Slimer tease at the end of one of the trailers that looked pretty good. And the way he runs right through the, the Stranger Things kid and he's like, oh, and like the snot comes out. That was cool. I also fucking loved, again, you said it, Winston looked fucking dope. Look he at the suit. Amazing. You see the suit? Yeah, dude. Uh, so that's the, that's the Ghostbusters 2 suit, but it, but you see the logo? The logo's different. Look at the logo. It's got like, uh, it looks like he's engine. got the peace sign going up. No, no, no. It's like a regular, but no, see how the, the, the circle, the bottom circle, it's got like spikes coming out of them. Oh, it's like a grind. Like a grinder. Yeah, I don't know what the I don't know why I don't know what that is I I don't know and I don't know who the who the fuck are you It looks like Andy Dick snuck on set again Yeah, dude, that's one the only thing I ha I have against the trailer and I don't really have it against it It's kind of it's kind of being picky at this point uh, And by the way, I do love the I, I love the trailer because it focused on the old school cast a lot yeah. more But it, it took away from the whimsical Oh, it's all the Stranger Things kids and we're gonna do a movie for everybody It's a teenage yeah. fun fest yeah, it's they, they, The Tom Holland Spider Man vibe went out of it 
yeah, like uh, for sure. And and I, I, they took all that out of it. And that these two new trailers had a completely different vibe. And I really loved what they did. Uh, not just the throwbacks, because as we talked about with WWE, you can't keep rolling old ass Hulk Hogan out there every time. You got to start to like focus on some new blood. I just think that the new blood maybe shouldn't be 13 years old and maybe we should still do adult comedy. But that's just me. Well, Anyways, with these trailers, they gave me the promise that they that they teased at the end of the last movie, which yeah. I thought the post credit sequence was one of the best parts of the entire last movie. Uh where they show and they, they bring him out here, they bring Ernie out, and he's like, Hey, it's a research facility now. So yeah. we're not just trapping the ghosts, we're learning from them, which is a genius fucking so what, idea. I, what what this reminds me of is um the original idea for Dan Aykroyd's Ghostbusters was that there were several different Ghostbuster organizations spread throughout, and it was only gonna focus on the New York branch. This mm -hmm. looks like he like Ernie Hudson has like this is maybe this is a maintenance worker for Ghostbusters. Like maybe he's like like you know, there's different maybe there's agents that go out in the field and then there's people that like stay behind and maintain yeah. the equipment. Cause maybe that's what the logo means. Maybe that's what he's doing. And he's like talking about, I was like, our state of the art containment facility has all this stuff. And you know what I mean? Like, so he's For got sure there's, yeah. there's several different ghostbusters now and it's not just focused, but the main cast is who we're going to go back to. And as far as like having Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd and Ernie Hudson suit up one more time, listen, I got all the nostalgia I wanted from the last, and it was really heartfelt, especially what they did for hell. Ramus. I loved all that shit. They did a great job and I did, I was fine. I was, I was ready to move on, but I'm actually glad they get to have them all back. Like, and I, like there, there, there's going to be more scenes with them in it. Cause the worst part about, and I loved afterlife. I, I really did. I just didn't like the fact you really got no, there was no interaction between the original cast, except the very, 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 very end of the movie. You know, it was almost like, you know, and I know what it was. It was probably Bill Murray's like, I don't want to be in them. You know, I don't want to be in more than, you know, 10 minutes of the movie or something, but yeah. It is what it is. It looks great, though. I, I, this is definitely, I, I you know, again, I, I told you earlier when I, when I said the first trailer I watched, I wasn't that excited about it. And I said, I would be, if I was wrong, I was wrong. And I'm, I could be wrong. I think it might be a great fucking movie. Yeah. And I, I, I still hold my reservations about it. Like, I am way more, it's, it, it like, it literally feels like, you know, I know for a fact they didn't, but it literally feels like they heard everything we said about that first trailer and went yeah. around and said, all right, let me show you boys. And like with these two trailers, it's got everything that I, not everything I would have wanted. Cause like you said, I would have wanted a Judd Apatow, mm -hmm. uh, full on funny ass, um, adult Ghostbusters movie like they were in the originals. But, this is way closer to that. The only thing I don't like about it is like you got that guy here who kind of looks like Egon, by the way, which is weird. And I understand what you're saying. They probably, they, obviously, they have a research facility. They're going to hire employees. So you're going to have a bunch of people running around. Uh, I love that was the throwback cool. Library to, Ghost. Yeah. I love the throwback to that. It gave me the. Well, because they never box. busted her. They never busted her. Yeah. Which is fucking awesome. Uh, this gets on my fucking nerves. All right. And like, I don't know who she gonna, is. Who are you? There's going to be, you know, obviously there's going to be a bunch of people like, oh, you don't like a black female Ghostbuster, huh? I huh? like, I like, I like Ernie Shapiro. Hudson. I like Ernie Hudson um, just fine. You son of a, a bitch. not a woman, Jay. I don't give a shit. <laughs> uh, no, the, the reason I don't like it is because it's a, it's a, it's a, you want to you call me something fine. Call me ageist. Like I, I don't need any more fucking teenage Ghostbusters. All right. I just, I don't need any more fucking teenage Ghostbusters. All right. Yeah. Let's get some fucking like Paul Rudd. And there's a there's a point in there where, he, where he's talking to his wife and he's like he's like he's like uh, we're Ghostbusters and she looks at him he's like and I gotta say it he's like busted makes me feel feel, feel good busted yeah. makes me feel good it reminded me of uh, I love you man where he's like slap at the bus and that's the kind of comedy I would love to see in a Ghostbuster film it's so cool to see Paul Rudd as a Ghostbuster but like how many teenagers are we gonna be putting in the fucking mix here that's guys the, Come well, on. that's the that's the reality of Ghostbusters at this point like that's the only way they feel like it's gonna be sustainable I don't know why they feel like that because the little kids are trying to go for or the or the tweens they don't have any fucking money. They're not going to buy the merchandise because they can't afford it. <laughs> Who do you think is going to buy the collector's editions? Who do you think is going to buy the fucking overpriced action figures from Amazon and the big bad toy store? Not those fuckers because they're too interested on TikTok. This guy right here. <laughs> the one that grew up with it. Either way, I don't care. So that's just, I'm going to have to take that. That's like, that, that's some, uh, that's some sour with the sweet. It is. It is what it be. It's like but she was. Got, she was like, apparently in the first. Uh, in the first Ghostbusters. No, so I just, that's, I don't, I I, that's erroneous. Erroneous. I haven't, I haven't watched I it since the theater. I, I didn't think it was. Oh that yeah. Great. I never. Never mind. Now I remember. I don't. But uh, <laughs> but here's the thing. 
here's the thing at the end of the day it's like for me i fucking i hate wine i think wine tastes like shit but if i got nothing else to drink because i'm poor and somebody gives me some cheap ass wine i'll drink that shit <laughs> i hey, did you i got, got you got that, uh, you got that, light uh, one night yeah you got that smuckers that apple pucker shit i'll drink that <laughs> give me the whole fucking bottle i'll that's get fair. drunk off that yeah i mean it, hey alcohol is alcohol it's gonna get the job done either way and I, it tastes like shit, and it's fucking cheap, but it's gonna make I you drunk. I sucked the dude's dick once. You ever suck some dude's dick just, with some alcohol, man? Just, just because he dick. was drunk. No, but either way, oh my god, can you imagine a Dave Chappelle that fucking oh. Ghostbusters team? Oh my god, <laughs> hilarious! That would be fucking crazy. <laughs> like Abba Zabba, you my only friend. <laughs> dude, <laughs> the, the literal cast from Half yeah, dude, like, get the half baked guys. If I, yeah, back then, dude, half baked guys in the nineties cast them as a fucking new Ghostbusters. Oh my god! <laughs> like well, all they did was smoke around, get, get fucking high, and then they'd have to go out and like bust some ghosts and shit. Okay, maybe that would be too yeah. much, but otherwise everything else. Would be perfect. <laughs> I'm kind of into it though. I, I, I would be into it, but yeah, no, I will say all the shit that we're talking. I, I really thought that was, those were really good trailers, and it actually had me interested. My fucking my needle was dead. It was yeah. it's it was fucking gone. Like after that first trailer, I'm like I'm done. Like I I will watch it kind of begrudgingly like i'm not even sure i want to fucking see it at this point yeah. but those two trailers really brought my interest back to like a six and a half out of ten so yeah it's like man. it's like your stepson like showing you their report card and you're like i don't care and, and, and then they're like oh well i got an a i was like i don't care he's like and my teacher's hot okay what did you say <laughs> if you ain't first you're last son no, no, no um, at the end of the day yeah i i, I think for me I, I was already like i said i was i'm gonna go see it no matter what i was gonna go see it but I, I definitely, it, it definitely piqued my interest more, and it feels like, and again, I, I was wrong. Maybe I was wrong. I just felt like when the the trailer that they released first, it felt like they weren't taking it very seriously. Like it was like a video game, you know what I mean? Like a lot of special effects, a lot of pizzazz and wow with the effects, and not so much on the on the story. Which don't get me wrong, Ghostbusters is all about. There's a, the effects are cool as fuck. They always have been, and that's you know the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man is amazing. But at the end of the day, you were there for the comedy and the the camaraderie. And the story at the end, and I—that's what I feel like they were sacrificing in order to Michael Bay it up. But no, we, I mean they're doing a good job with the second. I can't. Trailer. I can't tell they're trying to sell some toys, which is fine. With me. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, like I, that's, that's all about that like, anyway. Fact, they, but well, when Ghostbusters came out, they even asked them about the, the, the why, why there was no toys available when the movie because they said they had no idea it was going to be that popular with kids. They had yeah. no idea. But like, uh, but the toys were awesome. Uh, they were some of my favorite toys to collect growing up. But yeah, you could tell with that whole research facility with that, and like you know, obviously the tiny marshmallow man. Uh, but the research mm. facility with that one little cute toucan Sam looking fucking thing. The only problem is like the toys they released kind of sucked. Like I saw yeah, the toys in the I store and the, they that... even did, they even did retro toys and stuff like that. And not yeah. like, it was all right, but it just had this sheen of 2022 on it that I was like, it doesn't feel right. I don't want to touch. It. I will definitely be checking big bad toy store pre-orders, uh, for the, for the better <laughs> ones, because yeah, I'm not going to oh, go to Walmart by up, the though. way. Well, yeah, well, yeah, listen, <laughs> I know that it's for kids, and they're like, hey, for the parents that are going to take their kids to go see this. So during Christmas, they're going to be like, I want Ghostbusters shit, and they're going to go to Walmart and buy it. But for the adult, give me the good shit. Where's the good shit at? Like, I want the fucking statue. If it's too much, I'll get it on affirm.com, which is a payment plan. <laughs> I don't give a fuck, dude. That that's that's crazy because like it's, no, it's I've never it's, it's, I've never got anything that expensive. I swear to God, I never have. Like people get those hot toys that are like seven hundred fucking dollars. I've never got that. Yeah. They are amazing, no. but they're too much. But it's it's crazy because like the struggle when we were kids and like our parents wouldn't buy the shit for us like even the stuff that was in the store like they would like they'd piece like like in my world like you go to Walmart they're like you got eight bucks I'm like all right I didn't get a figurine but I couldn't get like the really nice cool shit that was like thirty bucks or whatever at the time especially not Power Rangers fucking forget about it but mm -hmm. like you go through that struggle as a kid and you're like when I'm an adult. I'll buy whatever toys I want. And then you can become an adult and the toys in the stores fucking suck shit. And the ones that you actually want are way out of your price range, like hot toys and yeah. shit like that. And you're like, God I, damn it, man. There, and that then was, the retro ones, even more expensive now to get. I, so it's like, I've got, I've got some nice, like I've got some stuff. Like I don't like, I'll spend like 50 bucks on something like, um, I don't know, like this, like this right here. Uh, Set your dick. Oh, Right here. This is at 209. I think he was like 42 bucks for the detail. I it's think not bad. it's pretty nice. But it's a small scale, but this is obviously not meant to be played with, even though I do. Uh, it's not meant to be played with, but it's more of a display piece. But I don't, want, don't I, take I, it out I, of the package. I can't, yeah. Well, like the like the coolest hot toy I've ever seen is um the Jack Nicholson Joker one. It is 
fucking it, dude, it, it, it's immaculate. The, the 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 look, it looks exactly like Jack Nicholson in the Joker suit. It's amazing. Seven hundred and fifty fucking dollars for that. Man, I can't be doing and that. And you're like, what the Not, fuck? I want to have sex. Pocket? And if I do that, I can't. Because I gotta be like, my wife's be like, why can't you get anything for my birthday? Why can't we go out for a while? I was like, I just spent seven hundred fifty dollars on a fucking toy, dude. <laughs> this just, this just. Yeah, I feel yeah. like the family man. It's like, no. She's like, put it back. I feel like Nicolas Cage is the family. Like, no. Well, yeah, even in the '89 Batman. That's a Batman, great scene, man. That's yeah, a dude, great amazing. scene. The Family Guy is an amazing movie. But the, even the '89 Batman uh, Hot Toys is so cool looking. But yeah, those things are like super. I know that some guy I watched. Uh, he does like openings and reviews of, of the Hot Toys, and he's like, well, the reason why I have so many because he's got so many. You think he's rich? Uh, he does well. I, I guess his channel does pretty well. But he's like, really, if you're get, trying to get into into uh, display stuff or Hot Toys, it's all about trading. Yeah, monopoly money too, and and pass and, and getting suckers to buy from you. But, and it's uh, Ghostbuster mo monopoly money, so I should be able to get a discount on all Ghostbusters merch. That'll work. Like. God damn it, you haven't even drank that much yet. Um, no, uh, but yeah, the, it was like he said something about like trading and like you you exchange shit. Like you, I don't know, it's fucking weird. But, so I was like, you don't keep that. It's like you don't keep it. it smells like mayonnaise, huh? <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, no I was like, but, but you don't I got, keep. I lactate you mayonnaise. If you don't, you don't get like I don't mean like when I get something I get like a collector's item I'll keep it I don't sell it I swear to God I don't I have multiple action figures that are un, like that are boxed oh, and I have them one. hanging up I don't sell them but some people do they buy them and then they sell them and then they use that money to buy <laughs> more stuff anyway dude I I want to I want to take a camera to a strip club and I I just want to like sit somebody down on perverts row and be like hey dude take this out like when she comes around and you know, they're gonna put get this a on the fucking stiletto in their eyeball. <laughs> Try to pay, you know, wait till after the dance and be like, "Here you go." Hey, Dude, you know what? Why don't you take a little bit extra? That shit's gonna reflect. <laughs> yeah, they're like, "Yeah, and I'm gonna be rich because I discovered there's fucking money that's made out of orange and white fucking paper that have <laughs> Ghostbusters on them." Or, or just like do a Dumb and Dumber and just like write down IOUs and like this is even better than money. That shit. I think, that's gonna, I think it's gonna reflect in the fucking lights when you're handing it over. They're like, "That, <laughs> that guy's giving her Monopoly money." Jesus Christ, it just keeps... It's like I'm made of money. Oh, Lord Almighty in heaven. Courtney Reed says, Ordinary Angels for an Oscar. I'm calling it now. I don't know what that is, Courtney. What is know. Ordinary Angels? Are you talking about the baseball team, the Angels? Are they ordinary this year? No. They're just ordinary? Ordinary Angels movie. It's a 2024... 20, 20, 20, 20, starring Alan Richson. Okay. It's inspired by mm. a true story in 1994 in Louisville, Kentucky. A hairdresser rallies the community to help a widowed father save the life of his critically ill young. That sounds sad as shit, man. That sounds good though. What? I mean, what oh, dude, I'm gonna. I don't know what that is, Courtney. But did you see? I don't know. I was gonna ask you. You can answer too, Courtney, or you might. What I it took. I didn't even know what that was. There's been a weird ad going on YouTube for a movie that's coming out, and it's like it goes boom, boom, and it's like they're like it's like in the 50s, and they like he's like spraying like weird shit on his ground and it's like kids running around this house like a, it's like a scary music it's a uh, long legs it's 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 called long no, legs no it's it, it's about the nazi it's about fucking uh like them uh, trying to raise a normal family next to a concentration camp oh that shit already came out that's up for best pictures it's called um don't tell dad the babysitter's dead part yeah, two don't um, tell dad our babysitter's a nazi oh what's that movie called it's one of those fancy fucking awesome I, actually i th but i didn't know what it was about and i looked it up I'm like i actually would I, like that sounds like if it's fucking i'm kind of like if it's creepy or weird like i want to watch that shit uh it's uh i thought you were talking about long legs it's called the sound of silence stuck. or something or, no, or the echoes of time <laughs> the zone of interest is what it's called yeah i want to watch There's that shit that's how I feel about the interest. the hostess cupcakes. My zone of interest is absolutely the top like layer of the hostess cupcakes. I will just peel that shit off and eat it like a chocolate potato chip. Yeah, um, my zone of interest is like when the when the bartender says, "What do you want?" And that's it. <laughs> here, right here, where they make a little uh, yeah, make a little alter, please. That's it. Uh, yeah, I did. I did see the synopsis for that. Someone said it was like the scariest movie of the year. I was like, was that a horror movie I missed? That's up for best picture. Say, and I, I get scary because it's fucking depressing as shit. I think it's supposed to be a psychological. I think what the, the inhumanity that they, that the fact that they're trying to have like a 1950s, like Mr. Sandman type of environment while they're literally gassing and killing Jews right next yeah, to them. That's what it sounds like. Oh sure. yeah. Because that thing I don't like spray, that. he's on the ground is lie. He's putting lie on the ground. L Y E yeah. to cover up the smell of, of bodies. Yeah. That's you fucking, know. it's crazy. Jay's killed seven hookers since 2023 ended. That's no witnesses, like no month. bitch. Just fucking word against word. <laughs> That's why April's not in the live streams anymore. She saw it happen once. So he's got her locked in the basement. She's dead.
<laughs> she, hey, where's your girlfriend? Oh, she's dead. She got hit by a bus. Yeah, you yeah, fucking left me. I don't know. Maybe move to fucking Canada, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Root Dude Dex Tootin says, Now, boys, we take gorilla poison very seriously around these parts. You ever watch that movie called Tiptoes with that boy Matthew McConaughey? He can't spell McConaughey. Uh, mighty fine film. Damn near made my dog cry. Girl, man, go. <laughs> No, Root Dude, no, I ain't never seen no goddamn movie with no Matthew in. What the fuck you talking about? Gary Oldman is National Treasure, even though he ain't no American. <laughs> he ain't no American, so I ain't going to root for him that hard. Now, you guys understand here, Root Dude. You come in here talking about tiptoes. Let's be honest what you're talking about. You're talking about sucking that toe jam off. That's what you're into. That's your fetish. You just watched it because it got you turned on. Tiptoes, you're like, I want to see some. Yeah. I want to see some toes and that toe jam. It just happened to be a good goddamn movie. Your dog's crying because it's got allergies. Now, stop lying. <laughs> Toe, toe, toe jam. <laughs> toe, toe jam. My, my mama uh, said toe jam. Toe jam. <laughs> Mike Barton. My end. Oh, yeah. Michael said he was going to get Suicide end. Squad. I, was, uh, I want Michael to tell us how good, if it's good. It comes out February 2nd. He says, I really waiting for Wonder Woman game from Monolith, mm. but I'm still going to play Suicide Squad. No, I know. And I want to know. I, I genuinely want to know. Maybe it's great. I don't know. I'm not trying to shit on anybody that wants to get it. I mean, that's cool. And the Wonder Woman game. Yeah. that look. There's also an Iron Man game that I think, I mean, I was like, why didn't really, we haven't got an open world Iron Man game. That would be fucking awesome. To fly around they made an Iron, Iron Man, Man game. <laughs> it was no, not Yeah, good. for the movie, for the movie. I think, but they're going to make an actual yeah. like spider-man-esque you know like traveling around the cities or whatever i think they might have missed the boat dude like i think they may have fucking missed superman the boat. should have existed already i don't yeah i'd rather get a i i, I want it honest to god badass superman game made by rocksteady i just don't I, how cool would that be man like you could literally play a super game not. i don't know it's whatever it's fucking... i i agree with you i mean the, the, the hulk game that came out was pretty good though that was pretty fun to play it was a little underrated uh, uh the incredible hulk i think it was no, yeah, that was on the uh, Xbox, was it, uh, or PlayStation 2. Um, some Rage of Destruction. That was a fun game where you just went around, like, basically, like, destroying shit. Yeah, that was cool. And, and like, uh, what was the game? It was pretty popular right when, like, Xbox 360 and stuff came out. Ultimate Alliance? That was pretty fun. It was, I like, fucking love cool. I got Ultimate Alliance 1 and 2, and then the third one was released on fucking Nintendo Switch or some shit. I don't know. I was like, yeah, good yeah. job. Great marketing fucking team right there because everybody <laughs> fucking was going to go after Nintendo. Yeah, those games were pretty fun. I, I really think they missed the boat, dude. If these games, if someone would come out with like a like an ultimate world beater game, like I'm talking about a Halo level, Grand Theft Auto scope, fucking uh, GoldenEye level, ultimate fucking badass superhero game that was all Marvel or all DC, I think it could have ran gaming dude, for I, fucking the past... Uh, since superheroes were hot for the past like 20 years or whatever it really could have taken everything over i think they fucked up here's by trying to do. be cheap and throw out like shitty shit here's you know? what you do if they want to if they want to make something like epic and badass and get the dicks hard across the world get midway involved make a dc versus marvel video game and do it in the mortal combat style Tell you do what, it in the mortal combat style. like who the fuck nah, would want no, no, no. Want to do more Superman combat. versus the fucking Hulk, and you can do fatalities and shit. That's badass, yeah. dude. But in the end of the day, it just comes down to button mashing and learning the codes. Like, I want story. Like, I want a fucking like, game. There is a story. Like, there's, no, there's, no, you'd still make a story out of it. Like, the Mortal Kombat's got a story. It's not, like, that, that overly deep. But it's... It, it, no, actually, the newer ones are decently... Deep yeah, story. but it's not, like, actual... Like, you walk through the fucking game. Oh, you want... Like you you want you're talking about like RPG. No, no, I'm talking about just a game, man. Like they used to no, make that's an like RPG. a fucking I, game. Like so you take it, I'm saying it's a role playing game. Is you're taking control of the character and they're telling you a story through that character's eyes. That's yeah, a role playing but, game. Yeah, but they're not like, do you want cheese or biscuits? No, that's, that's, that's different. A. <laughs> I like what kind of. But what kind of cheese are you having at this tavern? <laughs> <laughs> I like those kind of games, like Skyrim and shit. I would fucking spit. I know on, that's not what I'm my, about. No, I'm I know, but about, that's like, a different kind of RPG where it's like you make the look and, and you're the guy. And all. by the way. Another great fucking game that came out, uh, X Men Legends. That was fucking great, dude. On PlayStation, that was a good 2. game. I yeah. love those kind of games. But yeah, something like that. I don't know, man. I, I, again, I'm. Are we surprised that these companies are like addicted to like just bleeding money and that they have some kind of like uh, I don't know allergy to making money? No, I'm not surprised anymore. It's 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 strange to me. They know what people want. They know what the fucking people want. They won't do it fucking uh sorry curse curse just said <laughs> it's just it's not fun like it's not funny like that's that sucks and i, I don't know what all that entails and i'm sure that's kind of scary and i hope everything goes that goes smoothly for you as you navigate this but just it was just the timing was just curse just goes i just learned that i have a nut allergy <laughs> <That> is, 
<laughs> dude, that sucks, bro. You no more fucking paydays no. for you. Uh, yeah, I, I hope you mean like you know not the food kind because I have one of those too. Like I don't like anyone blowing on me well, in or around. You get nut for the rest of your life. God damn, dude, that's the worst. <laughs> but uh, I'll tell you what, man. Uh, that was that actually reminds me of I was watching uh, I was watching PlayStation's uh State of the I think it's called State of the Play today fucking sucked dude it was awful i waited around to watch it came on at five it was an hour oh you know say the play is like playstation showcasing all the stuff that's coming out oh i point. thought it was a ben affleck political thriller no no no. uh that's called some of all fears i was so watching that, it though actually, but that, actually yeah it, it didn't have like his internet that's a good movie though actually i actually, russell crow yeah no that's uh it's morgan freeman no i'm talking about state of play Oh, anyway. Anyway, yeah. just like... uh, to say to play, uh, <clears throat> the only good thing about that was Silent Hill 2 is being remade, and then there's a free to play song. Everything else was garbage, but I was watching it. I was watching it with the live stream, and it was fucking boring, dude. Everything that they showed, the, I think the last Ronin or, or, or something, I didn't, I wasn't interested in any of these games, but somebody was like, <laughs> dude, I was watching it. I, dude, it just stuck to what he said. I have a peanut allergy. This guy was just like, I farted. <laughs> Dude, it was a funny. I think those are the funniest fucking comments, dude. The most random because everybody in the chat, there was 155,000 people watching it. And the live stream was fucking going crazy. And that's the one I fucking picked up. I saw it as clear as day, dude. Like it was highlighted. <laughs> and it was the funniest shit because people were having like deep conversations about like, I want this. Uh, where's the DLC for this? And don't you guys know what the great? And he's like, it's just, I fart it. <laughs> it's so fucking funny, dude. I don't that, know why. I just, that reminds me of uh, when I got kicked out of the, when Blumhouse was doing some sort of like online stream and they were announcing something for Halloween and I was in there making dick jokes and they booted me. Like Blumhouse actually kicked me out of the yeah. fucking live stream. Yeah, I was like, well, all all right, right. All right. There was 155,000 people, so no one caught it. But dude, it was like a goddamn bat signal to me. I saw it right away <laughs> and I zeroed in because everybody was being petty in the fucking chat. So like Xbox dead, yo. I was like, you guys are still having console wars? Oh my God. And it's just, it's just I farted. <laughs> I, guess I, I was like that's such a great troll dude i love people like that they're so funny it reminds me of that kid his name was adam i got in a fight with him in middle school but on the bus he got in trouble because he kept going i have a boner <laughs> he just kept saying it like in that exact tone but he walked by the bus driver like i have a boner <laughs> he got like suspended i it. have i have a urination problem so i have to go use it i thought it. that might be i'll coming. be back soon okay enjoy tinkle time Jay's going to take uh, follow us on Instagram. Uh, every time Jay goes to take a pee break, he records it on Instagram lives and uh, he does an AMA. But the, don't worry, the camera is on his dick the entire time. Uh, he actually makes it answer the questions for him. He like flops it around. He's like, yeah, so I do want to play Suicide Squad. And like makes it, it's entertaining as hell. So follow us. We watched the movie at Instagram to see Jay's dick during pee breaks. I wonder how many people are actually going to fall for that. And by that, I mean, I wonder how many people are going to get that awesome footage. Uh, that we've been waiting to show you um, on our Instagram at We Watched Movie to see Jay's dick. That's a promise. I've never told a lie. Cherry trees, stuff like that. I don't know. I don't. Mr. Klaus, Mike J, how much do I pay you to do a commentary on Brawl and Cell Block 69? I know you said 99, but it's way funner when you say 60. It's like Quentin Tarantino and Rob Zombie had a very smart and successful child. Uh, we have to do it. There's TR on Patreon where we will do a commentary. Those do take a little bit longer, though, just so you know. Uh, and by the way, I want to say we're going to start working pretty hard on cutting that black log, backlog down. Uh, <laughs> cutting that backlog down. Um, uh, God damn it. <laughs> we're going to work pretty hard on that, that log. Uh, just really just taking it in bit by bit. Um, we're going to really try to be working hard on cutting, getting, getting to some of those commentaries here pretty soon. Got some good ideas for that. Just so you know, uh, anyways, broad cell block 99 is a fucking awesome movie. Um, it, that movie is amazing. Uh, all the movies that guy does have been pretty fucking good so far. <laughs> uh, I've been pretty good so far. Brawl and cell block 99, uh, just a crazy violent old school, just feels like a Charles Brosnan fucking just dark twisted nasty fucking movie but it's awesome and it starts vince vaughn of all people just beating people's fucking ass like his name was bronson with that well the one with tom hardy in it uh and then what's the other one dragged across concrete i know there's a lot of shit around that movie because mel gibson and blah 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 fucking good movie and you guys know me i'm not like you know one of those i'll do anything that's uh but the movie's actually really good as far as old school action movies go and then he did another movie fuck what's the name of that movie 
what is the name of that fucking movie that that guy did? It's not those two. It's another one. But that was good. Bone Tomahawk. I think he's the Bone Tomahawk guy, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, dude does all bangers. So, uh, yeah, we love that movie, dude. I, I actually, I told Jay, I was like, you got to watch this. He's like, no. And I was like, do it. And he's like, no. And I was like, well, he touched my dick. And he's like, all right. And he watched it. And then he liked it, too. So um, we may have reviewed it a long time ago. I can't remember for sure. But anyways, yeah, that's what's up with that. Adrian Yabara. Jay, guess that uh, I'll, I'll, I'll wait till Jay comes back to read that one uh, for him. For him. Hi, him. Gary McDonald said, hi, Mike and Jay from Ireland. Did you ever play the Batman Arkham Asylum? Uh, so it's weird with that game. Um, <laughs> uh, with that game, like Jay and his brother Cody fucking love that game. And they they play the shit out of it. Beat them all. Play it all the time. Nonstop in their skivvies. I tried to get into it. And I had a good time as Batman. Like at first I was like, this is, I get it. Like I fucking get it. These Arkham games are badass. You're Batman and you're walking around beating the shit out of people. But I just am not good at games. And I got really kind of bored pretty quick. I'm like stuck in a hallway and I can't find the fucking door. And they're like, you need a key code. And I'm like, just let me go in there and fucking punch someone in the face 12 times. What is this bullshit? I just want to get these ice skates home and you're not allowing me to do that because I'm in an eBay store and you have to sell them on eBay. But um, they love them. I know that for a fact. And what I saw was pretty badass. I just, I could never finish one as much as I wanted to. Unlike in bed where I always finish. And when I'm eating sandwiches because they're so good. Gary McDonald said, Mike and Jay, did you see the newest trailer for the Ghostbusters? Gary, I imagine that you probably already saw us talk about that because we did about 20 minutes ago. We broke it all down. Uh, but thank you, man. I appreciate it. Um, Gary uh, J asked why you aren't uh, gay. Yeah, I could never find a man. Uh, that's fair. Not a manly enough one for you. Uh, he he asked about the Arkham Asylum game, Batman Arkham Asylum. Yeah, we uh, well, you've played it. We both have. Yeah, yeah. I just said that you liked it a lot more than I did. Like, oh yeah, I, 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 I think uh, part, uh, Arkham Asylum was amazing uh, for everything that it, that it gave, but. I think uh, Arkham Knight was man. I loved Arkham City. I liked the, the the fact that you could drive the car. Like that was always a cool thing. And and they they also included the eighty nine bat suit. Who's not gonna rock around with that that fucking bat suit? Those are the good. Yeah. By the way, um, I was gonna tell you, dude. I got you. Uh, I forgot. I, I April reminded me. Pull. Go on. Uh, type in Lightning Collection. Uh, Red Ranger. I got this for you. It's not here yet, but it, it'll be here. You know I love the Red Ranger. That's why I got it for you, bitch. Don't toy with my emotions. Is it a toy? Yeah, it's a toy. Is it the fucking... It's, uh, just type Hold in Light Lightning Collection uh, Red Ranger action figure. It should pull Is it up. this? Yeah. Uh, no, it's not that one. Oh, so good. Because I was like, I mean, that... Don't no, it's not. I didn't, I didn't spend Specifically that Specifically in this area right here, yeah, I'd really like to just, yeah. you know... It, it's non-threatening. Mm. It's tucked in his ass, for sure. No, it's not that mm. one. That one was great. Uh, but it's something... No, that's like a... Where are you at? Like, that's the, that's like a that's like a super duper one. That Mine was like 40 bucks. I just typed in Lightning Collection Red Ranger. Uh, it doesn't matter. You already <laughs> spent too much, whore. Uh, okay, I think it's this one. Uh, it must be this one. Maybe hang on, I'll show you. I, you, I'm the worst. I, no, I, no, That's I was, I it? thought, I thought about getting you that one, but the because he's wearing the Green Rangers thing. Remember that one episode in Power Rangers where he like gets the power, of the shield. I didn't like that look. Yeah, I'm with you on that actually. Um, uh, hold on. Um, uh, I think it, hold on, it might be this. Um. Oh, I think I know. Oh, no, I I know what it is. Hang on, I got it. Is it? Uh... It's this one. No, it, it comes with it comes with Jason's head. Oh, this one. Yeah, that's it. That's fucking sexy, dude. You got that for me? Yeah, I got that for you, chap. I'm gonna come over there and suck your yeah, dude. Dick I, dry. Look at the poses you can do with it. Oh, <laughs> go ahead and yeah. to the left. Go to the left left side of the screen and go to like this is what you gotta do when you open it. Dude, that's badass. Like that's a, that's not what you want to do though. That just looks like you're getting ready. To, like I don't know. Like oh, it's got right there too. I know. That's and if you put sick. the lightning effect on it. That's gonna be sexy. Looks dude, like that is. Good. Dude, thanks, man. That's gonna that's gonna go right on the old testicles. Yeah. Right there, dude. Yeah. Look at how shiny the hat is too. Like you, can yeah, see dude. Like you know, it's so weird. It. Like back in the day when we got Power Ranger toys, they were nothing like. I got the we got the no. flip. Like where you could like hit the belt and the head would flip. 
Yeah. You know, I, yeah, they were dude, like, look at the articulation. Holy shit. <laughs> I'm gonna get a fucking sand pit <laughs> and like yeah. rocks, and I'm actually gonna like put him in his own sand pit. You gotta get like an go. yeah, just get like an aquarium set and then fill it with sand. <laughs> that's fucking badass, man. Yeah. Dude, I look at the I, look at the sculpt on his face. Like, look at the sculpt. That's pretty good for for this, the actor Austin St. John. That's pretty dead it, on. What's weird is that it looks like him now more than then, which is kind of dope. Actually, it, kinda, it does. I'm not gonna way. lie though; it kind of looks like Artie Lang with a blown out nose from Coke, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> dude's got a thick. It's nose. not bad dude's though; it's still dimples. looking good. It's got nice hair. I just love the helmet, dude. Like the helmet, the, that red dude, is I, so I, sweet. I, I would love to get. Uh, I because I, I love the Green Ranger and Mike likes the red. We both get like a green and a red. Like you know they have, they they make the collector's edition helmets. Yeah, but they're too. Oh, dude. I just don't want to get full size. Yeah, but they're too expensive. That'd be insane, man. Yeah, dude, I I love that, man. My favorite toy, like maybe of all time, is probably the uh, the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie one with the chrome, the red, the red chrome. Yeah, they're, they're, There's something it, about that. They just, just look, their shoulders off. were too big. They look like they were like like fucking power women from the eighties that held those shoulder pads. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that is true. That did. I was like, so pissed when I saw that fucking movie. Like they weren't even in their fucking outfits, dude, for half the movie. Well, so I, you know, the very beginning of that movie when they were in the leather shit, I was like, that's badass. And I was like, why don't they just use that for the TV show? And then I realized, you know, later on, it's like because the cost, bitch. They just filmed all that stuff yeah. in Japan and they just reused. That was cheap. Genius, actually. It was really fucking genius. Yeah. But they shouldn't have kept doing it. Like once they had so much money, they should have, you know, if you, like. They, when you make that much money, you put it back into the business. You know what I'm saying? They should have taken that money and like upgraded what they were doing with the show. No. And then the show, who knows, could still be fucking no, successful Nick and popular Nick today. Saban, Nick Saban was like, uh, how much would that cost? A lot more than we're making. Do, do it change in the thing? No, no. no. <laughs> then uh, you, you keep pumping out shit product. Uh, they keep buying. In the store. <laughs> it, That's it. Uh, but I, because I think that I don't I don't know the actual name of the uh, the Power Rangers in Japan. I can't remember. I'm sure somebody in the chat was the act. But the Power Rangers that Americans got was like the fucking 14th season of Japan's. Like yeah, it, uh, like the the Power Rangers had been around in Japan since. Oh, the, the 70s. action, the action part of it. The was, actual yeah. Power Rangers debuted in the, in Japan like the late 70s. Which is fucking wild, dude. Like that was such a smart business choice. The way did they you did ever? That. I, you, you remember? I I, I quit watching. Mean, the, the, the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Obviously, watched the shit out of that with Jason David Frank, Austin St. John, all of them. But then uh, the Zeo Rangers, I kind of fell off of it. Even though I will say the Zeo Rangers theme song is fucking badass, dude. Like that actually is a great theme song. I I was done after the originals. Like honestly, I never got into like Power Aqua Teen Hunger Force Rangers, like Sand Crust fucking Rangers from Texas, like whatever that was the Texas best one. Rangers. Uh, yeah, I could never do it, dude. Uh, what's crazy to me is you go to Comic Con and you will see Power Rangers from like Power Rangers Zeo Force Nine, the Diamond Years, and they'll be charging seventy bucks for a fucking honor. I know. Or I tried, bucks, dude. I tried. I, I, I did. I, I, I tried to uh, take on a on a on a uh, pilgrimage, and I was gonna watch every single Power Rangers. Like all of them, it just yeah. And I try do. I got up to uh, you have to write a book if you're no, no. I got up to Time Force, which was like in uh, I don't know, 2006. That actually wasn't bad. It was a lot, it was a lot darker than what they had done before. It was actually a pretty adult, not adult, but it was a lot more darker than any other Power Rangers show before it. And then I just I lost interest because then it got back to real goofy ass shit. And they brought back J Jason David Frank came back. Uh, oh really. He, yeah. Damn. I didn't yeah, know he, that. He came back as like some kind of like super special professor that would only come out once in a while. I don't know. Oh, but dude, Mufasa in the sky. Yeah. But they also also say John, dude, also say John, he had, he was the original Red Ranger and then he was the Gold Ranger. The Gold Ranger was fucking badass, dude. <clears throat> Did you ever see that one? The Gold Ranger? Uh, No. That sounds awesome. Look, no, look up. Just type in Gold Ranger Austin St. John and look how badass he looks. Oh, Austin St. John was the Gold Ranger? Yeah, he was the... Because of, dude, I just I got way too excited. He was a gig of fucking Chad, man. dude, because it took three guys to hold the power of the Gold Ranger, and he said, I'll take all that dick myself. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, literally, he does. Like, look at the Gold Ranger, dude. Look how badass that looks. And he had a... Fu look at that. That's not... Like that right there. That's Gold Ranger. Okay, so I... I I don't love the no, like, I, no, but that's that's not it. No, that's not it. I don't know. That's the Octos. What the fuck is that? Is that an Octo mom? Go to Gold Ranger Austin St. John. Just go no, type in Gold Ranger Austin St. John. Okay. And that's okay. That's dope. Yeah, dude. That's fucking sick. You like the dick? You yeah. like about that? I, I have a message for you, Miss O'Neill. <laughs> <laughs> have some balls. I do. He had a dick. Dude, his Zord was a pyramid. Like, it was a fucking pyramid, dude. That's, that's bad. Badass. Look, look at that. Yeah, yeah, I know. That's that. That's handsome right there. That's a man. That's a man. 
the American sniper. Yeah, what? Dude. That sounds weird the way I said it. Uh, dude, I love Austin St. John. I just well, love everything. You know, about I, this I, I, I do. Lo- I, I, you know, I like the fact that he, uh, he, uh, there's Rocky on the left that took over. Remember Rocky? Oh yeah. Uh, where, where, where is Rocky? He oh, in, in that, that picture? Was, no, no, no. He was in the right. Uh, you just had it up. It was right there <clears throat> with a go to the, go right. No, go keep going, keep going right there on the left. The toys on the left. Oh, Rocky. really? Yeah, that's fucking weird. But no, you know, it's, it's weird. Like I'll say, John and Pre- I mean, I think he he became like an EMT, like after like or something, or, or he he went Which over. Like, I think or he went to the Marines or something. I don't know. Like he sort like he did like something for his country, which was cool. That's and what the I, Red Ranger would fucking do, Jay. Not yeah, the well, Green Ranger. <clears throat> the Green Ranger was too busy under Rita's influence. Like yeah. he had to fight, he had to fight the evil within all the time. To yeah, maintain. he just went and beat up old Sean Claude Van Damme and thought that made him awesome. I, listen, I don't, I'm, I separate the art from the, the artist. Rest in peace, Jay. Because first break. off, yeah, Tommy was to not, but Tommy, Tommy wouldn't be like that. You know, I, huh? I gotta be fair. When I saw, listen, when Tommy came on on board in the original Power Rangers, I thought he was a douchebag. I don't know anybody. I'm not talking about the actor. I'm talking about the character. He was douchebaggery number one. Because first off, he was moving in on Kimberly. And that was already the Kool Aid of 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 of, of uh, what's his name Austin St. John's character. Thank you, Red Ranger. Jason. Jason. It's already Jason's Kool Aid. Yeah. And then and there's this cool guy and his fucking muscle tee green shirt and his yeah. ponytail comes in and he can yeah he can jump a little higher. He's got a little bit better bone structure. But bitch, that or that Kool Aid stands closed. I own it. And then he's like, no, 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 I'm gonna take that shit. It turns out he was an asshole the entire time. Kool Aid stands closed. <laughs> <I don't> <laughs> uh, before I go take my PP break, Adrian had one for you. Oh uh, yeah, oh I could just answer that 100 fucking percent, dude. I've heard. So he says, Adrian, thank you. So he says, uh, Jay, guess that V McMahon biopic won't happen. They are giving him Ben Watchman. His name will forever be removed from WWE history. Legacy tarnished. Sad. Yeah, dude. Um, I mean, again, I hope's gone. We're also well. He's not been found guilty yet. I mean, I you know, and I understand like there's overwhelming evidence that it you know that it most likely occurred. But it's always people jump the gun a lot. I'm not saying that it didn't happen, but we'll have to wait and see. I'm not a dick writer. I don't love Vince McMahon just cause, just to love Vince McMahon. If he did it, he should go to fucking jail for the rest of his life and get anally raped while he's there. But Twice. But, you know, again, innocent until Perhaps proven guilty. Times. That's just the truth. Yeah, the allegations are stiff, but it's not like people can't just make allegations and make shit up to ruin someone's name. It happens. There was also rumors that the girl was extorting him for money, that they had stuff like, and he, she was like, give me more money, give me more money, give me more money, and he wouldn't do it. I don't fucking know. I do know absolutely it will not be a biopic. But then again, there might be, because even then, if, if, if it's, because what that would be a great, <laughs> imagine a movie like that, a biopic on Vince McMahon and the ending would be some kind of fucked, because they wouldn't paint him in a good light. Yeah. Well, it's like, I mean, it's kind of like, and I know what you're saying, like it, it, with Vince McMahon, where there's a lot of smoke, you know, where there's smoke, there's fire. There's a lot of smoke. There's been a lot of these. I'm not, yeah, he might out. have done it. But, I'm not saying. But, he's, you know, you, there's a reason you, you do the trial. You go to court and all that for sure, because, yeah, because there's also a lot of cases yeah. of Johnny Depp. Lying. dude. Everybody said there's smoke, there's fire. Like Johnny Depp was guilty. It, yeah. Disney and, removed him. Everybody removed him. Was Johnny Depp a good boyfriend or husband? Probably not. But did he actually do all the shit she said he did? Fuck no. <laughs> the worst thing I ever saw him do in any of those cameras when he's like, you want to see crazy? I'll start fucking crazy. Well, and he gets the big bottle of wine and just like yeah. pours wine into a cup. And he goes, that's fucking crazy. Well, you know what's really I'm sad about that? Is she, well, she agged him on because his fucking mom had just died. And mm. and she was like, she could go get a drink again, Johnny. And he's like, don't tell me what it feels like to be punched. But, um, but yeah, anyway, um, I don't know. Yeah, I, I think you're absolutely right. It's weird that Eric Bischoff is going to be in the Hall of Fame in WWF and they're going to remove Vince McMahon. Isn't that the fucking wildest shit you've ever heard in your life? They should at least wait until like there's a trial or something. Well, they're not going to remove him because he's not in there, but I'm just saying it's weird. Eric Bischoff is going to be in the WWE Hall of Fame. Yeah. <laughs> Vince McMahon, if he did all this shit, the Ben Walton, yeah. 100%. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I'll be right back. We are at 8.22 p.m. And when I come back, we will jump into top 10 movies of 1992. Okay. I like it. I like what you've done there. I like what you've yes. done. Yeah. I, by the way, I just want you guys to know I'm not a dick writer. I'm really not because I mean, you're a dick writer. You like that dick of Vince Well, he McMahon. is, but not a Vince McMahon. Yeah, not a Vince McMahon. Dick of anybody else for sure. But he's not a dick. McMahon. He's the dick star. He's a Star Fox 64 level dick writer. <laughs> yeah, I've got I've got five gold stars. It took me a long time. <laughs> uh, is there what what uh, who was it at? Uh, 822 with Sly Fox Gaming. Sly Fox Gaming. All right. Sly Fox. Uh, sup, Wambros. Sup, Sly. Uh, I just got over COVID. That sucks. Kicked his ass, though. You did. 
Uh, can I get a shout out from Marky Mark and Loom? It's been watching you all for years and love the content. Much love. Oh, thank you, man. I'm glad that you got over it. That sucks. Hopefully you didn't lose your taste buds, but we will do that. I will do that for you uh, as soon as Mike gets back. So Sly Fox Gaming at 822. Push out. D. Mitch, thank you, says, hey, boys, you can only choose one for the rest of your lives. Jay, video games or movies? Mike, music or sports? We love you, boys. Oh, and Fook, YouTube. Yeah, dude, I I can't stand it. I, I feel like YouTube, you know what? You know that scene in Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey when you like do everything you're supposed to do and you, and you, and you, you know like <clears throat> I just feel like Ted in Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey is like no way dude and then YouTube is like death played by William Sadler he's like yes way like there's no way you can fucking win whatever but yeah um the rest of your J video games or movies like like what on what platform like I, like video games like for like like no matter what like whatever platform or just a specific system uh, I mean, I would go with video games to be to be fair. I just think that you know it's because you can. Video games have gotten to a point nowadays where it's like it's like a mini movie. It's like watching a movie. Like the, the amount of money that they put into production of some of these games are are on the level of a, of a high a budgeted uh, Hollywood movie, right? You know, hundreds of millions of dollars are sometimes sunk into these games. So it's like you're getting like a movie experience, but the only difference is you're it's an interactive movie experience. Like you're gonna play the character and go through the story and 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 um uh witness all these things and be involved in all you know all these moments. So I I pick video games, but I don't know. I'll ask Mike though for you do Mitch at 820 both 822. Uh Iron Thermal says uh hey what's up guys i can't wait to see the movies will make y'all's top or i can't wait to see what movies will make y'all's top 10 tonight from 92 i'll see you see y'all next stream with my top 10 favorite movies from 93 keep up the amazing work boys hey thank you man thank you iron samurai you are not a ronin you will always have us as your backers because i think that samurai don't you become a ronin when you don't have a master anymore we're not your masters but you know what i mean so you're thank you dude i know that was a terrible joke i shouldn't even said it out loud my fucking mouth is stupid but that's but yeah, uh, got some good stuff. I th I think my I two list is gonna surprise some some people's. Um, it was actually a, it was a little bit harder than I thought because when I was going through, um, I I was like, oh my god, that came out in ninety two. It has to be up there, and they're not like exactly big box office budget movies. You know what I mean? So thank you, man. Um, Stone Skywalker. Well, how are you gonna fly an X Wing if you're stone? Fuck Luke playing Robocop on Jay's recommendation. Love this. Fuck yeah, dude. And if you're stone, it's probably even crazier. But yeah, dude, Robocop Rogue City. If you guys don't know, go check it out. Those guys did an amazing job with it. You've got Peter Weller, he came back as 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 Robocop in the game. Uh, so good, so well done. There's some problems with it, yes, of course. It's not a it's a it's a it's a probably a, it's not a triple A studio, it's more like a double A studio. But with all, they put a lot of passion and work, and you can tell they cared about the franchise. It's been a lot of fun. It's definitely nostalgia. Uh, and they just added New Game Plus. Hopefully some DLC comes at some point. But yes, RoboCop Rogue City. I think it's uh, on sale, maybe. But yeah. Um, so thank you, Stone Skywalker. The Bonk. Mike and Jay, are you guys going to see Argyle? I can't do I've heard. What the fuck is that? Argyle sounds like something like a, like a girl that you'd be dating, like named her cat, like a weird name. This is my cat, Argyle. She's like my whole thing. She's like whole, my BFF. She's my my queen. I love Argyle. I'm like, what the fuck? Are we going to have sex or what? Are you just going to be weird all night? You know what I mean? Anyway, I I don't know. I, I Probably. If, I have, what is Argyle? Give me a second. God, can you guys hear? I get so fucking frustrated when, I can't, like, when my mouse doesn't click. <laughs> Argyle. Oh, the, yeah, with uh, Sexy Superman. Yeah, Henry Cavill. Yeah, maybe. I'll, I mean, I, I get it. God, that girl's hot as fuck. Uh, yeah, I'll probably watch it. Um, Michael Parton, the trailer is nostalgia bait, but still flame. Why'd you get <laughs> I was like, the, in nostalgia. I was like, is there a movie called Nostalgia? I think you, uh, you know, like the Ghostbusters thing? Yeah, I think you're right. Still flames. I 100% agree. Um. Uh, Michael says, uh, Jay, do you have a battle cat and she raw action figure? Uh, yes, Michael, I have a battle cat, I don't have a she raw. Um, I, I was I was planning on getting her, and then I just I really I, I ran out of money. <laughs> I was like, I gotta, I gotta say, you know, I, I can't, we got bills and shit, so I can't keep spending it, but I don't have a she raw. I have a battle cat though. Um, 
it's great. I mean, it's a great figure. I think I showed it on stream once, but yeah. Um, I have a battle cat. I have, I do. I really wish I could show you. I mean, I've got to fucking do that, dude. I got to give you guys a room tour just so you can see all this shit. I got some cool stuff up here. I got a castle gray skull. Love that. But yeah, um, I have the battle cat. Child of the corn, thank you, good sir. Says, "What's good, fellas? Uh, what revolution? What revolution meant more to our generation? <laughs> the VHS boom or the Nintendo Sega boom? Also, is Nighthawks uh, is also is Nighthawk Sly's most underrated film? Uh, I like Nighthawk. Uh, I can't remember much about it, so I can't be fair and give a give the assessment there. But I, I mean, I, I remember liking it. And I don't. Yeah, you're right. My, a lot of people don't uh, mention it, so maybe. Um, but I've I mean, never seen Nighthawk." I need to watch it. It's a good movie. Uh, but it's not it, it, nowhere near top stop or my mom will shoot. That's an underrated film. Uh, from I'm kidding. <laughs> that movie sucks. Uh, but as far as Revo uh, Revolution, the VHS boom or the Nintendo Sega boom? Uh, that's that's a good one, dude. Because back, you know, before VHS, what'd you have? Uh, was it Betamax? Yeah, so, and like I, I feel yeah, like not a lot of people had those either. Like it was only well, they were expensive. Who had beta but, but when you before Nintendo Sega, you had like Atari, and it was like fucking Pac Man and Space Invaders. And then when Nintendo came out, you got like you got like Double Dragon, you got the like Turtles, you got like Mario Brothers, you got Zelda, you got all sorts of crazy, amazing like open world at that time with like graphics that looked be like pixelated colors. Everything was cool looking. Sega came out with Sonic and was even like a sixteen bit. Um, I, I would say as far as like, I, I probably would pick the Nintendo Sega boom just because of what it did for, without that boom, you, you wouldn't have like the, the Xboxes and the Playstations. You wouldn't have what we have now. I think VHS, I, you could still watch the Betamax, you could still watch it. You can yeah, still I, watch the movie. Yeah, but I, that's the only thing. It's like, I think I think with Betamax, if I'm not misunderstood, like it was only like very few people actually could own and afford one. So well, get like, a job. <laughs> I remember the first time we got a v, like a VCR. Like we we moved when I was a kid to a bigger house. My dad got a promotion, and like we like these boxes started to come in like Amazon, and we started getting like shit. And we got like a VCR for the first time, and it was like a Zenith fucking. That shit was fancy. I, I'll go VHS just because for me, the thought of a world where you you had to go to the cinema. It's kind of cool in a way, but like also, oh man, could you imagine like if you could not watch a movie at home? Like if you they never though. came. But like, well, yeah, but if you had that specific thing, but like if you didn't, and most people I think didn't, like if you couldn't watch a movie at home, that would just be a whole different. I would I would die. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'll uh, yeah. take VHS, but it is a good question. That's a really good fucking question. Yeah, I I just I I think overall, yeah, the VHS. I mean, uh, there's fond memories of going to the video store and literally renting like movies on vhs that i'd never seen like it was amazing but there's something there was something sexy about going and getting a, a nintendo game and having to blow in that fucking cartridge and put it in and get <laughs> it to work like battle toes and shit i don't know man like you just sit in with your friends and like taking turns on the controller i don't know but yeah um best. so uh we had two quite there was uh, i had to wait okay. for you to come back on 822 for sly fox gaming he said he got over uh covid kicked its ass but he wants a shout out from mm -hmm. marky mark and loomis uh, and he's been watching us for years. And then there's another one. D Mitch had a question for you. Um, and I'll get to that one, but so he wants to just a shout out for Sly Fox gaming, Marky Mark and, or in Loomis. Okay. Uh, let me find it here real quick. Real quick. Uh, Hey boys. No, 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 not that one. Oh, the other one. Suri. Suri. A22. Yeah. The one right above it. Oh yes. Sly Fox. What's up? When bros, I just got over COVID kicked its ass though. Fucking hey, Hey, you beat COVID. It's over now and you'll never, ever get it again. Zoinks! <laughs> hey, I, yeah, the COVID sucks, dude. Uh, I'm glad you got it over. Like, it wasn't a rough one on you. Uh, can I get a shout out from Marky Mark and Loomis? Been watching all, you all for years and love the comment. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, what's up, Sly Fox Gaming? I hope you're doing all right. I heard you got COVID, but you know that's not real, right? I hope you didn't get none of those vaccines because they're all fake and they're going to put a microchip in your fucking ear. And then the plants are going to come to life and you're going to have to outrun the plants and then everybody's going to fucking die. You're going to have to do movies like Father Stu because nobody's watching your fucking Netflix specials anymore. You know that movie Fear? I was in that fucking movie. There's nothing about that. I was just in fear. I want you to go watch it right now. You should have watched it when you were homesick with COVID and make you feel better. You could bump your fucking chest, get a, get a tattoo of your wife's name across your chest, beat up a father, tear up his cherry colored car. <laughs> you think it got on a, on, a, on a fast wheel. You need to be arrested. Anyway, uh, Sly Fox Gaming, you think you're slick. Obviously, you cheat in video games. That's why your name is Sly Fox. You think you're slick, but you're not. Everyone knows you use Chronos Trigger. 
You use goddamn <laughs> lock on shit when you play Warzone and you get off on it. You know why you got COVID? Because God said he doesn't like cheetahs in video game. So stop doing that shit. You might not get a goddamn COVID up your asshole. But good luck to you in your future endeavors. And I hope to God, if you're dating, that Sly Fox Gaming is not on your Tinder because you will remain single forever. <laughs> hey, some chicks might be into that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Sly Fox, uh, by the way, dude. Uh, and I'm glad you're feeling better. D Mitch is the next one, though. Uh, he, I picked mine. He asked me if I'd rather have video games or movies. You had to pick one. And for you, it was you have to pick music or sports. Music or sports. Oh, so it's just like. So, yeah, one of them goes away forever. Uh, music or sports. Oh, D Mitch. Fucking go find me. Shit. Yep. He comes around, um, he comes in like a fucking vampire and says he plays around with your family. It's like choose who dies first, like in Blade. Dude, that's really fucking Whistler. tough. Because they, they they both provide such different things. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like oh, shit, fuck, fart. Um, yeah, but dude, come on, you're not gonna tell me that you would that you would rather listen to music in your car and be like crying because it was something that hit you hard, or sitting at home on Sunday and watching an NFL football game and drinking beer. Yeah, but I'm also thinking like, you know, playing in a band. Those are some good years, you know, like fucking. Oh, God. Yeah, because you couldn't make it on the football teams. Like, at least I got to do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will take sports. I will. It hurts. God, that hurts. There's deep. too many I different. I mean, there's sports. too many. Dude, uh, sports is like sports is like it's it's a, you can live or die by the by the score of the game. Like it, it's 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 like it's like modern day gladiators. If you watch NFL. Yeah. Yeah, but then there's concerts too, like a life without concerts. So you're not gonna see some saggy oh. titties on a guy's fucking shoulders for like, okay. <laughs> I, I'll go sports because there's nothing like sitting down for a big Packers game. But damn, Jesus! Oh, oh yeah, I forgot Kentucky's playing right now. We, we started at eight. I want I, I don't know. Oh, they play tonight. Who yeah, they we're play? playing. I don't know. We're, we're playing at eight. Oh shit! I had no idea. We barely fucking... won against uh, I, uh, South Carolina or, or the Bulldog Georgia. We barely beat Georgia. Yeah, our last game we won by six. I know because the line was like five and a half. Um, okay, so we're at suck on them, fuck on them, touch them. Um, I got lost in the corn. I think we're okay. at. Um, yeah, we're after. Oh, goddamn, Lee, Me again, Lee. Uh, thank you, buddy, man. Really appreciate it. He says, Mike, Universal Islands of Adventure got Skull Island Reign of Kong ride, but it's trackless 3D dark ride that won't even come close to Confrontation. That's what it's called, Confrontation. That's fucking badass. Uh, will always be my favorite King Kong ride. Dude, I, I'm telling you, man, we talked about this in the last stream, how they got rid of, uh, uh, how Orlando at least got rid of Jaws. Uh, I think they got rid of T2, the ride. Mm, they got rid, they got of, rid of Twister. Of I think they got uh, rid of the Back to the Future ride, too. That's insanity. Uh, I saw so, it's so funny because right after that stream, I saw Universal posted some video and some fucking nerd was sitting there like, you know, being the captain of Universal is special. But I'm always like, everyone's like, what's your favorite ride? I'm like, the next ride. And that's why we're opening up bliggity bliggity blue. God, lay off the roids, man. You're scaring people. <laughs> I literally commented and I was like, hey, shut the fuck up and bring back Jaws, you piece of shit. Uh, yeah, yeah, I was dude. gonna propose to my girlfriend where when the jaw, like when the when the jaw, the shark popped out of the water. <laughs> How do you get rid of shit like that? Like, you guys have so much money. I, Just leave Jaws alone. Let us ride Jaws. Well, I think they were like looking at the, the fact that they were limited space or they couldn't expand and they were like, these rides aren't Maybe they weren't drawing as much as they used to draw, and they were, but yeah, dude. I mean, they got rid of that. They got rid of the Ghostbusters live show. I never got to see any of that. I haven't. I never got. I've never been to Universal. But if I if I ever got money to go, I would definitely hit those rides up a hundred percent and yeah, hit them yeah. up more than once to go see a live show for like Terminator Two and like that. And, and James Cameron filmed like that was like an action, like an extra like um, with Arnold and uh, the guy that played um, John Connor. They filmed like an like an actual like scene. Yeah, it was awesome. I would have loved it twice. A, a, yeah, and then I would obviously going going on a, on a, on the Jaws ride. Anyway, I don't know. What do we know? We're just fucking yeah. fat losers from Kentucky. We don't know anything about theme parks. Uh, Life sucks, man. By Skull the way, Island? Like, come on, Skull Island? Like, does anybody give a fuck about Skull Island when you is that Godzilla? To King Kong? Uh, well, I mean, that, no, I, mean, I mean, do you get to see King Kong? I'm sure, but it's there's no way it's as cool as like, dude, riding in that fucking tram thing with King Kong like reaching and grabbing your tram, picking him. Like, I I rode that ride like three fucking times, and every time I was kind of shitting my pants, going, "What if it, it actually picks us up and eats us, or like yeah. drops us, or whatever?" Like it, that shit was scary, but it was also that was fucking dude. That was living in a movie. It was so special. 
they're never gonna fucking what are they gonna put some harry potter bullshit in there like fuck god that sucks okay by the way i'm just gonna give you an update uh thank you lee by the way great questions i don't know uh universal is just idiots right now uh but i will say kentucky is up 60 to 58 at the second and halftime what are who they playing florida Oh, again, we already beat them once. So I think they're. I think they're. Well, we're playing. I think they're playing. We're number ten, by the way. We should, probably shouldn't be after getting beat by South Carolina like two. No, weeks we should ago. be like fourteen, it's but yeah, we're, it's a two point game. Anyway, it's wild line. Benjamin Sabi, would you rather make out with Jason or Michael? Michael, oh, Michael, Michael, Michael. Have you seen Jason's face? It'll never heal if you don't stop picking. Sure, <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's a chance Michael brushes when no one's looking. No, I, no well, at least he has shot. fucking lips. Like <laughs> Jason literally has no fucking yeah, lips. Dude. It's just teeth. That's, yeah, I, I kiss you like Marky Mark. Yeah, I and, and all like yeah, the only thing that's getting in Jason's mouth to clean it is he may grab a water hose out front and like do a little blah, 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 every once in a while. There's a chance Michael's hanging around around suburbia. He could come across some scope. Uh, it's definitely Jason. Uh, Michael. I mean Michael. Yeah, yeah Michael. Michael. All day. Michael um, all day. That being said. Let us get into it. We will, uh, if you guys want to keep super chatting, we really do appreciate it. Keep those coming. We'll answer all of them. Let's pause for a second, though, and get into our top 10 movies of 1992. This shit was fucking the hardest one yet, dude. I had a hard time I, with this list. I, yeah, I was telling you while you were, uh, while you were gone, um, I didn't think it would be that hard. Uh, it never is. But I didn't think it would be that hard. <laughs> but I, but when I, I went through the, the movies and, and the further I got down from like the big, you know, the top 10 box office, I'm like, holy shit, that movie came out in 92. Like it wasn't like renowned, but I like, I, you know, it, it threw my list off. So it took me, it took me a good 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, yeah. no, it did. This one took me a long time, but I'm, I'm nervous though, because. Looking to the future, like 96, 97, 98, 95, those are going to be fucking crazy. Dude, yeah, it's going to get so much harder. I got this one was weird because it was like there was no, there was not a single movie in this list apart from maybe number one that I was like, that's definitely going there. Like, I really had to leave yeah. off some classic shit. And I want to tell you guys something just so you know, my list is is and we say this every time, but like, we're not saying that these are the best quintessential movies, uh, ranked. But there are personal favorites, so please yeah, well, keep that no, in mind. That's, yeah, it's all personal choice. These are not like do not listen. I would don't even trust me if I recommend a good like a like a good like restaurant because it's probably gonna be terrible. <laughs> it's just my it's just it's just our preference. Like these are movies that I would watch or he would watch. Yeah, and they would I, just make you feel a certain way. Like I don't know. Yeah, and dude, I, I I left off like I have some honorable mentions that I'll go through at the end. I left off some all time fucking classic movies, and it hurts my fucking heart. But I had to go with my heart, man. I had to go with the the true trueness of it. So get ready to be angry, guys. Uh, Jay, what's your number ten movie of nineteen ninety two? Uh, my number ten, and like this is gonna seem so fucking low, but again, there were so many. Uh, it's gonna be my cousin Vinny. Uh, I knew you'd have that in there. Well, yeah, like, listen, my Vinny cousin, which was Mike, what Mike was typing was in, uh, like, what was the, uh, my cousin is hot and we fuck a lot was the unnamed title that came out. And then they were going to follow it up with his name is Steven. That was going to be the <laughs> prequel. Uh, but no, yeah, my cousin Vinny, uh, what the fuck is a grit? Like, dude, I don't like, I think that Joe Pesci was funniest as far as uh, like a comedic performance in the super, but this one is super close uh, as far as like best comedic performance. I can't believe this didn't win any awards. The fact that it, it, it it's got him, um, the hot ass chick. I can't remember her name. Whoa, uh, it's fucking uh, Aunt May now. She's so hot. I can't remember her name though. Oh, um, God, she's fuck. smoking though. She um, still is hot. Yeah, she is. Uh, but it's got it's got like uh, Ralph Macchio. I love the fact that it's in Georgia. I think. And they got this hot shot asshole from New York that's going to come down. He doesn't know anything about the Southern culture. He doesn't know anything about the how the Marissa the, Tomei. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the decorum of the South or the or the courtroom, and he comes in. Like, dude, I swear to God, when he comes in with his fucking leather jacket, and then the, the judge. Won. By the way, the judge is uh, Herman Munster. You couldn't get better, and you know the guy from the Pet Cemetery got a great voice. Uh, don't go up there. You never go up there. But when he was like, he tells him he's like, next time you come into my courtroom. I want you to be something presentable. And he like, where's that bullshit? And he's like, you were serious about that? <laughs> I, 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 you, I, love, and then I love it when, uh, when he goes to, uh, when he's like talking about going hunting with the, with the, the with the prosecutor and he was selling his girl. And he's like, you think these pants is what a hunters would wear? And she's like, just imagine yourself. 
okay? You're a little deer, and you put your your lips down, and you drink a little cool water, and bam, a fucking head or a fucking bullet rips off your head. Now, would you give a shit? Well, cause I, what kind of pants the asshole that shot you was wearing? <laughs> 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 I swear to God, it was so fucking good, dude. That movie is that movie that movie is so rewatchable. Like you can watch it like every other fucking week. It's so good. I do. I've never gotten into that movie. Like no matter how many times I've seen, uh, I'm, to be fair, I've never sat down and watched the whole thing. It's I need so to, good. maybe I will after this, but I've never, from what I saw, it's never, ga- it's never grabbed me, but like, I need to watch it for sure. It's Cause so I know everybody loves it so much. Uh, my number 10 is going to be, and dude, the number 10 was probably the hardest one to make. Cause like I said, I had to leave off some shit, know, but it's going to be, uh, Oh, um, that was different list. I was making for someone else. Um, passenger, 57 is going to be my number 10 movie uh wesley snipes dude the thing about this movie was is like it was yeah it was it was air force one with wesley snipes sure it was die hard it It was die hard on a plane with wesley snipes but he was the main fucking dude in the movie and not just that but the villain in this movie was so damn good charles rain like when they started the movie and this is before seven obviously but it still had this like seven-esque ass fucking opening where they're showing like the x-rays and shit like that this the, the villain was so scary, dude. Like he was he freaked me the fuck out. Charles Rain did. Yeah. And um, I think it was Charles Rain. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, that, that, that's his name. Yeah, it was Charles Rain was his name. It was played by Bruce Payne. But uh the villain was really scary. The villain was awesome. Uh and it's just him trying to stop a hijacking mm-hmm. on an airplane. But he was so fucking cool in that movie, man. Wesley Snipes was so badass in that movie. I love the name of it, I love the way it feels when you watch it. And like that, that, that classic fucking line where he takes the phone, he's like, always bet on black. He hangs up yeah. the phone fucking yeah. awesome dude uh i love passenger 57 so much really good movie you know, and it just further like um established wesley snipes as an action hero yes and he, he fucking i think it's like i mean I, maybe you'd have to go blade or whatever but like i think it may no, be my well, yeah, favorite well, old school um, wesley snipes action film blade is his pinnacle yeah yeah you're not topping that but, but, he, yeah, I mean, yeah, but he wouldn't have got blade if he hadn't already established he he had the cred on the street yeah, yeah, yeah Clint, Clint, he, clinton's you're right now give me a motherfucking handy wipe <laughs> that's great yeah uh, uh wesley snipes had the juice yeah it felt like uh it felt like speed kind of it was like wesley snipes speed like it had a lot of uh ties into that movie by well. the way i i know that we're not at, at the um honorable mentions yet but i will say um i didn't know it was that old uh juice the movie is fucking good and it didn't make my list Juice, Juice was fucking awesome, dude. I got to watch. I hadn't that, seen it since I was that kid. Depressed the fuck out of me. It's it, well, it, like, but it's like one of those when you watch it, it's it like it depresses you, but it's like so enthralling the story. And yeah. you're like, man, I'm like, it's like, man, I'm, man, I'm glad my life's not like that. Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It just it makes you appreciate what you got. Don't be a minister did a good job making fun of that movie and a lot of movies like it when it came out too. Like there was a lot of the shit in there. Uh, but yeah, no, that's my number ten. What's your number nine? Uh, my number nine, uh, another classic Wesley Snipes. White men can't jump. Oh shit, son! You can't have a Wesley Snipes discussion talking about early nineties without talking about white men mm-hmm. can't jump, motherfucker. Mm-hmm. You know, down here in in the south, baby, the, the wind likes to go to the left or the right. I know that's not the exact line. I don't give a fuck though. <laughs> Either way, uh, this is that. Like, listen, Woody Harrelson, Wesley Snipes as a duo, amazing. The basketball court, the pickup games, the fact that they have to partner up even though they don't like each other. King and the duck, baby. King and the duck. But they grow to respect each other as the film goes on. I love it. I like you could have easily just replaced the basketball stuff and they could have been cops and it would have been the best cop duo. It wouldn't have been the best. It would have been one of the best cop duos. But as far as them playing off each other, amazing, dude. Amazing. But uh, yeah, dude, at the end of the day, it's. It, what can you? I mean, what 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 do, you, what do you want to talk about? If you've not seen it, get the fuck out of my face. Go see it. Yeah. I remember this movie so specifically, dude, because this is a movie that my uncle lied to get me in to go see. I got I I went and see a th- I went into the theater to see this movie. Like I had to watch this in the theater because my uncle Mark was he wanted to go watch it, and I I guess mom I had given him some money to it would take me or whatever, and they were like he's like just tell him you're 16, and I wasn't. I'm not even. <laughs> I was like, uh, okay. And they, they didn't ask me. They're, he was like, no, he's 16. And they he got fucking two tickets. And we, and yeah. we went and watched it. That was that's one thing that That's one thing that did suck about that time. It's like you actually had to fight to get in movies if you were younger. You know what I mean? Yeah, I didn't like, think. I, maybe he probably, I don't know what. I don't know how. He, I think it was like, because it's 18. Does an 18 year old, uh, like 18 or up uh, movie at Reddit or you have to be accompanied by a parent or guardian. Yeah, so I think as long as you had a guardian, you were Yeah, okay. so I think that's why all he had to do was just be like, yeah, I want two tickets. I'm, you know, here's my ID. I'm t- over 21. Yeah. So that's, that was that's, it. 
Yeah, absolutely. Well, dude, I, I loved it. It was it was it was a funny ass fucking movie. It was nonstop uh, hilarity, and there was actually some touching moments in it too. And yeah, I and, and there were some real moments in that shit too. Like when uh, when Woody Harrelson loses all that shit, all that fucking money, he's got to play that pickup game to get his woman on Jeopardy and shit, and then she hurts fucking me. leaves him. Fuck that shit, dude. It hurts me. And when they go to that, when they when they win all that money, and Woody Harrelson's struggling. They're both struggling for money. Uh, back in that those that that when that in those days in that movie but yeah. like when when they go and they win all that tournament and he's got that fucking jar full of cash dude when when he you knew it was gonna happen when he was like he was like i can dunk he's like what do you mean you can't dunk? he's like you gotta fuck that shit you gotta take that shit in it's like ah yes yeah, slam it down yeah when they pull over and he's like i'll bet you all of our winnings that i can that, like, that was the like i know that was the worst and he fucking he... did it yeah so yeah he, yeah he was obviously addicted to gambling and it was it was like exploring that it's like we going to Sisla. We going to Sisla. And he's like, I don't. I come here. I wear the goofy hat. I wear the goofy shorts. You probably think I'm a chop because well, yeah, we can look at you. It's like, yeah, but maybe I'm doing this for a reason. <laughs> I, I do. I, I, I love the fact that Woody Harrelson hustled him. He hustled him yeah. at the very beginning of the movie, and they thought he was just some dumb white boy that was like coming up there trying to think he was badass. And he yeah. fucking wound up hustling him, and that's what earned Wesley Snipes' respect off the off the beat. Yeah, and then Wesley Snipes. I hated that part too when Wesley oh, Snipes yeah, talks him, him over. You're yeah. like, God damn it! It's so awkward too because it's like when your mom takes you to the the bully's house after you get in a fight with him because uh, his wife makes him go to their house to get their money back, and then yeah, they all like the sit in the kitchen. I, I like, the, I like, I like the fact that the two chicks though were mad at each other and they're like, well, "You ain't getting all that money back." What we're gonna do, and then when they go into the fucking living room where Woody Harrelson and Wesley Snipes and the other guys that hustled Wesley or, or Woody Harrelson, they're all like watching the game and they're all like bonded now. I'm yeah. like, well, that's a fucking foul. And then I was like, see, that's what I, that's all yeah. I, I, I'm not saying anything, but I mean, like, guys get over shit real quick if you get them a beer and watch the game real fast. Yeah. 100%. They're, like, yeah. they're like, hey, man, I'm just going to let you know what you did was kind of fucking. Like, we'll work on that. Let's watch the game real quick. Yeah, I love. I, I I agree with you. I, I love that scene so fucking much. Rosie Perez was awesome in that movie. She was like, oh, yeah. that start with the letter Q. Rosie Perez. I bought a Jeopardy. She was cute too. She was yeah. fucking. She was, yeah. like, she was like, she was like a bitch that would slice your fucking throat if you looked at a girl wrong. That movie taught me like, a lot angels. about women at a young age too, because she's like, she's like, I'm thirsty. And he's like, you want to get you a glass of water? And she's like, he's like, what? He's like, I offered you a glass of water. She's like, I want you to sympathize with my thoughts. Oh my god! I want you to tell. Yeah, me never mind. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm gonna have a good sex with you and then leave. <laughs> But yeah, that, that was great. There was a great relationship movie between those two. Great relationship movie between friends. Fucking amazing. All-time sports movie, too. I think maybe when... Uh, Not all, I don't know up, about all-time. It would be up there. I would definitely... For me, it would definitely be all-time. But I'll, I'll say this when... Uh, maybe for the, uh, the week of the, of the Super Bowl in a couple oh, weeks. Oh, yeah, we should do that. A top 10. Yeah, or uh, I was thinking a tier list. Just a sports movie's tier list. Like oh. whatever tier list movies uh, put uh, in there. Do we, do we a tier list on football or just all sports? Fucking all sports. We should do all uh, sports. There may not be enough football. Hey, wait to we'll show you all my fucking huge collection of tennis movies. That I've <laughs> Wimbledon was fucking classic, dude. Jude Law. Uh, my number nine is Paul be... you idiot. <laughs> I get them confused. They're like the same they dude. See, like... it's not just like yeah. Everybody's like, hey man, all know, black people don't look the same. I don't want to read this. I don't want to say past hurts. Yeah, um, it's fair. It's it's. But Paul Bettany does look like back in the day. He does look like Jude Law a little bit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. I was getting confused. I never liked either of them that much. But anyways, uh, lethal weapon three is gonna, gonna be my be number nine. Yeah, it had to be, dude. Dude, one of my favorite movie memories of all fucking time. It kind of let me know, hey man, you're a little bit different <laughs> from other kids. When we were, uh, we went to visit my dad's family in like Ohio. It took a movie and- for that for you. It took a mirror for me. <laughs> Well, it's the first time I saw Ryan Reynolds with a shirt off, really. But uh, I, <laughs> I, uh, everybody was going. It was back in the old school days, right? There's a family reunion to get together. We're all going to go see a movie, okay? So they open up the newspaper. You're looking at the show times, or, or and everybody's like, "Oh, we want to go see this. Let's go see this, dude." I saw it there, like a beacon in the night, just like that Lethal Weapon three. And I loved Lethal Weapon one and two, even as a kid. Uh, and I was seven years old at this time, but I was like, please, 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 weapon three, lethal weapon. And all the kids were like, Aladdin, Aladdin, we're going to the Aladdin. I'm like, fuck you, shut the fuck up, we're going to see lethal weapon three. But I got to go with the adults while the kids went to see Aladdin. Anyways, the movie's fucking awesome. I'll never forget how hard I laughed when uh, Mel Gibson as as Riggs, which was like my fucking idol as a child, and that probably says a lot about me as a fucking human being. But Just dude, don't, don't, t- go, don't get around him when he's drunk. 
Yeah, not maybe not him, just the character. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, I'm e- kidding. E- eating dog biscuits and shit. Like I loved him, but like when he mm-hmm. when, when he goes to siphon gas out of that thing and he pulls it out, it's it's not that funny today. But as a kid, it was the funniest thing I ever saw. He's they're siphoning the gas, and he, the gas comes into the hose. He goes, Exxon. <laughs> <And that goes, laughs> yeah. I fucking love that shit, man. Yeah. And all, when, when he when he goes to fight the dog, and there was that sex and, scene and, and Joe him Pesci's and Russo. A, well, Joe Pesci's got a larger role in this one too. Oh yeah, he was great. He's like, he's like, they, 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 they fuck you in the tractor. They fuck you in the tractor. Uh, but no, I, I fucking love that movie so much. I love every Lethal Weapon movie, so it was definitely going to be in there. But uh, it, it's my third favorite. I think they go down in quality as each movie goes. But I will say that they're all fucking badass, and I love Lethal Weapon three with all my hearts and farts for sure. I remember, it's weird for me. Like Lethal Weapon uh, one, obviously was gold standard, and then but I it's always like Lethal Weapon one and Lethal Weapon four are more memorable in my mind than the other two. But the but the cover of Lethal Weapon three for the VHS always sticks out with the white cover and it's red and then you can see Joe. Yeah, that one always sticks out in my mind, even like more over than the, even the other ones. 100%. I don't know. I have it but I, but but as far as memorable movies for me, it's Lethal Weapon one and Lethal Weapon four. Probably because Lethal Weapon four had Chris Rock in it. Yeah, butters. Yeah, yeah. I, I do. Lethal Weapon four is still awesome too. Yeah, yeah I love all one. those fucking movies, man. Um, uh, my number eight. I gotta. I got dude. I'm sorry, guys. I I literally. I like. I was telling Mike before the stream. I quit. I, I quit smoking for like fucking sixteen hours last last night, and diarrhea has hit me all fucking day. Uh, <laughs> You're taking and, a squishy one. Uh, I'm not. No, I I just got to pee, but I feel weird. I don't know. I feel like my butthole is like trying to rebel against me. I feel like <laughs> I, I'm like. I feel like I feel like a king with a kingdom that's in disarray and i don't know when they're <laughs> when the rebels are going to attack uh but anyway uh, my number eight is going to be stay tuned oh yeah i love uh that's 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 your list shut up i but stole no, it uh, john ritter <laughs> yeah, that's fine you can use it stay tuned man um I, I don't know how i chanced on this movie as a kid because i remember watching it and i'm like this is fucking great i love the idea that you get sucked into the tv program that you're watching and then you're a part of that world. But in this particular instance, you're like, it's all fucked up. It's like, I think the, um, the main guy, the, the bad guy in it, um, he was Ferris Bueller's uh, day off the principal. I can't remember the guy's name. Um, but he was like, I think he's Satan. I think it's a devil or whatever. It's so fucking good, dude. It's so, it's not, I know it's early nineties, but it feels so fucking eighties. Um, and John yeah. Ritter is great. He's so charismatic. The, 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 the girlfriend or the wife actually was great. Um, there was, a, dude, there was just something really, um, it made me feel good watching it. I don't know. It was like a comfort movie. I don't, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I can't explain it more than it, it just, it was a comfort movie. And I can't wait. But, 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 you know, there was like that, that fucking song that comes on when they were doing the dance. Maybe it wasn't that one, but it was something like that. Um, I don't know, dude. I, I just love that fucking movie. I, I loved everything about it. Like he was a potato chip or was it, well, not a potato chip, a, 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 a couch potato. Like that's what John Ritter was. <laughs> all he was a couch potato. All he wanted to do was stand and watch TV all day long. Watch TV, and his and his marriage was falling apart. He was still a good dad. He, was, but we all had dads like that in the early nineties, late eighties. They would just like sit in front of the TV and click on the remote. Give me yeah. the clicker. I want the clicker. And 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 then this fucking weird salesman shows up in the middle of the night. He's like, you can get all the channels that you ever want. All you got to do is sign up. Basically, sign your soul over, dude. The movie is really fucking good. It's, it's amazing. Deep, it's on. It's on deeper levels than people think because at the end of that movie, he realizes that he's been giving too much time and energy to TV and and appreciates his family and throws away the TV remote so he can spend more time with his family. I mean, there's a lot of. I'm actually surprised this movie was never remade into a horror movie because there's instances where it's very horrific. Yeah, and um, they, I think they have dead uh, Wayne and Garth in there too. They do. They have like, dead Wayne and Garth. They have like a Cujo miniseries because these are all like. Like, uh, like the TV shows that he's having access to are all fucked up TV shows. Oh. You know what I mean? And for those so, of you who don't know, that's the that's the plot. What Jay said, he gets sucked into. They have this giant satellite dish, and he gets sucked into the TV, and then he has to survive different channels yeah. that he's in. And as if the he movie doesn't survive, on. he gets he, they, he they get their he is sold. Before you go, let me change my battery because it right. just gave me the holy shit. But yeah, dude, it's 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 such a great movie, and I forgot that it came out in '92, but I I remember like it took me forever to find it like to buy it again uh, because I remember looking for it on Amazon. I tried to find like, and even before Amazon, I, I like I just before like going um, to stores and stuff and looking to see if they had stay tuned available to buy. And I never could find it. It was like a hard uh, item to get. And then eventually it, it was on Amazon and I, I was able to purchase it, dude. I love that fucking movie. 
I, did, I just think it's so good. And, and John Ritter was such a great actor, dude. It sucks that he's gone. Well, gone, way, gone way before his time, dude. He seemed like such a nice guy, too. And like a real dude. And, and he was really funny. And he, and he had a lot of range. And uh, he did always seem like that kind of dad that everybody really wished they had. You know what I mean? He just he, he always seemed like a dad that you wish you – like in real life, John Ritter was your dad. Like he looks like he'd be like yeah. cool with you, like talk to you and stuff. And like, 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 listen – you blew your load early. I understand. Like the only better dad than that is like the one from American Pie. Like, yeah. That's it. I think, I think, I think John Ritter is the best TV dad, best movie dad, whatever period. Yeah. I just watched Beethoven the other night. Uh, and that, that, that the movie dad in that one's really great too. Like he was in midnight run. He was in a bunch of, he passed away. You know, like, reminds me of John Lithgow. I know it's not him, but he reminds me of John Lithgow. I gotta see that a little bit. Now, he's yeah. not, but, but John Lithgow would be a pretty good uh, dad too. But yeah, stay tuned. If you guys never heard of it, you got it's pretty cheap on Amazon. You should watch it. We should yeah. do a review. We should do a, a review on it. I'd be into that, man. Yeah, I love Stay Tuned. It's it, if, if for those of you who love like eighties and nineties, like VHS nostalgia, like old cable and shit, man, it's fucking full of it. Yeah, like, it's great. It's, it's, I'll be right it's shocked. I, I. Um, I will do my number eight while Jay's gone and carry through. My number eight is going to be Condiman. The Condiman can cause he mixes it with sand. That's not, I don't think that's how the, the version goes. But yeah, uh, dude, I, there's not a whole lot of horror, honestly, that came out in 1992. It's weird when you think about the world we live in today and there's like horror movie after horror movie after horror movie. It wasn't really that way in the 90s. Candyman was so different though. Like, and it's still... You go back to this this classic version of like horror, like you know, '90s horror and shit like that, and it's mostly, mostly, it's like fun shit. You know, it's like Michael Myers sequels, Jason sequels. Candyman's a different kind of slasher in that you can watch this movie at any time, and it always seems to scare me in a way. It gives you the creeps, it freaks you out. It says a lot about social economical stuff and all that stuff as well with Cabrini Green and gentrification and all the stuff that they do with the movie for sure. But it's just got this crusty underpass feel to it. You know what I mean? Like the whole thing feels kind of dark and fucked up in its own way. And they managed to like, if this came out today, if someone said, Hey, we're going to tell this candy man story today where you look in the mirror and you say it five times and all that other shit. And you're going to get a Blumhouse bullshit, truth or dare fly by night, fucking corny tarot card, Ouija board, fucking bullshit movie. They managed to take a movie that could be just like some bloody Mary bullshit. And they managed to make this fucking thing really scary and say a lot. And Tony Todd was so fucking good in it. And between the bathroom scene, when the kid goes into the bathroom, scary as shit. Uh, the visions that they were seeing, the fucking bee, my victim shit, the fucking bees coming out of his goddamn mouth. And by the way, he actually did that shit. He got stung. I think they, I think there's a story that they, they offered to pay him like a thousand dollars a bees thing or something. And where he put all the bees in his mouth, I think he was stung like 26 times or something like that. So he was um he he made a bunch of extra money doing that shit but yeah dude it's it's to me it's like when it comes to slasher movies and slasher franchises there's not many that are scary and leave you with that dark fucking feeling the way candy man does and i just think it's a really really great film and virginia madsen was in it as well she was great in it but uh scared the fuck out of me man uh so fucked up oh so, so 10 times tomo 10 times but still uh yeah you're absolutely right it, it had a grit to it that made it feel tomo you're right had a grit to it that made it feel like you were watching something you shouldn't be uh and it still freaks me out to this day i don't even think the remake was that bad i thought i felt like they that last act they really lost their way and went fucking way to 2020s with it but i think it had some good shit in it for sure uh but yeah candy man's my number eight uh my number seven there's not a lot of horror on my list i mean that may be the only fucking one we'll see uh my number eight's gonna be under siege it is. It's going to be under siege. Like, I know Steven Seagal is a piece of shit now. All right. Like, now Steven Seagal is a big piece of shit, asshole, fuckface McGregorton. But Under Siege is, it's not my favorite Seagal movie, but it is his best movie. Like, I, when you, when you include the cast of uh, uh, Gary Busey, see, I always get him confused with Nick Nolte. Is it Nick Nolte? You're getting, no, it's Gary yeah, Busey. It's Gary Busey. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and Tommy Lee Jones. Uh, Steven Seagal's ego was so big, he was never one to like let himself have really cool bad guys that were going to outshine him. Under Siege is really the fucking, uh, you know, it's the needle in the haystack as far as those movies goes. The, it's one of the few times the movie around Seagal was good. 
Mm-hmm. And the whole idea, it was die, just like Passenger 57 was Die Hard in a plane. Under Siege was Die Hard in a ship. But the story was really cool where he was uh, a, basically a rejected military person who was forced to be a cook now. A lowly, lowly cook. Uh, but it was it added some comedy to it too because he's this cook on the ship that gets overtaken by these people and he gets locked up in the brig or whatever in the in the freezer and he's like hey somebody gotta check on my pies check on my <laughs> pies my pies yeah. are burning uh, and yeah. just it, it forced him to take a little bit of a backseat and check his ego a little bit and by doing that they made a, his best film of his filmography Undersea is so fucking good man it's amazing and and also the the cover art on the VHS is so good. Oh, yeah. Like it's just his fucking fat face, and then like a big ship, and you're like, I'm in. I want to watch that and be be enthralled with with uh, with Steven Seagal. The only thing is, uh, I remember I loved everything about it, but I always remember as a kid, and even now watching it, the fight between Tommy Lee Jones and him is so anticlimactic. Like I love like, it. it no, but it ends so fucking fast because you know that Steven Seagal was like, I'm not going to lose to Tommy Lee Jones. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't. I, I don't want to be touched. I don't want to be, I don't want to be cut. But also on top of that, by the way, Tommy Lee Jones, <laughs> like, if you really want, he looks like that fucking, like, like that one guy that couldn't grow up in school. And like, he just hangs out at karaoke bars with a leather jacket. <laughs> yeah, he does. He has yeah. that bandana. And the bandana. The, the fight scene, that fight scene always does stick out to me because A, he, Seagal lets himself get cut by Tommy Lee Jones. Uh, like he had that cut above his eye, uh, which you don't yeah, see happen got, a lot. He got nicked. Yeah, yeah, it, but that fight scene, dude. The way and he, there was like several knife fights in that movie. It wasn't you know that, that was one. accidental. That probably wasn't even scripted. That actually that's just true. happened because of an accident. Yeah, that's probably one hundred percent true. <laughs> but like Tommy Lee Jones is so, and like that fight where he's holding the knife and he's got his like wrist cocked that way and he's like, oh, oh, oh. and they had yeah. that like they literally just, sword fight with a knife and it's so it, fast. No, I, it was I know I like that. I just feel like it was so it was so fast. I mean, yeah, yeah. you could argue like, well, of course it'd be fast. Like in real life, that would be fast. But yeah, I was like, bitch, it's a movie. I want to <laughs> see some samurai type shit. But he know. does, dude. When he kills him, he shoves the knife into the cool. top Marley. of his head and then slams his face into the computer monitor. And yeah. and Tommy Lee Jones is so good in that movie too. When he's doing that speech to like the UN or whatever, it's yeah. basically his his uh, Ed Harris rock moment. Even though that came afterwards, but he's like he's like you tried to kill me, you son of a bitch. Now the yeah. revolution's gonna begin. He was so they had the best bad guys. The cake scene, the girl coming out of the cake, Ooh, happy birthday. Hot. Hot. Uh, uh, I will say, yeah. well, the thing about well, Tommy Lee Jones was in that movie. He was obviously uh, like. A hundred percent of Terry's. I know that the argument can be made about the rock with Ed Harris's character, but Ed Harris's character, his motivations were actually, it made sense. But like there, yeah. there was something about like, this was more of a personal vendetta that Tommy Lee Jones had against the department of justice or whatever. But either way, it was such a, it, it, like, uh, again, it, the movie is good, not because of Steven Seagal. It's because of the supporting cast around Steven Seagal. Like yeah. you said, that's what makes it so good. And I even like dark territory. I know a lot of people thought that movie, that movie sucked. But, yeah. that, but that's just because of the, the of how you got to imagine dude, Gary Busey and Tommy Lee Jones was in the first one and then they didn't have them in the second one. So it was never yeah. going to be on that high caliber. But anyway, yeah. I, uh, yeah. The dude from Uncut Gems is the bad guy. And that was just so weird to me. And then the bad guy from The Mask as well. That guy, uh, yeah. It, yeah. The, the main bad guy, I remember that was like that uncle of yours. He scares me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think, I, I think, oh yeah, that was, I'm going to find you. He was the guy in uh, People on the Stairs. That oh yeah, the, fucking yeah that's awesome, dude. Yeah. Uh, that movie uh, had good bad guys too. They were smart uh, to do that. Uh, my number seven is going to be. Um, oh, we're gonna we're gonna get into a little bit of horror here. Candyman. Oh. That oh. was my number eight. You piece of Tony yeah. Todd. Can you talk to me in that soft ASMR voice? I just want to hear how you're gonna Ooh. lick my butthole and kill me after. What? I didn't Whoa. say it out loud. But no, that's um, weird. he's really uh, dude. Candyman. Original idea, original IP. He's a he's a. The, the, the character itself deserves his place in the echelons of, of greatest serial killers, greatest it's supernatural serial killers of all time. Um, what can you say about it, dude? Like, it, like it was it, like I remember watching it and didn't expect much from it when I watched it. And it was so good. The the acting was incredible. The story was very deep. It had a great like um, it had it had it had a it had a it had a plot that you that it wasn't just shined on you know it wasn't just like a really easy you know nightmare on elm street or friday the 13th it wasn't just a throwaway they really cared about that story you can tell and they did such a great job of of using uh, of telling a story through candy man and, and addressing um racial injustice in a way that w- was actually good you know what i mean that it wasn't yeah. like 
telling every white person in the world that you're evil because you were born white. It was like this right. terrible thing happened in this time in history, and these were all fuckheads. And this is like the the justice that is being visited upon humanity because of that. Um, and I again, you know, we talk about that all the time. You know how you can make movies with with social messages in them, and there's nothing wrong with that when you do it smartly and when you do it like when you do it when you do it intricately and, and it makes sense for the plot. George, George Romero, Romero, motherfucker, George Romero was a master. Ah, look at us. Yeah. And and Katie Man, I think in the same way, uh, they weren't heavy handed in what they were doing, and it was very good. The message was there, and it was, and everyone could see it. But it was also disguised under a great movie, and that's all we want. We just want to watch a great movie. If there's a great message in the middle of it, because it's worked around all that, that's fine. Um, and I and I feel like Candyman the remake failed in every regard because they they discredit they they took everything that Candyman the original did, and then they wanted to take you know a fucking shoe and beat you in the fucking head with it. At the end of the day. So, but Candyman with Tony Todd was amazing, dude. Uh, what a great fucking movie. I agree with you. But I'm so not going to go. I'm not. By the way, I'm. you can already put my number six is where I've talked about it in length is under siege. So, like, oh, literally, nice. it's under siege. So, I'm not. We've already went I, in length about it. Dude, what's so funny about this list is when I was making mine, I was, I was thinking to myself, this is the list that there's no way we have very many similar mm -hmm. ones. Like a lot of times we have similar ones. They're just across different things. But so far I'm seeing multiples that we do have similar ones, which is funny. I just thought for sure this time we would have different ones. It's not yeah. turning out that way as much as I thought. But we shall see. Um, my number six is going to be uh, – I'd be shocked if you had this one on yours, but it's going to be unlawful entry. Not a lot of people feel the way I feel. About yeah, this fucking that's movie. usually what it's, that's what R. Kelly's getting in his ass right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I've talked about this on the channel a whole bunch. I just had an article that I did for Bloody Disgusting about this movie specifically, so I won't I won't be long uh, elongated. Oh, about I had an article I wrote for Watch Mojo. Uh, that's same you, you know, that's it's me. funny because they asked me to write it, and I said no. It's time for Jay to write for Watch Mojo. Yeah, it's I'm Watch tired Mojo. Of writing and, well, things. My screen name is uh, J Money One Two Eight Eight. You were a whole review of the One Two Eight Eight. If you guys have not seen this movie, I'm telling you, you've got to fucking watch it. Fans of the movies that we're talking about tonight, like uh, the action movies, the Passenger 57s, the Under Sieges, but also fans of the horror stuff and thrillers and stalker movies and shit like that, like you will fucking love this movie. And fans of Kurt Russell or Ray Liotta will also love it. The story is that Kurt Russell is just this kind of like uh, this, this kind of like uppity, like. Uh, businessman who lives in LA and they have this, this, this dude come in and, and almost kills and, and rapes his wife, but he stops it. But they feel like really, you know, they feel very scared of like the crime and stuff going on for this. So this cop shows up and he tries to help them set up a security system a lot. The cop is Ray Liotta and he's a fucking nutbag who becomes obsessed with Kurt Russell's wife. And then you basically get this movie that's Demolition Man, a totally different version of Demolition Man. But as far as two men against each other go, you've got Ray Liotta the street cop versus this business guy and Kurt Russell, and they fucking go at it. And the whole movie's fucking awesome. You got to watch it. That's Unlawful I mean, entry. Check it out. That sounds familiar. I don't know. I might not like, cause I love anything. Kurt Russell. I might've watched it. I just don't remember it. Yeah, dude. It's so fucking good. Like, yeah, you'll love it. Cause you love Kurt Russell. And Kurt uh -oh. Russell's a fucking badass. In oh, it. dude, like, he's great. I love Kurt Russell. Yeah. yeah. I love Kurt Russell. Even now, like Kurt Russell, don't give a fuck. He'll tell you exactly how it is. When it be, what time it be. And he don't give a yeah. shit if he's on the view or in your mama's house. He'll fucking it's like you. his, it's like his role in breakdown. He starts off as a normal dude, but he has to overcome crazy circumstances. Yeah. And by the end of it, he's a fucking badass. Yeah, 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 it's great. Yeah. The breakdown, uh, I think that was a 95 movie that or 90. That was, that's another good movie. No, it was, it was probably later than that. I think it was later than that in breakdown. But uh, mm -hmm. no, I think it was 95. Uh, that's another movie that nobody talks about. Breakdown was yeah. amazing. That movie kicks and, ass. And JT Walsh was awesome. JT Walsh was always a great bad guy. But anyway, yeah. Yeah. I agree with you. Uh, my number five, people are going to get mad about this because it's really low on the list, I guess, for some people. But it's still going to make the top five is Batman Returns. Um, listen, I think look what you got from Batman, the 89 Batman with Michael Keaton was great. It was amazing. It like it literally set the bar for everything modern Batman movies, like what we get now. It's because of that movie. Tim Burton had an idea, a vision. He wanted to bring it back to the darker element of what Batman started back, what, what he started with in the original comic books and not this goofy Adam West, even though people love that stuff. And that's fine. That's like people that love Roger Moore's James Bond. I don't know what the fuck you smoke, dog, but I get it. Like you like that goofy side of it. But this was the first, this was the attempt that 
no, Batman's not like that. Batman is borderline psychotic. The only thing that's different from him is he won't go that extra step. There, he's got a, a morality code. He won't go as far as like the criminal will and 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 you know kill. But he's close. Like he's right there, and he's got this duality sense where he's almost insane. Like where he has to pretend to be this billionaire and like you know this uh, you know like who gives a shit? Like how do you know it's from Japan? Because I bought it in Japan. Like he has to like be like this guy, and and he's not really that guy. He's like this obsessed vengeful monster of the night and batman returns played off what 89 batman did but they go i think his suit looks i think the 92 suit batman tim burton looks the best i i like that they got rid of the abs and it looks more streamlined it looks more like armored i like that i think the car looks it's the car's pretty much the same except for a couple of gimmicks about it the problem with it is i it's a great movie and i enjoyed it Catwoman's sexy as fuck. Michelle oh, yeah. Pfeiffer. Oh my God. Um, Honey, I'm um, uh, uh, Danny DeVito was a good choice. I just think that the problem is it gets too fucking weird. It, it it's weird, almost sometimes weird on weirds for just weirds purpose. I don't, you know what I mean? Yeah, like and I'm not saying I know people are gonna, I, Yeah, and I know people are gonna get mad about this. Like they're gonna get like, oh dude, you're just no, I'm not like I understand why people have a but there's so it's so depressing. Like there's something that it just there's it's like a depressing ass fucking movie in a way. It makes me yeah. feel fucking weird. I don't like that. I do, uh, I do, dude, I do love that. Even though it's depressing as shit when he rips off his hat. When I hated that when, he ruined his fucking suit. Yeah, but when Christopher Walken's looking at him, he's like, Bruce Wayne, why are you dressed as Batman? Because <laughs> yeah, yeah. he is Batman, idiot. Yeah, it was such a she was such a Valley Girl when she said that too, like a drunk Valley Girl. Because like, he is Batman. I like that part. That was like, wait, I like. Why no, you listen, just Batman? Christopher Walken as Shrek was fucking. Was it Matt Shrek? <laughs> he was so fucking good, dude. And he was like, she opens the mouth. I'll just drop off a Holland story or something. I, I fucking, I love, I loved him, dude. I thought Christopher Walken was such a. I, I would have loved Christopher Walken have been the focus of the main bad guy and just left out. I, I know people are gonna be like, are you fucking crazy? I'm left a, out, left I'm out the penguin boat, and dude. make Max Shrek the main bad guy. Dude, but you and I, me are back to back lethal weapon on that because I agree completely. Yeah, well, and, and also, um, the it, a little Chip was a uh, is is uh, is a Leatherface. A lot of people don't know that. Yeah. The guy that plays Chip it, it was it was Leatherface in, in one of the uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre entries. But yeah, um, there, yeah, dude, there's some. It, it, I, mean, I don't know if it was the lighting or the storytelling or what. I it was just a little bit too weird in certain parts. But overall, very enjoyable movie. The the Super Nintendo game, fucking badass the arcade game one of the best yeah. games of all time with batman and i love there's one scene dude i i would if they made a poster of this this would be my probably all-time favorite uh batman poster that scene it's so cool dude where bruce wayne is sitting there like this and i'll do it sometimes too when someone calls my name like if you're if you're like waiting for your starbucks <laughs> order and he's sitting there like this and then the the the, the like the the bat signal starts like and it hits that thing and he stay, and he like looks up and he, he raises that one eyebrow like the rock and then he stands up and that music swells dude yeah. that is so fucking cool dude yeah yeah that is still yeah. awesome but yeah I, I great i have great memories for that movie you know what it did not make my top 10 man like it did not i like, I, that, I, I had to put it in i, I had to i mean it was either yeah. that or aladdin and i almost put a lot like aladdin made me fucking cry dude it was the only Disney <laughs> movie that made me fucking cry because of the best friend thing at the end of the movie it's my honorable mentions but batman returns amazing suit i feel like it was so dude it was like it was all like it could have been better than the 89 batman if they had just if they hadn't made the like let's make penguin like a weird sewer monster sludgy thing yeah. i don't you know what i mean I, and then he That's... kidnaps kids from the circus i just thought it was kind of dumb and I, I i don't know dude and and max shrek christopher walken dude come on dude like you've already got a great villain yeah, like that, that's what I was going to say. Like the reason it didn't make my top 10. And by the way, it was like at 11. Like I fought, I fought with the bottom of this list trying to get it in. And what I ultimately came to, what kept me from putting it in there is the, the Danny DeVito shit. Like, uh, yeah, like it's too I, much. I, it's not that he's bad. He has his moments. Harry Oswald. You know, like, you know, play you got to admit, I played this stinking city like a harp from hell. Yeah. Like, that's ah. all. They, but, like, <laughs> I feel like they just lost their way so much in that movie. Yeah. And there's so much the villains. Like, I do like him as the penguin. And I do like Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman. She's definitely the best Catwoman ever. But, like, yeah. still yet, like, it got so off track. And I was just like, some of this is just dumb. And, like, some of it's really bad. When they get down to the, 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 
the underdwellings of the city and the way that they showed like the stuff's going on the with the ducks were, and all yeah, that shit. Kid, yeah. Like I got, it, it got really fucking stupid to me. So like those parts are what kept it out, but I still adore and love the movie because it's moody as fuck. And it's like, yeah. it's Keaton. It's fucking, you know, all the things you said. Uh, but yeah, I think, like, I think it was like they were, they were maybe they were trying to go with a psychological horror and it just fell. It just fell kind of flat. And, and like, it, listen, I'm not saying Tim Burton wasn't capable of it, but yeah. it felt like there was a lot like I, I, I swear to God, it, like, I feel like if Tim Burton had no studio interference and I'm not saying there was a lot, but I'm saying there probably was some he probably would have made this a horror movie. Yeah, and, no, you. And, and if he if he could have got away with doing a straight up R rated horror movie, I would have been down for it. If you're mm-hmm. going to go go all the way. Go all the fucking way. I don't give a shit. Like, like, go show the shitty, grotesque side. Because maybe that's what he was trying to do. Like, show the nasty part of Gotham. And they yeah. do that more in, like, uh, Batman Begins and stuff. They actually do start showing more of the corrupt, disgusting parts of town and what people are willing to do to survive. But, yeah, but when they get this, like, dreamlike state, weird, like, I smoked a lot of weed and I tripped on some acid. And this is what I think, like, Batman would, like, you know what I mean? Like, it just gets, yeah. like. I just it could have gone so many better places than they ended up taking it at the end of the movie, but it had all the accoutrement there. Like there were so many yeah, things they, in place that were so fucking badass, specifically Keaton and Alfred and Batman and the Batcave and Max Shrek and some of the Catwoman stuff. Like there was something there that could have been the inarguable best dude. Batman movie of all time. And I just feel like they really dropped the ball with some corny and shit. And they got some great quotable lines in it, by the way. I always say this too. I'll still use this line. Like uh, like April was like, well, I thought we were gonna go out to so and so or to this restaurant. I was like, things change, things change. <laughs> <laughs> I'll still do that shit, dude. And, I, and like, there, there's like that one line where Catwoman was like, please, I wouldn't cut you to scratch. He's like, you lousy minx. <laughs> <laughs> that scene is so fucking awkward too when they do yeah. that. Uh, all right, I'll give my number five, and then I'm gonna go take a tinkle, tinkle, tom, tom. Oh, I never said that before. I'm, I apologize. My number five is gonna be Encino Man. Mid grip. Um, God damn it, dude! I forgot about that one. Oh, you sneaky fuck! I don't uh, remember, dude. Encino Man is like, and this is like what I love about doing this '90s list is that like comedy doesn't exist these days. They just don't make them. But the '90s had some of the greatest fucking comedies movies of all time. Encino Man, dude, it's a classic. It's so rewatchable. Fucking Brendan Fraser, Paulie Shore, fucking. There's so many quotable characters. Yeah, uh, and I hated Sean Astin that movie. By the way, he was such a little fucking prick. Like I could not. Well, he got mad him. that he, that yeah that, that was the, that was like he was but, like fucking his best friend over because he got attention. Yeah, he's like, just go. Uh, but dude, I love that movie so much. Fucking just like <laughs> from Paulie Shore when he's sitting at the table, he's like, "Quit taxing my gig so hardcore, Custer." Like that was Paulie Shore's best <laughs> yeah. movie in my opinion. And, and like, dude, it just it's an encapsulation of the '90s. Like, we're gonna go to the Mega Mountain, so we wanted to wheeze on some juice. And the guys at the gas station, they're arguing about the burrito. No he's wheeze like, on the juice. <laughs> yeah, he's like, "How long do I put this burrito in?" He's like, two minute." He's like, "The other guy's like, minute." He's like, "Guys, I need you to make a choice. Like, minute and a half." <laughs> No, no. <laughs> when he's in the, the slushy is like no wizard on the juice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like, go. Uh, it's like we're going. It's like me and Stoney are going to Mega Mountain. We just wanted to wheeze on some grinders. Also, by the way, Polly Shore was a better friend. He, Stoney was a hundred percent the better oh, friend yeah. to uh, to Encino Man because again, Rudy Sean Astin, I can't remember his name in the movie, was all about using. He was right because Polly Shore was like, you just want to use him, man, and that's he's like, <laughs> you're look. You're like a loser now, and you're a loser, like whatever. And I was like, he's right though. You were just using him to get fucking attention in school. Well, when he's talking to it, when, when he's at the ice rink or whatever, and and, and uh uh Brendan Fraser sees the the like go car go game or like the cruising USA game, he's like, oh, and he runs over there and he puts his quarters in and he's playing. And he's like, and the game ends, he's like, No, it's over, bro. It's over. Like that when you were a kid, like your core <laughs> yeah. is like, it's over, you're done. But uh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I like it's still man is up there. Like, I feel like in the army now is funnier, but I, I, because that's just because it's all Polly Shore. But Insinio Man is like, I know, Sudden Law is great too. But Insinio Man, as far as Polly Shore, too, dude, that's fucking like that was height. That was like height. Shore. I think I genuinely think it's Cena Man might be my favorite Polly Shore movie. <laughs> when he's where they skip school and they go to that bar and he's with he's with those Mexican dudes. He's like, Stone is the crustiest vato. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, it's not stop, dude. It's so good. Yeah. Uh, oh, by the way, the, the the bully of that movie, um, I do I love that line that he says, I don't know who you are. I goes, I don't know you, I don't like you, and as this moment, I'm all over you. <laughs> Try that for a pickup line. Not uh, but that that's <laughs> the new guy, from, he took it. He's from Wayne's world, he's yeah. one of the background camera guys. 
Yeah, dude. I fucking love that movie so fucking much. All right, I'm going to pay pay. If you want to go ahead and give your number five. All right, my number uh, four is going to be uh, a little movie came out. Uh, nobody really remember it a lot, but I'm going to go ahead and say it. Uh, Sidekicks with Chuck Norris. Sidekicks, y'all. Dude. Wow. Sidekicks was a phenomenal movie. Phenomenal. Uh, it was who's the, it was the kid from uh, I can't Sequest is who it was. I gotta look it up real quick because I don't want to. Chuck Norris was in it. Uh, came out. Uh, let's see. Um, Jonathan Brandis and Bo Bridges. Bo Bridges was the father in it. It was a great like. Okay, so if you guys don't know what this movie is about, because uh, it's it's so surprising to me that how many people have never seen this movie. Um, Jonathan Brandis plays a nerdy kid, um, sickly ch kid in high school. Uh, he's got asthma and, um, uh, all he does is watch like old Kung Fu tapes and his favorite, uh, martial artist is Chuck Norris. And he just, he, he daydreams all the time. He daydreams about being in these movies or scenarios with Chuck Norris. He's a partner of Chuck Norris and they go on these adventures together and then boom, you know, he, back to reality and he's being bullied and stuff. Um, he's got a crush on, on the girl in, in high school. I think she's the girl from the wonder years, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. And, um, eventually the movie unfolds and, and, and he winds up getting into karate and meeting an awesome, uh, martial arts instructor and, uh, taking on the bullies. It's very much a karate kid type of movie. Um, just with a, with a nineties flavor attached to it really good uh it, like and to be fair it made me cry like when i was a kid i remember crying at this movie um there's one movie there's one scene in the movie uh where he's trying to overcome his asthma and he's um been doing these martial arts exercises and he gets rejected uh, by the girl that he likes he asks her out and it was so oh my god my butthole cringed when he asked her out because i mean we've all been there and and the rejection fuck i wanted to <laughs> i wanted to fast forward that moment uh but then he's like he's running home and and he's like sad and because she because he's because when he asked her out she's like i like you but you know I, they they're so mean to you and he's like you, you pity me and like i remember i remember that like he was like, he was genuinely trying to ask her out. And then he gets this, not only it's rejection, but it's like a pity rejection. Like, I feel bad for you because you're skinny and you're weakly. You have asthma and everyone picks on you. So he runs home and he like breaks his asthma, uh, his, his uh, inhaler. And he's like, I won't be you. Oh, dude, it's so fucking sad. But it's so good because he overcomes that. It's a really good feel good movie. Like, again, it's one of those movies that was um, like under the radar. I, I I don't even know, like, when I looked up the top 92 movies, box office, I think, it was, like, in the 60s, like, that year. Like, it was, like, I don't know how this movie got released in the theater. It must have been in the, in the theater for, like, an afternoon and then got removed and put straight to VHS. But it was so good. Chuck Norris was, was really good in it. The, the, the bad guy was really good in it. Um, the bully was good. And, again it's it's de like and i understand why it probably didn't resonate with a lot of people because it was it was pretty much the karate kid pretty much the karate kid with a slight variation on it um but it, i just think it was so for me anyway it was in, it, like it was so connected to me because i i was in the, i grew up in the 90s so i i could just relate to it a lot better and uh chuck norris was I, I gained, I, I think that's the movie that really, re I, I already knew who Chuck Norris was. I'd seen a couple of Chuck Norris movies up to that point. But when I watched that movie and the way that Chuck Norris was in that movie, I like, I got even more interested in Chuck Norris and go, went back and watched his movies. But yeah, it was so good. Such a shame about Jonathan Brandis too. I feel like that kid could have done, like, I think he had a really, really bright future ahead of him uh, in acting, but yeah, dude, sidekicks. And it took me forever to find, like, I think I finally got sidekicks. But dude, back in like because Sidekicks on DVD was so rare, like it was like four hundred fucking dollars on Amazon. Like people were price gouging the shit out of it. Like I don't even like. I, I can you buy it? Let me see. Uh, Sidekicks DVD. Uh, yeah, like oh my god. Well, okay, it's not bad. It's like eleven dollars and eighteen cents on Amazon. Someone's selling it privately, but it's VHS. But they did okay. So no, here we go. So you could get 
crazy. You can get the Blu-ray. I didn't even know they released a Blu-ray for thirty-seven dollars eighty-seven cents, and that's sixteen percent off on fucking uh, Amazon. The DVD is ninety-six fucking dollars. Holy shit! But it's on Prime Video, and which I, I did, I did buy it on Prime Video. Um, it's fourteen ninety nine, or you can rent it for three ninety nine. But if you guys haven't seen uh, Psychics, definitely check it out. I think I've gone on way too long on uh, Psychics, but that was my number four. I like it a lot. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> uh, and the, and the one uh, the 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 gym teacher. I think he was the bald dude from Night Court, if I'm not mistaken. I think he was. Uh, he's the bald dude from Night Court. He's like, Gabruski, I swear to God, if you drop that on me, I'm gonna shoot myself and come on after you. <laughs> uh, yeah. Good stuff. Good lines, man. Uh, good lines. Um, my number three, I don't know where, I, maybe Mike's is on, I, I would assume it's in the top five, but my number three is going to be Wayne's World. No, no, no. That's fine. I'll just stay here and lick the cat's butt situation. Uh, why are you not going to have Wayne's World as your number three? Are you effing with me right now? Don't play a game. Have you ever stabbed a man and watched the steam rise from his heart in the middle of the winter? No, then you don't know what I'm talking about, okay? I don't just serve donuts here. I'm serving life advice. Wayne's World, uh, my number four was Sidekicks, and my number three uh, nice. was Wayne's World. Um, yeah, we, like Wayne's World is what every – well, that's the that's the friendship you want, right? Uh, and, and like, you know, and that's what me and Mike, I think, have in a lot of ways is pretty much just dudes that have been – that have known each other for a long time. They hang out. They understand their, their uh, little – uh, idiosyncrasies because we, we you, you've been around enough and you're just stupid you're fucking dumb and you and, and you get lucky a lot of the times but that's what wayne's world was and and I, like um <clears throat> i never watched the snl skits i know but when i watched that movie i was like dude this is fucking gold this is hilarious like everything about wayne's world is wayne is wayne's world too better I don't know. We both know there's no tape in this. <laughs> I think they're equal, man. I, I think they're like Ghostbusters and Ghostbusters 2 is Wayne's World and Wayne's World 2 for me. They're the same. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I like Wayne World's, Wayne's World 2 just because when he introduces, when, when Cass, it goes, and your name was Cassandra. <laughs> when he introduces, uh, when Cassandra introduces him uh, to her father, is it this why I take up your nuts? <laughs> and he's like, what the hell, yeah? And they do the thing. <laughs> it's like ancient Chinese secret, huh? How gone? <laughs> but yeah, dude, uh, Delaware. Like, Wayne, we're Wayne's in World. Delaware. <laughs> yeah, well, Wayne's World, Wayne's World is definitely one of the most quotable movies of all time. Fuck yeah. Like, and you could, Dana Carvey was great. Mike Myers was great. They played off each other brilliantly. I mean, they were great characters. Rob Lowe was an amazing bad guy. Uh, the arcade thing, I can't, what, it wasn't Eddie Arcadian. I can't remember. Um, what the fuck was oh, his name? Um, it was Bill Murray's brother that played that it, part. Was that Bill? Was, <laughs> that's yeah, what that is. Like, uh, this man blows goats. I have proof. Yeah. He was like, <laughs> uh, he goes, a sphincter? Uh, a sphincter says what? What? <laughs> uh, <and> he's like, <laughs> and that, yeah, then Rob's like, you're fired. He's like, okay, that's fine. I'm taking my show with me. He's like, we own the show. He's like, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah dude fucking wait dude i can watch wayne's world any day of the week and just like just be as like to be fair, let's just say i, 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 I don't know why of name tags and hairnets i will go to wayne's world too more than wayne's world i don't know why i i will i, I will go to wayne's world too and then i'll go back to wayne's world but there's something about wayne's world too i just like more but wayne's world <laughs> Dude, yeah, yeah robin mean, noah's arcade it's fun it's hip it's noah's arcade <laughs> yeah it just says what what <laughs> Dude, I fucking was oh, that the movie? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then uh, it's got the it's got the famous scene uh, with um, with, uh, with Garth when he's like, you know, just like just people like do things for money, and I just think that's really sad. And he's wearing like Reebok and shit, <laughs> and yes, he's like, it is the choice of a new generation. And yeah, I love Rob Lowe. He's like, what? And then, they remember <laughs> when they go to his apartment, and he's like, he goes, uh, and he's like, Garth is going through all of his books. He goes, this man's good. <laughs> and, he's like, <laughs> and then he's like tong tong and he's like he's like ordering because oh you speak Cantonese he's like yes I do uh do, are you from the north or the south because it sounds like you're from the south and he was like oh <laughs> like Mike Myers like <laughs> he goes I'll have the cream of some young guy <laughs> and then he goes <laughs> <laughs> Never, because he looks at Garth, and Garth's like, <laughs> oh, and the haircut thing when he's like, he's like, it's sucking my will to live. 
<laughs> funny. That movie's nonstop quotable. Like, there's some great ones in the there's great ones in the chat too. They said, uh, uh, "Oh shit, I just saw a fucking great one." You're right. <laughs> Christopher Walker was a great one. Oh yeah, yeah, it was good. Yeah, it's like no yeah. stairway denied. <laughs> yeah, too late. If you're gonna spew, spew into this. <laughs> He's like, uh, he's like, yeah, he's like, he goes to the guitar shop. He's like, may I see the, the guitar? He's like, again, it's like, yes. <laughs> and he's like, would you like to play it? Yes. And then he plays it. He's like, okay, can I put it back now? He's like, not today, my good man. Cha-ching, cha-ching. <laughs> did that, did, did Wayne's World originate the cha-ching? I or think was probably. that, was that, or was that commercial? Maybe was it Sonic or something? Or not Sonic, but uh, rallies or the, the, the commercial where it's a cha-ching. I don't that... know. I that's the first time I heard it was with Wayne's World, though. Yeah, I don't uh, know. It's fucking amazing, dude. Amazing choice. My number four is gonna be. <laughs> I bet this one is not on your list. But it's gonna be the Bodyguard. It's so high. It makes me feel stupid for having it so high. I... No, I know that's the first one. <laughs> Dude, I fucking love the bodyguard. Kevin Costner, Whitney Houston. By the way, I think she's the greatest female singer of all time. But that's side for the point. But yeah, dude, this movie is so fucking good. Not only do they have a, a, an amazing bad guy with a first stalker who would cut out those magazine letters and sit there with his like weird white hair and just fucking do his weird shit. But Kevin Costner was so fucking badass in this movie, dude. When they have the fight scene between him and the gas man from uh, Dumb and Dumber, yeah. and he comes in and Kevin Costner sitting there cutting that peach and just eating at the table. And he comes in and he tries to take a shot at him and kevin uh kevin costner beats the fuck out of him while he's eating his peach and like <laughs> he beats the fuck out of him but the guy grabs a knife and kevin costner throws the knife and like hits right next to him and he's just like no i don't want to have this conversation again <laughs> he just Dude, turns around and the guy's like, mm -hmm, I i'm gonna make you. i'm gonna make a revelation before i go drain my lizard i've never seen the bodyguard what i swear to oh, god oh dude it's so no, fucking and I, amazing and I, and I, and I, i'm about to tell you why the reason why i never saw it because it was a it was it was Kevin Costner who I thought was like that is not that is not Sylvester Stallone that is not John Claude Van Damme that is not Arnold Schwarzenegger I do so not good. know who you is and on the front cover he's carrying a woman <laughs> you don't and, like women and it was called the Bodyguard and like <laughs> what kind of gay ass shit is this <laughs> I ain't watching like I got it yeah I, 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 exactly what you're talking about no and I'm not even like, kidding I'm talking about when I was a kid you know what I'm saying. Like not not about like gay is bad, but you know what I mean. Like you know when you're still yeah yeah the bodyguard yeah I looked at that I'm like what is this a fucking music video for MTV raps I don't like that shit <laughs> <laughs> I no I know but literally I thought it was like a chick flick I'm like I'm not watching that shit I didn't know it was an action movie I literally thought it was like a hardcore drama fucking movie no dude like, it's, just, I mean it's it's got a lot of action shit well, in I never it, said I, so if we do a Patreon commentary for it I've never seen it. Yeah, dude, I'm down. I, like I'm we should put my it's balls out awesome. on the table and look at the hair on it because I've never seen it. <laughs> we should, by the way. Trust by the way. me, if you want, I don't give a shit. I think Kevin Costner's great, but to me, he's always been that like smooth buttered body action hero. You know what I mean? Like he's the guy that like wears some axe body spray and then he thinks he belongs in the conversation with Sylvester Stallone. That's I mean, that's basically him in this movie. Like he's quiet. He's reserved. He doesn't have to like show his machismo or his badass. But when someone fucks with him, he just like quietly, like while eating a peach will beat the fuck if it's out bad. Of him. I, it's I, awesome. I'll no, listen. I'll watch it. I have no problem yeah, watching dude. it. You'll I love just, it. I don't want it. I thought it. I swear to God. I swear to Christ, dude. I thought it was one of those like like. Like there was some action in it, but it was more so like geared toward like romance stuff. I'd say it's it's more of a it's a stalker action flick that has a romance in it. Like him and Whitney Houston do get it on. You I know mean, what I'm talking about? I don't blame but, it. But um, I mean, yeah, yeah anything's better than Bobby Brown. But I mean, listen, there's. There, dude, there's a scene in this movie where like she comes over his house and like he's like this uptight dude and she's like this you know like huge pop star or whatever so they're always making fun of him for being so uptight uh. but she comes over his house and he's got like pictures with the president and shit because he's you know fucking kevin costner and he takes her scarf off and he brings that a, he breaks that a samurai sword he's like can i can i she's like yeah he takes the samurai or he takes the scarf and he throws it up in the air and he just holds the samurai sword and the scarf falls on it and it's so sharp oh. that the scarf cuts in half and he's like the blade is so sharp. Like, it's fucking dude. It's the coolest shit ever. Like it's that so like that's a, that sounds like a playbook from Austin Powers. Like what he would do in front of his bed. <laughs> He's basically Austin like, Powers. Like, but like his bed would fold out of the wall, and all the oils would come out, and he would take out a samurai sword <laughs> and cut her panties off with it. It's so like, fucking oh, good, dude. So, so. Yeah. Well, if it's good, I'll watch it. But I've never seen it. I'm just gonna like let it out and, and let you guys know. I've never seen yeah. it. Yeah. So. Enjoy your PP. I'll I'll keep going through the list, and we can catch you back up. 
Uh, no, and then the, and the, like that movie, if you guys have never seen it, I'm telling you, it's so great because like this stalker's trying to get to her and he's brought in to help protect her, but he's like, everything's loosey goosey around and no one's doing the right. Her bodyguards suck. So there's all this intrigue and all this other stuff going on, but then they go to like the Oscars and like, she's nominated for the Oscar and he has to like protect her there. And like, there's a gun and a camera. It's fucking cool, man. It's fucking, it's one of the coolest movies ever. And yeah, the end of the movie that everybody talks about is when like he meets her at the airport and I will always love you plays and they're spinning around and the camera's spinning it's ah yeah we'll always love you it's fucking dude it's cinema the bodyguard is fucking pure cinema you gotta watch it please do me a favor watch it report back how you guys feel about it it fucking kicks ass i love it it felt weird for me to put this high on the list but i was like in my heart of hearts i will watch that movie any day of the fucking week man uh my number three is gonna be oh shit um Bum, 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 bum. universal soldier uh i like i said like i have left classic fucking films like all time top 20 of all time films off this list but it's just it's my list there are many like it but this one is mine and as far as rewatchable movies that i fucking love and adore universal soldier is fucking amazing dude and like we, i think we all like disregarded it and thought like oh it's some cheesy like stupid fucking movie but when you rewatch it today, you're like, that's a fucking movie movie. Like, that's just not that's not just some fly by night action movie. This movie has it fucking all. And I think it's Roland Emmerich who, who directed it, if I'm not mistaken. But not only do you have Dolph Lundgren, but you have fucking uh, or not only do you have Sean Claude Damme, but you have Dol Dolph Lundgren. And the coolest part about this movie is that Dolph Lundgren's bigger. He's a more formidable foe. And Jean-Claude Van Damme is the badass Jean-Claude Van Damme, but he's smaller. It's a David Goliath type situation. And the whole idea is that when they die the army has this program that they're basically taking dead soldiers and turning them into these robots that they can control. But, but Jean-Claude Van Damme, his RoboCop like story, his, his senses come back to him and he, he tries to escape it. And they send his old captain who went fucking crazy in Vietnam and was cutting ears off people and wear them. And as an ear necklace, it's very horrific, by the way, it's just some horror elements to it. Who's uh, the, they start the movie with a fight in Vietnam and they both fucking die. But just it has everything you want in an action movie, man. And it's got a cool sci fi story that surrounds it. And you've got a fish out of water story that where you have Jean Claude Van Damme as just like this, this robot, but with these human feelings. <laughs> and the best part of the movie is when he goes to this fucking cafe in the middle of nowhere and he doesn't even know what food is, but he sits down and he's just eating food and they keep bringing it to him. And he's got this whole plate of food and he's just sitting there shoveling food into his mouth. And they're like, hey, you got enough to pay for that? He's like, what do you mean? And they're like, <laughs> they, they start trouble with him. He's like, I just want to eat. That's my favorite part of the fucking movie. But it all ends the way any classic action movie should end. It ends with them. Dolph Lundgren has taken his parents hostage. And the, the smaller dude has to defeat the bigger dude. And they, they throw down in fisticuffs and they fight in front of his parents and this girl. And like he has to stop him. It's fucking amazing. Universal Soldier has it all, man. It's got the sci-fi shit. It's got the action shit. It's got oh. the great Sean Claude Van Damme. It's got an amazing oh. bad guy, Dolph Lundgren. I fucking love Universal Soldier so much. Some sexy stuff right there. By the what way, I, 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 I took my hat off. I knew I looked like the guy from the Green Mile. I was like, I didn't know the sponge was supposed to be wet. <laughs> I think it looks good, man. I didn't know the sponge was supposed to be wet. You little son of a bitch. <laughs> um, yeah, Universal Soldier is good as fuck, dude. Like, I forgot. Like, that's another one I forgot about. Um, I like it. Really it's great shit. I'm caught up with you now. All right. Well, my number two is going to be a little movie called uh, called uh, A Few Good Men. Yeah. A Few Good Goddamn Men is all I need in the bedroom. What? I meant Come on up. the front line, son of a bitch. Just did a you order the code picks. red? Did you order the code red? You're goddamn <laughs> right I did. <laughs> it's like, Jesus Christ, guy blow. All he said was he ordered a Mountain Dew. Dude. Did that movie win an Academy Award? I think it did. It had to. I, I think so. that Jack Nicholson won an Academy Award for that. Let me look. And see. Like it had uh, to. Like, dude, it was. And it, like that is. Like, it, there was. There was some action in it for sure. There was. It was an action movie, but it was more of a political thriller. And it was one of the first movies I remember watching. And it, and it like it kept me. It was so well acted. Denny Moore so fucking hot in that movie. But it kept me. It, it kept my attention the entire time. And I was like young when I watched it, but it was still so fucking good. Dude, check this out, by the way. Just it, it, it kind of ties into the whole list. I just looked up 1993's Academy Awards, which was for 92. Mm -hmm. uh, Marissa Tomei won Best Supporting Actress for My Cousin Vinny. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, Clint Eastwood won uh, Best Picture 
for Unforgiven. Oh, um, and uh, oh, fuck, hang on, because there was another one in here too. Um, but did Nicholson uh, win? Uh, Gene Hackman won for Unforgiven. Uh, J- Jack Nicholson was up for a few good men, but he was beaten by Gene Hackman. Oh, yeah, uh, um, little Bill, little Bill, yeah, that's good. <laughs> I understand. Uh, well, I, I feel I thought I thought like listen, the, the Tom Cruise performance in that movie, like again. Everyone were like Kevin Bacon was in that movie. Demi Moore was in that movie. Like, dude, it was it was a fucking like all star cast. Um, <clears throat> but everyone remembers that courtroom scene, and that that scene was so good. That intense scene between it was like Tom Cruise was trying to recruit Jack Nicholson for Scientology. It was so intense. Like, I I assume yeah. that's what it's like if you meet Tom Cruise at a party and he's trying to recruit you. It's just like in your face. <laughs> Do you not believe there's aliens inside you? Tell me now. You could be better. Like, I just feel like it's like one of those. But dude, it was so goddamn good, and I and, and it kept you entertained the entire time. Uh, there were even the down moments in that movie were good. Um, yeah, and I never like back back then. I would never have watched a movie like that, but it was so good. Like again, it was just so well scripted, and it, the story was so engaging, and it was so well acted that you, but because you really started to believe, you like, is are they making this bullshit up? I don't know. And then Jack Nicholson gets up the Colonel and, and he's like, you know, you need people like me on that wall. And like, you know, like, dude, God damn, it was so good. It was so fucking powerful. And then he's like, am I excused now? And he, he goes, hey, Colonel, you're under arrest. Like, oh my God, dude, it was so good. And he's like, shit. no, no, no. Tom Cruise like, you're under arrest. You son of a bitch. And I'm like, <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. I what I always remember from that movie too is like Tom Cruise a- as like the lawyer or whatever, like and sitting there and they're all eating their Chinese food out of yeah. their containers. I was like, that's what I want to be when I grow up. I want to be Tom Cruise hanging out and like eating fucking Chinese food and playing at, at like army softball games and shit. <laughs> like he was Dude, so cool in that movie. He really was. It was amazing. Yeah. I mean, what I mean, I don't like if you've not seen a few good men just because maybe it turns you off because it looks like something that would be boring. It's not. It's it's the opposite no. of boring. It's so good. It's so well done. Do yourself a favor and watch it. It's my number two. And yeah. um, that's it. I don't need to talk about it anymore. I, I don't know how that movie didn't get like, you no, know, I can't understand. There was a lot of competition in 92. But yeah. I think Nicholson. It was up for best picture. Well, not, not even the picture. Just Nicholson's performance was so yeah. fucking good. And he wasn't even like he was in it a decent amount. But it all it all culminated in that one scene. Like, I personally think that. um That. um Robert De Niro should have got uh, best supporting actor in um, Men of Honor, especially at the end of that movie. Yeah, Cuba I was Gooding never a huge Jr. fan of Men of Honor. I've never got. I love. Yeah. Well, it, I love. I love that movie, and that was that's way down the pipeline, and we'll get to that. But like, I feel like uh, Nicholson's performance in this movie was like I feel like it was on the same level. You know, like like secondary characters or supporting characters come in, yeah, and they do such a fucking phenomenal. Like, I guess Heath Ledger would be the would be the um the the closest example for some people that never seen this movie like yeah like he's not the star but without him the movie doesn't work no 100 percent, dude and he's fucking awesome and when they finally get to like and everybody like that was the that everybody quoted that in the 90s like you know like you you i want the truth you can't handle the truth yeah like, it was so well, fucking and then, intense and then yeah, even the, even the camera work dude that when yeah. like when they go to kevin bacon who's like trying to defend nicholson and he just like like blows his PMS load all over the stand and doesn't give a fuck. And <laughs> he's like, Oh my God, fuck. It's like, it's kind of like us. Like when we're trying <laughs> to get this video monetized and it's like, it's like, you know, like we just blow our tops. Yeah. This I, fucking I, sucks. <laughs> it, dude, it did. It did not make my top 10. It's in my honorable mentions. But again, like that, that is maybe the, the biggest example that and a couple other ones of movies that if I was actually sitting down and rating the best movies overall of 1992, it absolutely would have been in my list. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I had a fucking hard time leaving that one off. Uh, it's a great fucking choice. My number two is going to be, we already talked about it, so I'll just scoot right through it, but it's White Man Can't Jump. Um, oh, oh, fucking, I, I like it. You go high with the basketball hoop. I like <laughs> it. Dude, dude, it's, just, it's for me, and, and for me, comedy movies are, are at such a high premium now like especially when you go back to the 90s like maybe 20 years ago it wouldn't have been this high on my list but there's so few 
and far between they're so rare now that you get a movie like white man can't jump or just a funny movie that just like has a heart and soul to it uh they don't make them like this anymore and they literally don't exist so i think it jumps up in my in my way but yeah woody harrelson and their friendship the buddy cop isms between even though they weren't buddy cops with the way they hated each other the way they fucked each other over we are talking about that scene where they go and he tries to dunk and he loses all of his winnings mm. breaks me every time i fucking see it it's so cool when he goes and he infiltrates the dudes playing the basketball i still love the scene where, where the dude uh they lose the game and he's like all right all right you'll fucking see and the dude goes then he gets a fucking gun and he comes back oh, and they're yeah. like, oh shit. And they all have to run and jump over the fences. And then uh again, Rosie Perez in that fucking movie is so good. The Stoogie brothers, the Stoogie yeah. brothers were always hot on their tail. And then at the end of the movie, it's so it's so crazy. Like, I think in the kid's mind, you always think your life is gonna come down to something like this. But when he goes and the dude that could help him get him on the set of White Man Can't Jump or of, of Jeopardy to get his mm. girl back, he's like, All right, you hit this shot left-handed with a hook shot from like half court. And I'll do it. And he fucking makes it. And like, like as a kid, it was like, oh shit, this is fucking amazing. And you know, the whole food that's thought with the letter Q. I fucking adore that movie, man. Yeah, it's well, got it all. It's got. It's know, not just it, comedy. It has it all. It, no, it does. And I, and I like that you point out the heart to it because it really is a. It's a. It's a. It's a touching movie in a lot of ways because they they both find each other. They they both find in each other friendship. And mm -hmm. it didn't matter about color. You know what I mean? Like, it, like, and I know, like, I don't want to, you know, circle around this all the time. And every time we talk about movies, but this was in 92. You know what I mean? This was in no internet shit. There wasn't the vile shit that we have nowadays where everybody's like trying to attack each other for any fucking thing. And you're racist this, you're racist that. It wasn't like that. They were just like, they were like, they understood each other. They were both hustlers. They didn't matter about their skin color. They, they, they found like, they found like common ground because they were like, they're, they're like, Hey, we're the same yeah the skin the skin color don't matter you know what i mean like and back then like it wasn't like yeah of course racism exists i mean you'd be dumb to say it doesn't but like it's not as fucking profound and like everywhere like people try to make it out like on you know fucking fear-mongering channels i fucking hate that shit dude yeah like no, i mean I, you know I, I i because the wholesomeness is there because wesley snipe started out as a rival for him and wesley snipe is like one of his best friends at the end of the movie like he's there picking him up after rosie perez leaves him yeah, no, there's they're so much like they, it's a it's a friendship movie at the end of the day. Yeah. Like it's got awesome basketball shit. And by the way, the basketball scenes were shot awesome in that movie, especially the two on two like street basketball and the way they yeah. did that King oh, and man. the Duck shit was so good. Uh, and the shit talking that they did. But yeah, let's and, do and, and, yeah. And by the way, I will say, was there like racially stuff like racially charged jokes that yeah but they if i took a fucking joke it was a Back. joke you're playing some pickup game you're gonna talk some shit to each other nobody dropped like some like hardcore like obviously if you drop some hardcore nasty ass fucking words you're gonna right. get you deserve to get your ass beat but it was like just playing around for the fuck you know i mean the mean? name of the movie's fucking white man can't jump yeah and like, I, who gives <laughs> a fuck yeah and is, is it true yeah Unless you're Sean Bradley and you're fucking 100 feet tall, you could just stand there and dunk. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah, even Larry 100%. Bird didn't dunk because he couldn't. Like I'm not, I'm not saying Larry Bird was a great three point shooter, but I don't think I I don't know if he could dunk. Could he dunk? I, I don't know. I want to do something fun for our number one. By the way, don't say anything yet. I want to do something fun. I want to do a countdown three, two, one, and then you say what you think mine is, and then I'm gonna say what I think yours okay, is. Okay, hold on. All right, hold on. Yeah, you're right. I can't believe they fucking remade White Man Can't Jump too. It actually pisses me off when I Google White Man Can't Jump and that fucking Jack Harlow movie pops up. It actually fucking incenses me in my soul. Like, don't remake it unless you're gonna fucking do oh, it. Oh yeah, right, I forgot. You know? Didn't they remake that? Yeah, they. they yeah, yeah, so I, stupid. I it was dude. Fucking terrible. Yeah, release it straight to fucking Hulu. Like they didn't even put any effort into it. Um. All right. But all right. So, are you ready? Uh, okay. Yeah. So you, I'm gonna guess yours, and then you guess mine. At the same. Just go with the, say it at the same time. I'll okay. go three, two, one. We'll both say it at the same time. Okay. Ready? Three, two, one, unforgiven. unforgiven. <laughs> you think that you think that that's mine? I uh, uh, yeah. Uh, it's not. It's you not. Fucking, it's not. Know. Is unforgiven yours? Yeah. I fucking knew it. You motherfucker! Well, I got you. All right, well, that's fine. I don't care. <laughs> I'm give, the better friend. I'll give you a Coca Cola. Uh, <laughs> I, listen. Uh, yeah, dude. Unforgiven is my number one movie. Um. It was my favorite Western movie until I saw Tombstone. Until I saw Tombstone, I think Unforgiven was the best Western I'd ever seen in my life. And you know what? I'm glad that Mike read in 93, they won best, uh, you know, the best picture, best supporting because they, they, they definitely, they deserved it. Uh, Gene Hackman was fucking awesome as, as, as a uh, little bill. What an asshole, like, uh, like unlikable bad guy. And that's what you want. Little bill was such a prick and he was so full of himself, an egotistical bitch. 
And then yeah. you got Morgan Freeman and Clint Eastwood going to ride one more time to say some hoes. One that, more time. That got, that got you know, cut up. And they got to ride with this kid who's trying to be a badass with them. And he's really not. Dude, that movie is so fucking well written and so well done. And if Clint Eastwood had never done another movie after that, that would been fine. Because that yeah. movie is goddamn gold standard. Dude, I love – there. there's so many little – tiny things about this movie that make it good the fact that william money uh i think that's who it is Will, yeah william money uh who is the, the famous outlaw who is clint eastwood's character he's put away that life after he got married and he settled down he has kids now but he's kept that you know, in private when he goes out and he and, and he's with morgan freeman and they're trying to you know get some revenge for these ladies that hired him um and then ned gets caught morgan freeman's character and little bill beats the shit out of him and kills him and then the, the whore comes up from the town and she's got their money. And she's like, and, and, and William Money had said, uh, Clint Eastwood had said, I, I don't drink anymore. I don't do it because when I drink, I get I get something awful. And then when he's like, she's telling him about Ned dying. There's little subtle moments in this particular scene. It's so well done. He hadn't, he hadn't, drunk, he hadn't drank one drop of alcohol because he had promised his wife that he had given up that life. And when he got drunk, he did terrible things. There's a scene where he, he like takes the bottle, the wild turkey bottle from the kid, and he starts drinking it. And he's like, well, what else did Wild Bill do to him? And or, or little Bill. And she's like, he said your name was little was uh was a uh, William Money out of Kansas, and that you killed up women and, and kids and all. And he goes, But that didn't scare a little Bill, did it? No, sir. And like, <laughs> like all this fucking crazy shit that he did, and then the, the kid that thought he was like a loser old farmer is like looking at him, like, you're that William Money. And then, like, the kid is also dealing with, like, psychological trauma because he killed that one guy on the shitter. And he's like, but he had it coming. I got him good, didn't I, Will? And he's like, we all got it coming. We all got it coming. Yeah. yeah. Oh my, and, and then and when he confronts Little Bill and he kills that motherfucker in the bar and he's like, and then Little Bill's like, I don't deserve it because deserve it got nothing to do with it. And he shoots the fucker in the face. And then, he, and then he's riding out in the storm. And the storm's like fucking everything. And those whores come out in the rain. And he's like standing there. And he's like, you better do dead right. Bury him. Or I'll come back and kill every one of you sons of bitches. <laughs> I fucking love that goddamn movie, dude. That movie was, was again, it's my favorite, favorite Western until Tombstone came along. But holy shit, dude. Yeah. It, it, deserved, did, it, it deserved best picture. It deserved best it, picture. It, it, it did. And it, and it won it. And it had every right to do so. I think it's, it's one of the most it's got to be top five western of all time at least top five 100%. western of all time uh it, it, it fucking that that's the one i probably struggled with the absolute most to to not have on my list at all which i know is shocking but again i want to remind you guys like just as just as in jay's list is his favorites and it just happens to be on there as well for me it, uh, it's again it's not like the best movies if the, if the best movies of 1992 was this list it would absolutely be in my top five so would actually so would a few good men but like i love that fucking movie it's amazing i saw it as a kid and it blew me away what's the craziest thing about unforgiven is that the lead character is actually kind of a piece of shit like you know what i mean when he's yeah, like well, he's a reform, he's a reformed piece of shit Right, but like they go for it. They like they don't try to like. Oh yeah, but he only killed bad guys. You know, he's no, like at the, he's a they, nasty at motherfucker. The, yeah, at the end when it's versus him and Gene Hackman, he's like, I've killed women, I've killed children. You know, like why would mm -hmm. you be any different? Like that's crazy. The balls it took. The reason it didn't make my well, top also, ten. I, that line that he says uh, when he shoots that one guy, he's like, "Well, you're a cowardly scum." Gene Hackman says, and he's like, "Because he wasn't even armed." He goes, "Well, he should have armed himself then." Yeah. Like, dude, tell me, tell me with a straight fucking face that Clint Eastwood back in the day, back in the outlaw Josie Wells days in the 70s, early 80s, he is not the quintessential Wolverine. Dude, I quintessential when I, Wolverine. When I watch that movie, I actually think, and on the flip side, and they never, ever, 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 ever should do this. But if they were ever going to remake Unforgiven, I, I know. Yep. Yep. I know. I agree. Hugh fucking Jack. I agree. Dude. I agree. Come on. The, the, the similarities between Hugh Jack. I feel like that, like it, it like there, there's something about those two, the, those two actors that they just feel like they complement each other, like in a way that would work. Because yeah. I, if you look at the outlaw Josie Wells, when, uh, when Clint Eastwood had the big bushy sideburns and he was young and he had all my, 
does that not look like Hugh Jackman in a lot yeah, of ways? Like he looks and, like Hugh Jackman in Unforgiven too. Like you just see but, it. But the, the lines, dude, when it, just the lines when he's like, "Well, he should have armed himself then." Like William yeah. Money didn't give a fuck about a fair fight. Like he's like, "I'm an outlaw, bitch. I'm a real outlaw. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not little Bill who's like telling this little town about how badass he is and everyone's just believing your story. I've done the bad shit. I've robbed trains. I killed women and children. I did the nastiest shit you could fucking think of to get money, and I don't care." now because i'm drunk but i changed my life but now you brought me back in this because how you treated my friend like it's so wolverine ish i can't i, can't, I, I don't <laughs> I, know I, I love that the woman that got fucked up in that movie that was like the catalyst for it all is the same chick from the crow too it's like morphine yeah. is bad for you <laughs> like yeah the, well, she fits yeah. that role so perfectly well and, and even the small stuff like morgan freeman was so good morgan freeman was obviously his conscious like he was the like you know i'm not not trying to say in any way but maybe it was like the like what his wife was to him, you know, like keeping yeah. him away from going back to that pure evil drunk. Cause he's like, when I was drunk, I was wild and I was stupid and I did a lot of bad things and I didn't care because yeah. he didn't have a family. He was just a guy. He didn't give a shit. And, right. and, then, and I love, but I love the little stuff like the, the kid that like recruited him. The fact that he was trying so badassly to be like their partner and be awesome with them. But even when he found out what will was, he's like, I ain't like you will. Yeah, which is like, ironic because it's one of those movies that's actually an antithesis to violence. Yeah, like, it was, even though it's yeah, all about violence. You no, know, like, yeah, because he's like, I ain't like you, Will, and he's like, that's good. Yeah, like I, it, like why would you want to be like he's a killer? But dude, he's like, I, I ain't gonna kill you. You're the only friend I got. And I was like, fuck. Oh, yeah. He's like, well, I, yeah. I, I trust you, Will. He's like, don't go trusting me too much. But dude, yeah, don't dude, go chasing water. Unforgiven is so fucking good, dude. Oh my god, amazing. Yeah, it is. I mean, I can watch it, that movie. I, I, what's better? No, I mean, the, the, there's no Gene Hackman's amazing, Morgan Freeman's amazing, Clint Eastwood's amazing. Like, it's like three of the like the 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 the, the goddamn Mount Olympus of actors in a movie yeah. together. In no, a you're, yeah, and you're 100 right. If I was, and, and and again, like if you're talking about the best movies of all time, the best westerns of all time, the best movies in 1992, it absolutely belongs on that list i find it a, i find it a hard movie to rewatch. like oh. i don't actually get joy out of watching it like i will watch it it's and i will power through it because it's so fucking good but like it's just it's a hard movie for me to watch which is the only reason it didn't actually make my top 10 but my number one is going to be i don't even have to talk about it because we already talked about it it's fucking wayne's world and i know that seems insane oh. uh especially especially when we get into um the the honorable mentions because <laughs> again it's just like it's not it's not the quality it's like what, what's your favorite to you but like wayne's will do like i we already talked about it i mean it's 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 the most rewatchable the most quotable movie maybe of all time it was it's the first fucking, movie of its kind i've ever seen like that it yeah was the first movie i've ever seen like that yes it's part and, it, and it's shit that should not be i remember when it came out dude it's crazy because this came out literally at a time when i was a kid and i had to ask my dad to take us to the video store mm -hmm. and it's so fucking funny because like we rented it me and my sister like i grabbed it and we would each be allowed to like pick a movie and i i grabbed it and i wanted to see it because like all the kids were talking about it it was like the cool thing that was going on and my dad was so fucking annoyed he was like oh my god you'll laugh you'll laugh you'll cry you'll hurl are you serious like what the fuck is this yeah dad get with mtv know the, <laughs> know the culture <laughs> but goddamn as a kid as an adult like dude there and again i just want to reiterate one more time comedies don't exist in this world they are Not the anymore. most yeah dude they're like the most precious resource to me as an adult so 20 years ago maybe these comedies wouldn't have meant like from from encino man to white man can't jump to wayne's world wouldn't have been on this list but for me now i really appreciate these movies in a way i didn't then they're like rare fucking uh, you know geographical fucking finds so uh or archaeological yeah, who, who finds who would have thought movies like that would be uh would be like uh, pretty much on the extinction level of yeah, it for movies, it's fucking crazy, dude. I, I mean, no, you you would have thought that as we progressed in the future, we would get less and less offended by shit. We maybe we get closer to being like, let's just have fun. We're human or whatever. And it got yeah. fucking regressive. Got worse. Like in the nineties, it was like, I feel like the nineties was more like, let's just have fucking fun, guys. Let's make stupid fucking movies and have fun and make fun of shit. And and yeah. it's like that. You thought no. Now in in the, in the two thousand twenty fours, it's like. You got to be fucking careful with what you fucking say in comedy. I don't even own a gun, much less that would necessitate a gun rack. Yeah, dude. Uh, but so that, amazing. Yeah. that being said, since we already talked about it, I do want to jump right the fuck into honorable mentions. I'll go, and then you, and then then I'll, I'll go with all mine. Then you go with all to. yours if I'll you want to. to. Oh shit, fuck! I have a fuck ton. No, so I, 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 I was. I'm trying to do it for time though, but I have. I'll have yeah. two. I narrowed it. 
Uh, the the hardest ones to, for me to leave off this list uh, were no doubt, uh, and I, I literally have them circled. Reservoir Gwen Dogs. Stefani, how dare you, dude? <laughs> Reservoir Dogs is a fucking all time classic. Yeah. I love that fucking movie. I just watched it like a couple weeks ago. It is absolutely an amazing fucking cinematic fucking masterpiece you sit back and you watch it and it has all the all and fucking amazingness of any quentin tarantino movie it just to me it just he just, he was like one step away from the polish that he needed in this movie you know, like there was just know, a little uh, bit do you know what inspired him for that movie gay men having yeah. sex in turkish bathtubs uh, other than that um it's what inspires the, uh, me to get up in the morning john carpenter's a thing oh that makes sense yeah because they're Par all in the, the, yeah. the paranoia yeah, 100. percent That that totally checks out. But it's an all time classic, and it God, it fucking hurts to leave it off this list. Uh, a few good men. We already talked about it. Batman Returns. We already talked about it. Uh, those are the toughest ones for me. But also, I gotta say, Last of the Mohicans was a fucking great movie. Uh, Death Becomes Her was a fucking awesome I liked movie. It, yeah. uh, Glenn Ga Gl Glenn Gary G Glenn Ross really hard to leave. I was like, Coffee is for closers. You know, like fucking just it's an oh, all time yeah. great movie. Mm -hmm. uh, Army of Darkness, of fucking course. I want it. Um, yeah, I, I know. Yeah. Ooh, it hurts. Uh, Three Ninjas, Rocky. Lost God Emily. damn it. I know, Rocky dude. Lost. It was either it was either that or Sidekicks. And I could not turn Sidekicks away. I get it. Now, sidekicks fight. Sidekicks is another one, by the way. Uh, stay tuned. Another one that you had on your list. Uh, uh, and just the last three, Mo Money. I think that movie fucking rips. I love Mo Money. It's Good. funny as shit. Um, when he's when that dude just got like assaulted by the guy, and he's like in the stall, and like he comes in there, he's like, "Hey, man," he's like, "You constipated?" He's like, "Just shake it back and forth a little bit. Just shake it." The guy's like, ah, "I like ah. it when uh, when they dressed, and they were gay, and they went into like the joy show." It's like my man liked them big. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it was fucking, was like, because he was like, you, they, they, Marlon Wayne's. They were they were supposed to be a gay couple, and they're like, pick, I think they're trying to <laughs> pick out an engagement ring. It's like, like, and he's like, yeah, what about that one? And they, they're, like, they're over the top gay, like over the top, like exaggerated gay. Like they were in like hated it in in living color. And he's like, my man likes them big. And then he slapped him in the face. It's like, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a great fucking movie, man. If you guys haven't seen Mo Money, you got to check it out. Uh, and then finally, Leap of Faith, Steve Martin. Awesome fucking movie. Amazing And movie. Uh, And lastly, uh, uh, the all-time great, taken from us far too soon, Rapid Fire, Brandon Lee is going to be I, 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 Yeah, I wanted, I, I did want to put it on my list. And I, and I love that movie. Rapid Fire was so goddamn good. And without Rapid Fire, you probably wouldn't have had uh, Brandon Lee being considered for The Crow. You can just imagine what Brandon Lee, what roles he would have got if he had survived. Oh dude, he would have been, he, to this day, he would have been fucking Tom Cruise, Brad Pitt yeah. level huge. Like, like, like it, it's, the same, it's the same talk that you have about Heath Ledger. Like, that's where Brandon Lee is. Like, what could have been with Brandon Lee? Oh, yep. my God. Uh, so I only I only got two on on my honorable mentions. Uh, everything Mike listed, pretty much, other than the ones that weren't on my list, is what Three Ninjas, all that stuff. But um, I have um, I do have Aladdin. I liked Aladdin a lot. I've, I that like, and I and I was joking with you. It was the the first and maybe the only Disney movie that made me fucking cry. And the reason why it made me cry was I I love the animation. I love Robin Williams as uh, as genie. I thought it was so good. It was so awesome. It was so well done. Um, the music was great. I loved all of it. Um, it was the ending. The ending was so good uh, because the fact that when Genie is set free and he thought he was going to give Aladdin back his royal uh, station because he's like, you have one more wish. And he's like, Genie, you're free. And then, you know, the chains fall off and then, you you know, Genie's all excited and he's like, and then he looks over and then he can see like Al or Aladdin is like kind of like, oh, you're leaving. And not because he's mad that he's not a prince again and he gave him his freedom. But I love the. It's such. I know. I know. I know. It's getting kind of stupid. I'm. I'm. I'm literally getting teary. -eyed. It's getting. It's getting. It's getting, getting kind of heavy. I'm getting kind of teary out about it. But when he's like, uh, no matter what anybody says, you'll be. You'll always be a prince to me. And he hugs him. I thought that was the most beautiful like depiction of friendship I've ever seen in my life. I loved it that much, just because it's like a uh, genie didn't care where Aladdin came from. He didn't care what he smelled like because I'm sure he smelled like pee without like the magic. And they were just friends, man. They were friends. And the fact that everyone was looking at this street rat now, again, he's back to being a street rat, but he gave all that up just to set his friend free. And and, and Genie's more to him than just a, a magic maker. I don't know. I, I love that movie. But, um, and then the last one, it was Class Act, dude. Holy shit. Do you remember Class Act? 
Cla- oh fuck, I forgot all about that. Yeah, movie. dude. I think Blake I Brown is the biggest the house- asshole, and he's like, "What'd you say?" I get it confused. <laughs> with, I get it confused. The house party, like, but no, yeah, they're, they're, they're the same guys, dude. Class yeah. act. Yeah, uh, that movie was fucking, dude. That is so goddamn funny. Basically, the movie's about a, a, a thug gangster guy. Uh, and then a well-to-do scientific straight A student, and they have their their uh, their uh, their report card switched or their their file switched. And so uh, the straight A nerdy guy goes to like the really shitty part of high school, the really like the reform school of high school, and then the the asshole reform school guy goes to like the straight A student guy, and then they're trying to get their identities unfixed or, or dude, fixed I, up. I take that over house party. Like I really. Oh do. yeah, like, dude. Class act better. is fucking great, dude. Yeah. Like that was so goddamn good. I love class act. Fuck, I forgot all about it. Yeah, and that ball guy week, was like, man. Yeah, I think so. I think they went this way. He's like, You think? <laughs> <laughs> and then they go to the wax museum, dude. Holy shit. At the end of the movie, they go to the wax museum and they're chasing him down. Oh my god. And I love that. <laughs> I like when Blade Brown, uh, Blade Brown, that's his name, the bad, the, 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 the juvenile kid. He tells that what uh, the kid with the high top, I can't, I can't, kid and play. Kid and Play is the guy that's starring it. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, he's like, he's like, he's like, uh, he goes, because uh, <laughs> Blade Brown was fucked with. Him. He's like, I'm deaf, man. I can't hear the fuck you saying. And then he like turns around and then that straight A student, he's like, I think Blade Brown is the biggest asshole to ever live. And then he <laughs> kind of slapped. <laughs> Dude, I always like, I swear to God, I think a few years back, I went to watch House Party or like to show it to the kids or something. And Class Act was the movie I was That's what you want to watch. But class I totally act. forgot it fucking existed. Yeah, like, dude. it's so fucking good. It's That's, class great, act, dude. That's, That's so great. fucking good, man. Hey, I, I got a tinkle. I do got a tinkle. Oh. I've been holding it for, for a moment. Uh, we got some super chats to get to before we poop on out of here. Tonight. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. He's like, I think that's where they he goes. You think that's where they went or that's where they went. I think so. And he's like, do you know what I think? And you see the car driver, you go, <laughs> when he slaps on his head. <laughs> Dude, it's just like, it's just like in Blake, man. He's like, well, smack me on the ass and call me Susan. And the guy goes, what are you doing? Oh, that's another, yeah. yeah. <laughs> David Allen Greer, he was like, I do not have time to play with you. When he's talking to his belt buckle. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that movie's so fucking good. Uh, and we're at 9.06 p.m. Uh, with Michael Parton, by the way. Okay. I believe that's where we are. If you want to find that before I okay, take Okay, I'll go up through here and check it out. I will see. 9.06, yes. 9.06? Yeah. Yo, but there, uh, there's not, about, there's not, yeah, yeah, there's not that many in between there. So it, it makes it seem like it's a lot further. <laughs> Tell me once you find it, I will touch it. It's really... Impressive I can go this fast because I can't read. Tell uh, me he moved. Okay, I got it. Okay. Be right book. Okay. Uh Michael Parton says Ninja Storm and Dino Thunder with Tommy was my favorite. Um I thought, you know, I think that I saw uh, Dino, like he's a fucking uh, salesman of bagels in New York. Uh, Dino Thunder is what you meant. Um, I I I I tried to watch Dino Thunder. I don't think I got into it. Ninja Storm. Maybe I liked a little uh, Mystic Knights. I remember kind of liking Mystic Knights. I know it's not the same thing, but I remember him coming back in Dino Thunder with Tommy. But I feel like it was such a they went backward, like with Time Force and stuff. It felt like they were they were trying to grow up a little bit with the series, and then they they went back to more of the um, you know kid stuff. I don't know. It's a kid show, so I, I can't really complain. But yeah, dude. Um, Tommy was in a, he was actually in a quite a bit, quite a, quite a few shows on Power Rangers. So, um, power to him. Thunderstorm 99. Thank you so much. His idea for Halloween skit. Loomis tries to kill Michael Dexter Morgan style. That would be awesome. You need to do it. Yes, we do. That would be fun. I, I, we haven't done a Loomis uh, Meyer sketch in a while and maybe we will, maybe we'll try it out. The thing about the Loomis Meyer stuff when we do it, it takes a it, like when we do a sketch. It takes a bit, like of, of time and and um, planning and. Uh, it, it's not like just like we just show up and it's like twenty minutes. It takes a few, sometimes it takes like hours, like or two day, two three days, like to film it. And if it doesn't do anything, it kind of sucks. But uh, we understand. I mean, I don't I, like not everyone's gonna like the sketch or whatever. But it kind of sucks. But that's a great idea. Uh, but it would. We want like that's a, that's an idea that would rec- that w- I would definitely want to like 
as, put as much effort in as I could to be like Dexter. And then that would, if it doesn't do well, it'll piss us off. But yeah, dude, great idea. We've got some ideas in the bank though. So there's going to be some Loomis stuff later on for sure. Loomis Meyer stuff, but just don't know when, just don't know when, just calm down. Uh, Robin Barker. Thank you so much. As I, they say hope Batman returns makes the list. Well, your wish was my command. Might be my favorite Batman film. No, it's not. Don't even talk to me. That's no, fine. It, is. it has flaws. I, I agree. But I feel it perfectly captures the gothic aesthetic of the character, the darkness, and the sexiest Catwoman. I agree with you on the sexiest Catwoman, 1,000%. The gothic aesthetic, it does do that well. I just feel like the darkness is there, but it's just it's it's just over-the-top Edgar Allan Poe-ish poems I wrote in a cave. When I feel sorry for myself and I have this shirt and I got it from Spencer's, you know what I mean? But I do like it. I, I like, it's not like it's on my list. I think it's, uh, what, what did I put it at number five? So it's on the list though, Robin. We like Lee. The hey, thank you, Lee. Um, Lee's going to give us his list. Lee says, uh, his top 10, 92 movies. Uh, number one, three ninjas. Wow, dude. Okay. Home alone. Two is his number two. Three is Aladdin, we like. Batman Returns is number four, okay. Candyman, number five. Six is White Man Can't Jump. Number seven is Wayne's World. Number eight is Encino Man. Number nine is Lethal Weapon. And number 10 is The Mighty Ducks. Fuck, dude, your list is way more. It's juicier than mine. I like your list better. Um, To be fair, I do. Because I forgot all the fuck. Up. How do you forget about The Mighty Ducks? Oh, my God. Emilio, the Mighty Ducks man. I swear to God, how do I? Oh my God, I, I we didn't even mention him. We didn't even mention the Mighty Ducks. We're fucking idiots. But Three Ninjas at number one. Ooh, I like it. I like the boldness of it. I like your flavor. Okay, you're definitely you don't give a shit. You, you're 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 that guy that will suicide the uh, the McDonald's uh, dispensers like coke mountain dew dr pepper sprite i don't give a shit i'm gonna put it all in one cup and drink it i like that i feel good about that and again lee you're exactly what we're talking about like give me your list that you really enjoy like the movies that like that you rented over and over again that's what i'm interested in i i love talking to people that have like varied lists like you that's so good dude great list great list i like it a lot uh bradley champagne just stopping by to say hi hello uh, you guys rule. Love the content. Thank you. Thank you, Bradley. And have some champagne. Have some champagne on us. Uh, thank you, Bradley. Really nice of you to stop by and say hello. Uh, Austin, thank you, dude. Says, you guys hear Vince McMahon made duty. On... <laughs> you guys hear Vince McMahon made duty on some chick's head and made her leave it there? Didn't know his finisher was the Cleveland steamer. Yeah, dude. Didn't you know that's the hottest thing out of fucking Cleveland? <laughs> the fucking old duty sleeper. <laughs> dude there's so much more to that story i know someone's got to send me a link because i don't know like the no, whole story i only know like the gist there there's a uh a podcast that was like literally talking about that he had a shit fetish oh god that's i know it's so i i don't get it like i literally i don't understand like i don't kink shame here i don't do that <laughs> but the fact that you you get off on a girl taking a shit that's gross dude that's gross. I don't you're, care how you cut it. How you slice it. You're a fucking devil, dude. I, I, like, I, I it's not, I, I'm not saying that like in a in a cool like you know leather jacket way. Like you're a devil. <laughs> like like I think That's you're dis gross. like I think you're disgusting, dude. He's a sadist. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It's fucking die, Mike. Die. <laughs> That's how I feel. That shit's gross as fuck, dude. So when then? This is a fucking great name. Just uh, no matter how you cut it up. What is in your icon? Thing? So when then is actually what you say to a girl when she's like not come yet. <laughs> so when? So I, I've been I, doing this for like an hour. My tongue is going numb. It tickles so much it stings. Uh, tomorrow's my B-Day. Getting old. 36. Hey, happy birthday, fella. Uh, happy birthday, man. One hour from your actual birthday. Just relocated for a new job and feeling great. and Kind of scared. I always consider 2-1 my new year. That's smart. February that's not 1st. bad at all. I, I feel like that's a that's a smart approach, and yeah, uh, totally normal new job. But yeah, but you know what? The, the new job and and like being scared that feels that's a great feeling. Yeah, because the, like I feel like when you have that moment, like it, it, it kind of feels like starting over. You know what I mean? Yeah, dude, like, it does. Like, it, it's like a fresh slate. Like it's a, it's a it's a clean a slate. That's scary, 
but you, they don't know you there. They don't know your work, you know, ethic. They don't know nothing. And you can reinvent yourself in a new job. And like, you could just be you and like, and, and you could be that, you could be that fucking, I don't know, Sylvester Stallone badass that like gets a job at a factory and just starts yeah. fucking working out, working everybody. Dude, let me give you some advice, man to man or woman to man, gay man to man, however you want to take it. Sit down, sit down and go, hey, what the fuck do I want the rest of my life to be? Write that shit down and then do it because you can because it's a fresh new start. And if you ever get scared, just think about that song. A whole new world, shining, yeah. shimmering flippers. I thought it was going to be like, uh, I thought it was going to be, it's not my time. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going. going. It's feeling me. <laughs> it's not just showing. Mr. Big Balls. It's marvelous. Big says, marvelous. Bill and Ted versus Wayne's World. I'm Wayne's World all day and twice on Sundays, but I do love Bill and Ted. Uh, well, Bill and Ted is 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 the blueprint for what we got in Wayne's World. 100. Bill and Ted's Fair. Excellent Adventure is the blueprint. I, I I'll take Bill and Ted just because I like the time travel aspect. And, and who doesn't love George Carlin as Rufus? That's that's fair. I hate time travel, but that's probably where we differ on the matter oh. of subjects matter. Jacob, but you beautiful motherfucking fuck says here to show and spread love. Squirt, squirt. Thanks, man. My heart just came. Have some beers on me, gentlemen. Got some new tunes brewing up with the new band. Love you guys. By the way, out of the three bands, new albums, I like Blinks one more time, the best still. Hmm. He's talking about Alkaline Trio, Green Day, Blinks one more time. I 100% agree with you. I think Bleak, I love the Alkaline Trio new album. I like Green Day's new album, but I think Blinks' album blows them both out Watch of the water. Jake up. Jake up. Like, like have like he's gonna like blow up or something like his band is probably like on the verge of like being the next blink or some shit and we're all just dude i just asking in his glory i respect i i respect that you're in there fucking doing it dude I, I saw a guy volleyball the other night and he was like uh did you ever play music and i was like i used to he's like no he's drunk he's like no once you were a musician you're always a musician. Oh. i was like all right i mean i just make joke songs for fun with my dingus out but i appreciate it but yeah dude it's fucking awesome that you're doing that i admire it i actually envy it quite a bit it's fucking cool as shit i like Hope his profile pic. it reminds me of my brother i like the intensity you really you really can tell that you're gripping that fucking guitar tight and looking at your other guitars like are you there then you know, are you there? dude i hope you fucking i hope you guys fucking i bet he's, I bet he's looking at the lead singer be like are, are you gonna miss another line are you that <laughs> stop fucking us up man it's like at uh uh school of rock he was like when, he, when they kick him out of the band, he's like, "What are you talking about?" He's like, "You stage dove into a group of fucking twelve people." What do you got? Uh, I am lost, dying. I am lost, dying. <laughs> <laughs> Jacob also says, "Thank you again, man." Says, "By the way, I saw a trailer for a film called The Last Kumite coming soon." Mm. Oh, I didn't know about that. Uh, they got the dude who did the music and blood sport oh. to come back and compose the music for this one. Looks Whoa. corny, but I'm down as fuck, dude. That sounds awesome. Well, I don't. The movie might be dog shit, but. The music is incredible. If you guys don't know Kumite from Bloodsport, yeah, Kumite. dude. Oh my God, dude. Jay. There is a fucking it. no. I, but I'm meaning to tell you this. There is a fucking. You will love this, dude. Uh, there is a. You One know those hot every night and day. <laughs> or the uh, 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 from Kickboxer is like everybody loves. Yeah, a yeah Kickboxer got a great soundtrack too. Yeah. Um, but no, uh, there, there's a, you know, those, uh, YouTube videos that play like 10 hours of like, uh, lo-fi beats or whatever music like you can mm -hmm. just listen to. There's one for blood sport. It's called blood sport ambience. And it's just songs that sound like blood sport that you can play in the background while you're working or oh, studying or whatever. Wow. Fucking awesome. Um, yeah, dude. Hey, we love you, Jacob. You're the fucking Thank best you, of us. The best of us. Adrian Yabara says non-listed that I like Aladdin juice home mm -hmm. alone Two. That was off both our lists, by the yeah. way. I've never been the biggest home alone Two. Guy. I was all right. Oh, man uh american me uh basic oh basic with john travolta oh that's uh, a really good one uh yeah i know you're talking uh, john travolta and uh samuel john jackson yeah samuel L. jackson i, was I think it's, saying, what's he did a lot of those stories back then beethoven beethoven fucking ruled uh deep cover mighty ducks the mighty duck man yeah. i swear to god uh, since, woman. oh man so fucking good dude and the babe with john Goodman. is that the pig movie that's not the pig no, it's just the babe. babe it's a uh, uh, it's a uh, it's babe ruth Oh, that's I fucking remember that movie, dude. Yeah. Holy shit. Uh thanks, well, AJ. Yeah, yeah uh, and someone mentioned um earlier, uh, they mentioned Aladdin. Aladdin is is a classic fucking movie, dude. You can't get away with how good that was. Like that was like top god tier uh, Disney movie that came out in the 90s. 
Uh, and the only one that really came close to beating it in, 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 in some people's eyes, it, it did was Lion King because Lion King yeah. came out in 93. But uh, Home Alone 2 was fun. I liked Home Alone 2, but uh, I liked it better than the first one. I'll it had your sure. Lord and Savior Donald Trump in it, too. I loved him. Yes. Oh. I, uh, <laughs> Home, Alone, Oscar, Home right? Alone 2 would not have been what it is without <laughs> Donald Trump. Uh, no. <laughs> Uh, I, I, the, the, there are a lot of quotable lines in that I mean, you got tim curry who's fucking hilarious in that movie when he gets slapped in the face and he's like <sighs> and he's like he's trying not to cry and then when rob schneider gets knocked out he's like come along cedric and he's over. <laughs> that's a great movie uh, that reminds me of heavyweights where he's like get off the scale yeah, I don't know why I, I, and then like when, when uh, macaulay culkin uh like records that line he's like yeah i seen you here the other night you were looking at me and he's like, sir. Like, you guys, like, I was lost. <laughs> he's like, you've been getting on with everybody. Uh, the girlfriend out there, Cliff. And he's like, I think you're mistaken. <laughs> Tim That's Curry. A good, that's a really Tim good Curry, impression. Tim actually. Curry is the best. It, well, it's Tim Curry that makes that like so funny. Yeah, and, I hate then, the old lady with her fucking doves. I'm like, go away. I'm tired of doves. this. You just smell like macaroni and cheese. That's been yeah, dude. She's right. Yeah, she smells like fucking herpes and mayonnaise. 100%. <laughs> I didn't like her at all. Yeah. Uh, child of the corn, better music video. Some 41's Fat Lip versus Alien, Alien Ant Farms, Alien Smooth Ant Farm. Criminal. Alien Ant Farm. A song, I definitely go Fat Lip, but music video, you gotta go. Alien well, Ant yeah, well, the Alien Ant Farm, uh, the fact that they did Smooth Criminal was insane, and they did a good job with it, and they made yeah. it their own. They made it their own, which I would have. If anybody said like a punk group was gonna remake that song and make you know do their own unique styling, yeah, you know, I'd say it's gonna suck. They did a great fucking job, dude. Yeah, they they did rip that. They, they had a second song that came out. It was actually pretty good. That and just like the movies, that was a good song. I like. Uh, yeah. I also like the guy, in the, the the lead singer, because he didn't give a fuck how ugly he looked. He's like, I mean, are you okay? Are you okay? okay <laughs> They played the fucking VMAs on top of a roof. I remember that yeah. show. I think they got arrested for it, if I'm not mistaken. That's a good question, Charlie Corn. Uh, Wild Willie says, I lean more towards Mike's list, but would have added sense of a woman, basic instinct, and Patriot game. Patriot games is dope. Well, Patriot you're not really leaning towards anything, then, if you just added three fucking movies. <laughs> Why don't you get that straight, Wild Willie? I lean towards nothing. Nothing. You're not um, going to the commentary after the show. <laughs> Tight. Leave the machine. Stop it. Yeah, be, dude. Be nice to us, dude. Fuck. We really appreciate it, though, man. Thank you. He says Thank adult you, beverages on me. A hey, Loomis. Michael sold me his mask for toilet paper money. If you had dumbass that bought it, who's the who's the who's the sucker? Michael or you? <laughs> what are you doing? Cruising around the internet? I want to find a mask that looks like a goddamn serial killer. Ah, there's a Michael Myers mask, one of the most notorious serial killers in the goddamn nation. I want to put it on and scare little kids in the Halloween times. Shut the fuck up, Lee. Go wipe your ass. <laughs> Dude, you gave me toilet paper. Wipe your butthole. You know, if Michael Myers listed a mask on eBay, it would have no description, no title. It would just be blank. It, it would just be Michael looking at the camera. If Michael Myers listed a mask on eBay, I promise you, you would be able to smell it through your camera. <laughs> it's it, like old chicken it would smell like a goddamn theme park in the summer in New York. Garbage <laughs> juice and poop. <laughs> Frozen Empire. Nasty. <laughs> <laughs> this is Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. <laughs> Check out thanks, buddy. This is, I fucked up and made myself the lead singer and bassist. Oh, I'm shit. trying to do my best though. <laughs> I want to get better at vocals, so I'm grinding hard on getting it down. Holy shit. Uh, that's rough, dude. Good hey, you do. Hey, hey, but who's the singer you replaced? Because now he's Mark Marky Mark in uh Rockstar. Like he's gonna go and join the, your favorite band. You gotta go your like like oh I can I can I can play bass like I already do that I can sing I already do that <laughs> oh I can double play, threat kind of guy I can play cymbals <laughs> we don't need that it's smart though hey it's smart if you're gonna start a band start a three piece band uh, because there's less people to pay you get more money from the shows and there's less egos to I deal would, with uh, definitely want to do I got the bass dude God damn it. just do something no, simple man. like rhythm. Mark Mark plays the bass. Uh, Mark Hobbs plays bass. Uh, you got fucking. Um, oh my Be God, that guy like this out. is side one. Flip, Flip me, me over. over. I like that song. <laughs> That's fucking dope, Jacob. I can't wait to hear your new music, man. Send it to me on the Spotify when you get it, dude. Oh, and finally, he was like playing bass. 
like but he's the also guitar, like the bass up here and then he was going to go back to the microphone he's probably looking at a shitty guitarist and be like <laughs> you can't keep up <laughs> it's robin Parkinson. getty lee getty lee <laughs> Uh, Ricky Hogan closes out for the night. What 2024 horror movie, horror movie are you guys most looking forward to? Uh, I, I would have said that that Nazi movie that um, that was 2023 though. I yeah, know. I, I would have said that. Not horror. That would have been like this. Well, I mean, disturbing movies. Uh, I don't know. Is it? Uh, is there any like crazy one that I? I don't remember seeing anything that's going to come out in 2024. I, I know there, I'm, I'm sure there is, but I, I can't think of any off the top of my head. To be fair, we, we I know we did our, we did our most anticipated. Hold on, like, I'm gonna uh, go ahead. And you can okay rattle. First I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna give you two. I'm gonna give you two uh, because the biggest release that horror wise I'm looking forward to is Alien Romulus because mm. it's directed by Fetty Alvarez who did the Evil Dead 2013 remake and Don't Breathe. Uh, and he's actually directing it. And Ridley Scott himself said it was fucking great. Uh, and that was to Fede Alvarez. I think Fede Alvarez doing an Alien movie could could just blow the fucking Alien franchise into the stratosphere. Because it's going to be gnarly. It's going to be mean. It's going to be fucked up. It's going to forget all the... As much as I like Prometheus and all that. It's going to forget all the smart shit. And it's just going to be a down fucking in the gutter horror movie. I think Alien well, Romulus... I, I, I can tell you right now. Uh, I don't give a fuck about The Quiet Place Part 3. Um, yeah, there's no there's, there's really, the, the, the cover looks awesome. Imaginary Ooh, Nosferatu looks, is a good one, D Land. No, Nosferatu. yeah, Nosferatu. Yeah, the Watchers has an interesting cover. Um, but you know, it's weird. Like, I, I just I literally typed in 2024 horror movies, they got Beetlejuice 2, which is dumb. Um, but the first omen, what the fuck is that? Is that a it's an open prequel? Yeah, no, I mean, Tra- it, it doesn't look bad. Terrifier 3, yeah, I'm excited for that one. And then, uh, uh, like, Stream, there's a movie called Stream. I believe it. <laughs> You're lying to me. <laughs> what the fuck? Like, yeah, dude, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I, I guess um, I don't. I, it's pretty light on the fucking horror. I do want to throw out Long Legs, by the way. Nicolas Cage as a serial killer in a oh. fucked up A24 uh, a- a- movie is going to be fucking. That's, that movie is going to kick ass. Like, so. Nicolas Cage serial killer? Holy tit sauce. That would be great. I love Come it. on me and call me it. Steven. Um, that concludes our broadcast day. <laughs> we, we we must now retire in the shadow. But thank you guys for coming out and showing support. We always love. We always, and, and again, uh, Mike showed it to you. We don't. We're not fucking monetized. at this point. We're just fucking hanging out. <laughs> and we're, what they're just like, yeah, fuck you. Uh, maybe maybe we can turn the tide. Yeah, but you guys are awesome. You guys are your support is amazing and. Uh, it's always humbling to us, and uh, you know we can't thank you guys enough uh, for being such an amazing community. And uh, thank you guys for letting us play around <clears throat> in your world and bullshit around. It's it's really it's a dream come true. Thank you guys. Fucking a, we love you guys so fucking much. Thanks for tonight. Thanks for all the live streams you guys joined and make so fun. Uh, we will see you soon on the other side of this deck. See you soon. See you real soon. So much your deck.